In today's video, we survived 1,000 days in hardcore Minecraft with multiple twists. I had to challenge things like dragons, new dimensions, and even horrifying creatures all throughout, even if we weren't prepared for it. Will we survive till the end? Watch till the end of the video to find out. Also, these videos are not easy to make, so if you could hit that subscribe button, it'd mean the world to finally hit the like button for the algorithm, and let's get straight into it. Days 1 to 5. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This map is kind of looking crazy right now. I didn't even know how this fantasy world was gonna look like, but honestly, I'm kind of digging it. The first thing we decided to do is obviously get your boy some wood. Now, a little bit of context prior to everything is this is in fact on an SMP and I was waiting for my friend to hop on. I don't think I mentioned that enough. A lot of my challenges are on mini servers, but for some reason on my end, I wasn't exactly lagging, but Bite on the other hand was lagging his butt off. Back to what we were doing. I was trying to get some wood and a creeper tried to jump us. Nice. I didn't die, alright? <laughs> then afterwards, we got some tools, started mining a bit, and we upgraded to better tools. We're gonna need this stuff, trust and believe. With this fantasy world challenge, there's actually a bit of a twist to it as well. Every 20 days, there's a boss that we have to face and survive within the harsh world. And preparations basically begin starting from day 1. This includes the increments 20, 40, 60, 80, and finally 100. But the boss is getting more and more difficult to actually kill. The first boss that we're gonna have to kill on day 20 is known as the Alchemist. Basically, right when we hit day 20 a boss will spawn in our location and we're gonna have to fight it from me just straight up remembering i'm pretty sure this is from the blue skies mod and i'm not gonna lie the bosses in that mod were actually pretty difficult so i'm a little worried about this oh my god there's a skeleton shortly after advancing our tools we got attacked by a skeleton how annoying so we actually fled into this thing that i think was a greenhouse i want to see what's inside Ow. to be honest there's just flowers in here stuff. i'm gonna die because i come in here freezing. Come in, come in. so i'm not exactly sure that's just what it looked like and then the skeleton broke in like it was invited or something nobody wants you here bruh and what made things even worse is he had multi-shot i was literally at one and a half heart and bite was at two hearts remaining we needed food and we needed that stuff asap after we dealt with the whole skeleton situation we basically went out to look for food but then we got chased by really fast mobs no like i'm dead serious look how fast that thing's going so instead we decided to wait the night out Hiking. it's not safe bro it's not, it's not safe oh my god <sighs> dude Oh, that's another one. That's another one. That's another one. <laughs> On the second day, we actually decided oh, to explore fine. because most of the mobs would have been dead by the sun already. Oh my god, there's a baby zombie. And we found ourselves a ruined portal. There, we found this thing called the Keystone of Oblivion. And also found ourselves a dirt shack. And I used a furnace in there to smelt some coal for torches. Listen, okay, we ain't even go mining yet. I need coal somehow. And look at this cute raccoon. Aww. As I mentioned earlier, the mod pack is super laggy and Byte kept reconnecting and disconnecting, which got a little bit annoying, so I had to turn off features like the minimap. If we were gonna have any chance of beating the first boss, the alchemist, we were gonna need food, so we had to find something fast. There literally weren't any animals around, which is kind of annoying, and then we explored until we found a village. There's a little piston machine. We slept in it as well. No, not the piston machine, inside the village. Am I again? That's what I meant. Added to that, we also found ourselves a disco villager. Rob him of his disco -ness. And also nab some of the food that they had. Oh, and look at that. It's a goddess statue. That's kind of neat. Oh, right. I forgot to mention that there's also these things called raids that happen every once in a while. Honestly, the village wasn't a bad place to start off. Not to mention there's a bunch of villagers we can potentially trade with. It was a really good safe haven, or so we thought. I'm like, you know. Bro, <laughs> it just picked up a villager and started munching. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I do now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what if it- Wait, 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 wait. Just mad loot here. Because when it kills the villagers, it drop. It just ate an iron golem. No shot, bro. Wait, it's after me. It's I after me. It's after me. Dude, <laughs> it's freaking after me. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Until a raid begun. And I'm not talking about no pillager raid. I'm talking about a cyclops raid. Yeah, you heard me right. The moment we got really comfortable with where we were basing, we got attacked by a cyclops. Look at that beast munching on the civilians like it's fried chicken or something bro it even ate the golems we had to run into a house to find shelter i could literally hear it munching them outside where is it oh it's over there now <laughs> oh my gosh bro and it's dead. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's getting kind of close it's feeling like attack on titan all over again man it's 57 hearts oh my god should we just run? Should we run? We should run. He has a run. total of 150. Unfortunately, Bite at this time was still lagging and he started getting consumed by the Cyclops itself. I thought he was gone for. So we parted ways. While the Cyclops was going around eating the newfound friends we made 
and bite by the way we basically just booked it i was not letting no dumb cyclops ruin this challenge for me even if it meant what leaving a friend hell? behind there were these weird thorny bushes everywhere it was nuts we also decided to jump this little sandworm thing that was consuming the wildlife here honestly it was probably for the best we also found ourselves a little bit of a house and slept through the night upstairs we found some more wheat blocks and iron armor don't mind if i do because this was gonna help us with that first boss of ours and then we also found ourselves a wizard tower it blew up then we found a cool volcano looking oh, thing look days five to ten there are whales look at them they're so cool we also found ourselves a mushroom house we were not alone they were mushroom crowd brutes brutes are y'all serious that's crazy this ain't the nether bruh why we gotta deal with brutes in the overworld and while trying to loot the mushroom house itself they also brought me down to almost my death i was going down the way that i thought my friend did but it also decided to chase me off the entire building and i almost died again twice before we even hit day 10 i'm not gonna lie to you guys bro this world this little fantasy world of ours is relentless this ain't as easy as an isekai i can tell you that much oh we also found dinosaurs as you can hear they're not really too happy about outsiders so i kept my distance i think they were only trying to protect their kids though so they didn't seem that bad but again i didn't want to test my luck because i don't really have a lot of that within these challenges i have thrown curveballs every bit but you know what who needs luck when you have another cozy looking house that i could probably chill at for a bit i also decided to kill a bunch of cows because i needed leather for a backpack those are necessary trust me when we start getting loot you're gonna see why it's a little bit of a subliminal message from future adrian voicing over this then i ended up finding another village of some sort and we all got the leather that we needed the only thing remaining from the backpack recipe that we were missing was our friend string oh i also decided to live in this cozy village i don't know i just kind of like it it grew on me let's just hope there's no cyclopses around for the sake of both of us we don't want any of that then we started working on building a bit of a base of ours and maybe even a farm got some animals set up got some defenses for raids and we actually had ourselves a roommate his name was eleanor he seemed chill and then i heard this really weird explosion this is where it got a little weird we followed the explosion and it led us to this place called the graveyard well it looked like a graveyard so that's why i called it that but the loot there oh my gosh bro listen it's not overpowered stuff but it will definitely help us and we got the string we needed from there you know grave robber or not I'm getting stacked up right now. Get your grave digging up, not your funny up. We also got ourselves some iron enchanted stuff, golden apples, and a bit more stuff. We're also gonna ignore all the human remains that were in there. We ended up crafting the backpacks and commenced the base building. Iron Golem also scared the out of me. Decided to also make the walls out of cherry blocks and the floor out of cobblestone. Thought it looked kinda nice. We mounted some more of the area so there was enough to build. No judging, I'm not that good of an architect, alright? Then again, I think my biggest skill in Minecraft is exploration and that's not really saying much here. Ran out of cherry wood so I went to get some more. I also felt from a tree and almost died all right damn forget the bosses i'm the biggest threat of the series on a real note though i really do need me some feather falling boots this is not gonna work out if i keep dying like that i also decided to bring back a cherry tree sapling and plant it at home and after a bit more building this was the finished piece what you guys think all right all right i know what you're thinking it looks lame as hell okay i'm not the best builder but your boy's trying you know days 10 to 15 these days were flying by like it was nothing and we really do need to make some progress one of our villager friends that actually used to live here turned into to a zombie villager poor tisha she had so much to live for found this well that also led into a huge cave system that we decided to explore we actually found something in there but i'm gonna save that for later besides the special thing we found we also found ourselves a skeleton spawner even with our shield in hand we got bodied after that i decided to explore the savannah a little bit I think that's what the biome's called at least. I saw something in the distance and there was some knight or like a guardian to it. I don't really know how to better explain it, but it looked cool and I wanted loot. I tried going near, but there were creeper babies trying to blow us up to smithereens. What the heck is a creeper baby? Also ended up encountering a bit of a weird creeper farm. Yeah, I am making this up. Look at it. And from the looks of it, it was also a bit of a pillager fort. There were two vindicators at the top, which brought me down to two hearts. Crazy, yo. Magic pillagers? But I assassinated them, looted the place, and dipped. Look at these little kangaroos. He's 15 to 20. We were given the coordinates to the first boss location. Well, at least the place where we could fight the boss that was kind of interesting. We took some time to actually get there. So we finally did reach there. After reaching the location, we ended up finding a bastion. I'm not kidding, by the way. There was a bastion in the overworld. It can make sense, bro. What the heck is going on in this fantasy world? But there he was, the alchemist the first boss for this 100 days event was triggered and i think what made things even more annoying is that he disappeared after a while because he went into the bastion like what kind of have mixed feelings about it because i mean he does do a lot of damage i'm telling you my arrows did not work on him he disappeared and go even lower into the bastion i could hit my shot bro where did he go hello did he go invisible what is this he had to go down here somewhere I'm guessing he went in here.
There he is. By the way, it's super dark in there, so there's a bunch of mobs as well. Talk about third partying. After such a back and forth fight, I literally had to use one of my golden apples. I had to face this guy off. I can't even comprehend how much more difficult the other bosses are going to be. And even though he almost killed me, I had to list this challenge. What? 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 Wait, one more. Oh my gosh. Where did he go? Where did he go? Get over here, bruh. One more hit. What? Bro, you're literally dead. Oh my gosh. And we got the last hit. We finally won. Yeah, after that, I was basically done. So we dipped from those horrid caves and found ourselves a huge windmill. We found ourselves another one of these giant mushrooms with some diamonds at the top. And this thing called the Unholy Grail, and it advised us not to drink it. So we drank it instantly all right all right i kind of regret it we took a huge amount of damage like jesus maybe i should lay off the experimenting at least for now we also encountered a dragon and had to hide underground i tried escaping it but it tailed us relentlessly during the mining trip to escape the dragon we ended up finding this thing called the ancient tomb there's a spawner in there and a zombie brute caged and eager to kill me i see your bloodlust i could see it in your eyes found a tattered book that would give me hella levels you know damn well i'm gonna be using that i found a ring that i put on this should help me a bit with surviving I also decided to kill the zombie brute. Then I continued exploring cause I was not risking it and getting killed by some dragon. I'm sorry, but the overworld, like up there, it's above limits at the moment. Interestingly enough, we also found ourselves a strange underwater area and I found this thing called the Will of the Ocean, which had some crazy stats on it. You guys can pause the video if you wanna see it. Definitely recommend taking a look at what it actually does. Cause while recording this, I know damn well I didn't. <laughs> and then I found myself a second chest, but on my way I found a goblin trader. Look at this guy. Raiding and shit. My next goal was to go to the nether, so I had to find a lava pool. But first, I'm gonna explore a bit and find some structures that are naturally spawning. If you guys didn't know, in normal Minecraft, you can actually find somewhat built portals and basically fix them up. At least that's what my hope was to find. Then we ended up here, in this slime island. Not exactly sure how we got here. And then we saw ourselves a sea serpent. If you thought that was crazy, there was a whole leviathan lurking in those waters. I had to be careful escaping this place on a boat. Honestly surprised I even did it in the first place. But your boy did it. I escaped and got onto land safe and sound. We also found ourselves a lava lake. Then I realized I had not enough diamonds to actually mine the obsidian, which is kind of dumb of me. So I ended up using the lava water bucket trick. And boom! We got ourselves the nether portal. All that remained was a flint and steel. Luckily, there was gravel behind me. And then we entered the nether. We first found a castle looking thing. Not the nether castle, but it looked like it was made out of blackstone. Blaze rods, not through the spawner, through one of the off blazes in preparation for the ender dragon. Because we did need to beat that at some point as well. And then look, we found ourselves the nether castle. I was worried because I'm sure there are creatures here that want us dead. I decided to put on the ocean relic thingy. Ta-da! Anyways, we still needed blazes. We finally found ourselves a spawner and I got a attacked by my little mushroom minions i don't know why i said my they're, they're not mine they're not my mushroom minion they're there to kill me the minions chased me away for a bit and i had to retreat then this blaze almost decked me i'm at half a heart anyways we got a bunch and i feel like every new thing that we do we get slowly closer and closer to death very stuff honestly i'm gonna just try my luck elsewhere because this place is filled with a bunch of mobs that i have no idea about i also got attacked by this wraith looking thing and then there were these flowers that actually burn you if you stand on them vegetation gone wrong bro weird stone golem things that started throwing babies at me and the golems were pretty terrifying themselves too after doing some more exploration we ended up finding a pig themed structure itself kind of looked like an egg to be honest looking at this creepy thing staring into my soul as if i'm terrified to die here yeah it's pretty accurate we also ended up looking at the top chest and we found ourselves our first netherite ingot of the series then i looked down in hopes to find more netherite <laughs> nope look at the masses of piglin brutes down there waiting to slaughter my guts you're crazy i'm not going down there you go down there also ended up finding this thing called the vain goblin trader his trades weren't too bad actually but i didn't have the stuff for it found this animal called a bucky it's so cute look at its nostrils I accidentally smacked it and killed it oops misclick then we found this horrible biome it's literally a biome made out of flesh it's such a disturbing thing to witness but we also found ourselves another nether temple here with some gold which would be good for trading and another netherite scrap the back chest had bombs in it yep and a tattered thingy which i used for experience i threw a bomb to test it maybe a little too close but they work i confirmed it this is an embarrassing clip of me trying to trade with a pigman anyways i leave this place in embarrassment and get latched on by a demon mosquito i hate this place ate a hog lion but then my screen started looking like this yeah found another one of these egg looking things and more netherite in the top chest 
I finish up the trip to the nether with ours with trading with some piglins. Got ourselves a few pearls, and then they decide to hop out and almost demolish me, but I got out in time. Cause your boy's built like that. Kidding, it's just pure luck. Days 25 to 35. We went back to the nether portal and returned home safe and sound. Explored a few dungeons, and I ended up finding some diamonds. There was an annoying silverfish spawner, which also got in the way, but underneath it was a chest with diamonds as well. This was definitely going to come in handy for the day 40 boss. Then I mined the diamonds I originally found and got jumped by zombies. What nuisances. I like that word. More diamond ore. This mining trip might actually be worth it, and on our way back to the surface, we found some more diamonds. This new terrain generation is going crazy, I'm not going to lie. I mean, just look at how many ores are around these caves. It's insane. Then I found a spawner and it summoned a demon. I blocked it off so quickly. Still peek to check it out though. It was Elton. That's literally what it's called. So we started attacking him. And that was the final hit. We got like four achievements for just slaying Elton, which was insane. We also ended up finding some sort of a shuttle down here. This place looks so surreal. We decided to grave rob a bunch of random stuff and found this strange home it looked like. Besides the wraiths that were trying to, you know, bite me, it was pretty barren. At that point, I decided to head back to my base and find out that the village was raided by two orcs. Not just one. I literally look out my window and I see one staring into my soul. They both came out of nowhere and whacked the house walls down. I hid as soon as possible and I dug into the wall because we needed to collect their stuff. So I decided to use this strat and we took the stuff and dipped. You're funny if you think I'm going to get eaten by some orc, alright? I'm not bite. I'm kidding. It was actually really sad that he died. We did, however, end up needing a change of plans. We decided to go to the trees that were right above the place. And also managed to rescue two villagers. That way, the village would never die. Because we can make those two villagers reproduce an entire civilization. Kidding. I think. We begin building the treehouse. Or proof in case there is another raid. Because they'll be down there and we'll be up here. The raid works randomly whether I'm at home or in the middle of nowhere. So I'll have to stay out on the lookout. Decided to craft up some of that diamond armor from the loot we got from mining. Then continued to build the treehouse of ours. There were also swarms of phantoms stacking up outside the place. That got kind of annoying really, really quickly. The village we once used to call home that lives underneath us will be forever in shambles. Poor villagers slain by the orcs and the creatures during the raid. It will never be the same down there ever again. Alongside all that, we also decided to make a few lookout points. Also had this weird idea where we can make an obsidian base by the end of these 100 days. I don't know if we're actually going to get to that though. That's a little difficult. Especially since I should probably be focused on the day 40 boss instead of all this extra stuff so that's sort of what we did we decided to go back to the nether to test my rng with the netherite stuff we got a few more scraps from the chest but nothing crazy we also found ourselves a nether ship and there was sea serpents within the nether scary do these things even count as sea serpents do, do i call them magma serpents i'm in so much confusion dude i also realized for some reason my armor was also gone i'm maybe it broke i don't know i'm honestly not sure where it went I think it might have broken from the damage, but then we just craft this stuff. But inside the ship, we also found ourselves some netherite boots. And I made myself some more armor. Just for the meantime, until I figure out what the heck happened to the old pair of armor. Yo, there's so much gold in here. A Bastion Remnant map? Stone sword? Why? Why are there so many swords and bones in here? And a, and a globe? Grab these real quick. Damn, I'm looking nice as heck, bro. What the hell? My armor's still missing though. I don't know how. I swear I made like a pair of diamond stuff right before I went to the nether. And now it's just gone. It's not even in my backpack. That's crazy. I'm gonna make some temporary armor for now. I think that's probably the best thing to do. At least with these little sea snakes. I Where are the rest of my diamonds? Okay, well, I guess iron and gold is gonna make one more of these. Boop, boop. All right, no gold. Screw it. We'll do it like this. Is that a... Okay. I, how do I make the netherite? I forgot how to build one of these. Oh my gosh. I... What is it called? A smithing table, no? Yeah, it is a smithing table. How the heck do I... Oh, uh, it's a two by two. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. How did I forget this? My helmet. I should probably put that back on. Yep, this is looking good. Let's get out of here. I don't really like the vibe this place gives. Long nether trip, we went back to the overworld. And a ghost attacked me while I was looting this graveyard. Days 35 to 40. Found myself a gatekeeper to a new dimension. I need to work on that myself, though. Also got zapped by the wither effect trying to leave my house. Was something trying to keep me in here? It was kind of weird. Also found this really strange tower. Paraglided right off of it. Ran up to a dead dragon. Yeah, it's, it's dead, I think. Can't do nothing to me if you're dead and gone. But as you know, the big event is coming in. Day 40 is when I fight the next boss and we needed to prepare. The thing about this boss is it actually has minions. Not just one, but multiple of them that actually chase after me, which is really annoying during the fight. But after a bunch of exploring, we finally found ourselves the village. Now this village isn't any normal village. This is where the boss lives. Look at him sitting on his little throne. This was war. 
Our village is one troop, which is me by the way, versus their entire village. I wish Bite was here to help. Rest in peace, Bite 2022. And the leader of that group is called King Big Belly. No, I'm serious. That's actually what he's called. Throughout the entire fight, we tried getting close to King Big Belly, but his minions kept jumping us. He also laid down this electric beam that would hit us and damage us throughout the fight. So I need to find some sort of cover. Luckily, it was a village and there were a bunch of houses. After I set up in one of the houses, I started bow spamming and it worked for a while until I realized there were also mage minions against them and it was regenerating health basically throughout the fight these mage minions spawn in and then they start regenerating king big belly and so i had to eliminate them before they could regenerate so i can't just stay cooped up in a house shoot so obviously your boy had to take them out even in the house he could zap the heck out of me so i had to be careful near the end we had really low health and i went so up close and personal that i smacked him with my axe mid explosion that he wanted to use on me. I know about y'all, but I don't think I want to find out what would happen if that explosion actually hit me. I'm just saying. Oh my gosh. Finally, holy. And then we defeated King Big Belly. Yeah, he's gone now. The rest of the duration, we just basically explored around and made sure we collected all these masks. Days 40 to 55. I ended up traveling all the way back home, safe and sound. Plus, I needed a place to store all the spoils of our war. At least I think it counts as a war, even though I was the only soldier on my side. But then again, the only two people or civilians within my nation are the two people I have trapped up here that are made to reproduce. So, I think the blame's on me on this one. Then I realized where the armor went when I went to my nether strip. I left it at home. I'm such a klutz, yo. And then we made ourselves full netherite. Let's go. These loot chests have been blessed me up quick time. Also, I ended up making these things called Tungestin tools. I'm probably butchering that. But I also made some weapons because basically this stuff is netherite level. So don't mind if I do. I didn't even realize it until now thanks to not enough items. And I found it on the ceiling of one of these nether dungeons. And I made this thing called a Tungustin hammer. Yep, I'm not too fond of hammers, but the damage on this thing is a whole nother story. Mending on my chest plate, just in case. These bosses are pretty hard. Now, another reason I actually chose this village in specific was actually right underneath. You remember that well we explored? Yeah, apparently, the next boss we had to face was actually down there. It's a thing I didn't want to show you guys until later. But the thing about this boss is they are actually a really heavy hitter, so we're gonna need some golden apples, so I went tree chopping. One for just regular wood, but mainly because we needed apples. After that, it also carried into exploring a bunch of the other structures, and jacked their loot too. Look at this underground village, it was sick. I never thought I'd see the day when I'd find a village that's underground. Like, who even comes up with this stuff? I found a diamond hoe there. This place honestly seemed more like a labyrinth than a village though. And then another cyclops but i ran from it this time i don't know why i said this time i run from them every time then we found this guy again and i bought the stuff i needed from him this opened a portal to this place called the blue skies dimension remember the alchemist we fought on day 20 yeah that, that's where this guy's from a gigantic bug attacked me as well it burned me a few times too but i ended up killing it the dimension got a few updates since the last time i played on this this dimension has a lot of creatures that seems pretty hostile i didn't even have much of a reason to be here in the first place so after exploring around for a structure i had no luck then i found this webby tree it was scary looking i think it was some sort of spider's lair we went inside tried breaking something and i guess our tools don't work here very well i kept moving one foot to the next found a venomous spider and it almost killed me yeah it was right then and there where i took my leave though i did get a little bit lost but eventually i found my way out of the place it's not my fault all the walls here look exactly the same days 55 to 60 a good portion of this was actually going back in the recordings and finding out where the portal was that i decided to like enter from but we finally managed that we also decided to go back to the normal world again to prepare for the next boss we also got raided and I hid in a wall and waited. Literally all I did. I did not want to deal with any more life-threatening situations. Or so I didn't want to. This thing is called the Lamictin that was summoned at my location. I hate this custom raiding system. It literally drags any boss or mob into the game, spawned on top of me, and the fight commences. Who in the hell put this on the idea board? Honestly, for a while, he just stared at me. And then he summoned these weird squids and demons. They're demons, I tell you, bro. So I waited because I wasn't trying to die to no air or something, all right? And then it ended up dying. It was intense, but somehow we pulled through. This netherite stuff is really coming into clutch. We went and located the Ferris rot not i am so butchering that i'm so sorry basically mordekaiser from league which was also the third boss of this challenge because it is closing into day 60 there he was one attack of his destroyed my shield instantly it was crazy my strat was to make as many shields as i possibly could then i started dodging his attacks and finally i managed to get the last hit on him i was actually terrified this would be it for the 100 day challenge thank god it wasn't 
and then I traveled back home. 40 more days to go, baby. Day 60 to 75. We made it pretty far in. The village also gets attacked by pillagers. After that, the fairies decided to attack the village as part of a raid. We just killed that thing. After trying a little bit, I was like, nah, this isn't worth it. We evacuated. On a real note, coders, the one that actually coded the, the little raid thing? What the bro? Really? Oh, get that stuff fixed. Ran over to a different civilization elsewhere. This society was not surviving that. We'll come back here later, maybe, just to check if they're still alive. We wanted to prepare for the Ender Dragon fight. I literally don't even remember where I put those darn Eye of Enders. Oh, wait, I found it. Well, I found one. Aw, oh, look at this little dragon thingy. Whack. Found ourselves a spooky haunted house looking thing. It honestly gave me chills just looking at it. Okay, bit of a jump scare in the beginning, but I found this one room with blood in it. Then it was just bones and remains after remains. I didn't like the vibe the house was giving me. It kind of felt like a horror movie right now. Look at these killers in the making. Scary stuff. Despite that, we still continued our journey. It took forever, but we finally made it to the Ender Dragon. It was time we eliminate Minecraft's regular boss, which was basically Day 80's boss in the first place. Unfortunately, this one doesn't get summoned on top of us. We actually have to go to the end for that. But look at how the end looks. It's so different. Also, why do we spawn so far away from there? Is that a mutant enderman that I see? What the heck is going on here? There were so many situations where I was close to dying. This is way too much anxiety. And before you knew it, we killed the ender dragon. Honestly, with the stuff we have, it made it a lot easier. It's a bit of a relief compared to the other bosses, to be honest. There's also a whole new biome here. Honestly, way too much content here for me to explore. I don't even know where to begin. The end looked beautiful, stunning even. Then I decided to go, oh hey, look at the floating pink lily pad, let's jump onto it. And then the challenge was almost over, because I almost died from that thing. Like a lily pad? That's the threat to my life? It's probably just my decision making skills, let's be real here. Don't worry, I made it down, somewhat safe and sound, and just look at this forest. It's like a whole new fantasy world in itself. I found these cool flashy looking crystals, guess this is what they meant by taste the rainbow. Another mutant enderman was found here. Anyways, I found a tower. And I don't think it was the end city with the ones that have the elytra in them, unfortunately. Up there was actually fireworks for our elytra, but no elytra. But there were diamonds, and I think there was enough at this point. I don't believe we'll be needing any more diamonds beyond this, unless there's like a diamond golden apple or something. We continue our search for our elytra. It's our right. I found this end city. Wonder if the elytra is here. Totem of Undying, and holy, I was being thrown around like a volleyball. We got so many totems of undying and all these cool items. Unfortunately, no elytras. Like, what? They are doing me dirty right now. I don't know how I feel about this, but basically, we couldn't find it. So, we just decided to abort the mission. I had one more thing I wanted to do before the last boss fight, though. Days 80 to 90. Back in the overworld, I actually wanted to do the warden fight. Yeah, we're actually on that version of Minecraft. So, we had to go underground and just, you know, basically mine a bunch. My morals started lowering because of how long this took, and I ended up realizing after all that that we're on an earlier version of Minecraft that's just with mods. The thing that gave me really false hope was there was a mod that actually added all the stuff for the warden, but the warden itself. It was just adding like the little blocks it added in that new version of Minecraft. So despite all of our efforts of just mining and mining and mining endlessly in every direction until we could finally find ourselves either an ancient city or at least like, you know, the biome where we find the warden at. We got nothing. Yeah, it was just a big waste of time, really. So low-key, your boy kind of got baited. I'm not gonna lie. But there was actually one hope because I then looked into it and I found out that the ancient city actually does exist within a mod. This mod's goal was literally just to add the structure into Minecraft and I was interested to see if the warden would actually be there, but we also had no luck finding that thing. It felt like I was recording a brain-numbing montage just finding this thing and I didn't find anything. So it was like no satisfaction whatsoever it was just a waste of time days 90 to 100 now, obviously we're at the end of the series but there was our final boss that i needed to kill now i left this one because not only is it actually a really tough mob to beat it's also a really visual mob and in my opinion it's one of my favorite bosses the biggest issue with fighting this last boss is actually finding the creature because from what i can tell he only spawns in like icy biomes and is often hidden usually until you hear the sound cue. Now even the sound cue itself isn't the most clearest thing to actually listen to. So we had to go exploring for an ice biome. And all I could find is just vast majorities of random biomes. And then I did find like something similar to a snowy biome, but I don't think it count because the only thing that was there was like pine trees and a bit of snow. I don't know. The main thing I was looking for was this biome called the Ice Spikes biome. Now, if you could find one of those, that would be beautiful. But after so much exploring, we began exploring to where I believe the creature would actually be dwelling. Now, I don't know if this place is actually called the Ice Spikes biome. I think it's a modded ice biome, but I think it still counts. 
Honestly, it's a terrifying creature and I didn't want to take it too lightly. As you can see here, it was asleep. Look how cute it looks. It can't possibly harm me that much, right? Right? Wrong! I took the item and it woke up. It froze me so many times, it was so annoying. I always have to one-up it and keep my distance. It was a crazy back and forth fight, but I finally managed to smack it around. And what can I say, it just couldn't handle me. And then it was defeated. Look at this. A city once home to millions of humans, now abandoned and overrun with zombies. But these aren't your average zombies. They're more bloodthirsty, don't burn in the sun, and mutate into horrifying creatures over time. Despite how hard this was, we decided to survive in this infested city alone. Or so we thought. Before this ends, we want a fully functional base loaded with traps to kill off a mutated experiment that went rogue. And finally, kill off the worst of all creatures, the dreadful heat mummy. Can we pull this off without a single death? Watch till the end of the video to find out. Day one, we were on the top floor of a building, and before we knew it, Miles was blown away by a storm. He didn't even do anything. Usually this would start off with us getting wood, but nope, I guess Minecraft had something else in mind. And without a second to waste, Miles was then gone. He was taken by the tornado. Talk about a clingy relationship. And if you thought that was bad, he was not the only one that was blown away by the storm, because shortly afterwards, I was taken too. We tried our very best to fight the storm, but we really couldn't do much. We were being blown onto a building, and Miles thought to break the window and actually enter the building to get into safety. It was going pretty well for us. This was the first building, well, besides the one we got blown out of by the tornado, that we could actually loot. Now, here's the thing about Miles. He's like a child, you know? You leave him be for too long and he gets himself into a lot of danger. A very risky person, so I had to keep my eye on him. And despite that, I still managed to lose him. He went to the top of the building, jumped out of a window on top of another building for some reason, and ended up inside a different one. Like, what? There's a tornado going around. Why would you even go outside? As the responsible friend I am, I decided to take it upon myself to get there as well. Just so he doesn't get into any more danger. By the time I actually entered the infrastructure, I find out that Miles jumped out of a window. But he kind of used the storm to his advantage. So I did the exact same thing to get down to him so we can get to safety. What both me and Miles didn't put into account is all of the creatures that were around us. Not only were there zombies, but there were also skeletons all over the place. I tried my very best to get back into the building, but when I made a huge huge leap for it, I noticed the masses of skeletons aimed down on sight at us. They had all guns on decks, bruh. We had no way of actually moving with the storm being there, but we decided to do something a little interesting. Instead of walking on normal land where it pushes us back, we decided to go a little bit underground and dig ourselves a little bit of a burrow. Upon making this, we also found a bit of a cave. It didn't have any wood, so we couldn't explore it. Neither did we have torches to actually see. We used the burrow to finally reach some trees. By the time we got up, the storm was kind of gone kind of not at least it didn't push us anywhere anymore but we also managed to get ourselves the first bit of wood of the series crafted myself a pickaxe and right as we thought that the storm was getting a little less severe it started picking up again but this time reasonably we actually went inside before getting blown away by it right miles days two to five we explored floor by floor and eventually found ourselves a spawner we didn't know what it was but it ended up being a spider spawner and we completely booked it we knew that the zombies were bad but we had no clue as to what the spiders were like and we really didn't want to risk it. A couple floors above that, we found another room with spawners. I quickly acted and broke the spawners. Then I ran to the back and found myself a chest. We got some food in there, a bunch of obsidian, and a little bit of iron. Okay, you're not gonna see me complaining. That was not a bad chest. Miles, on the other hand, managed to find another spawner, but it was a skeleton spawner, and he got jumped by the skeletons and ended up in a corner. I don't even know how he managed that, but he blocked himself off. I went to the floor below him. I told him to heal up a bit because he was gonna take a little bit of fall damage. Okay, heal up, heal up. One. Let me know when you're healed I'm up. I survived. Because I'm, I'm a survivor. Let me know when you healed up. Before I knew it, he was down. There we go. Now he owes me one. We leave the building just to encounter one of the zombies walking around during broad daylight. We get to see it up close and personal. And as you guys know, once it hits nighttime, the zombies are twice as fast. So I quickly booked it into the building because it was just about sunset time. And that building was filled with mobs. So we quickly went to the top of the building as fast as we could while pushing the mobs aside. The roof seemed like a good idea because it was far away from the mobs. But if a storm hit, we were kind of screwed. 
I looked over to one of the sides and I saw water. But right when I thought we were safe and sound, Miles had shoved me off of the building. But don't worry, he didn't decide to dip on me. He actually jumped off himself. What a crazy person. We continued collecting a bunch of resources. And I'm not even joking. Miles, on the roof of one of the buildings, started screaming, there's a horse up here. And when I went there to go check it out, it was not a horse. But Miles decided to punch it anyways and we booked it for our lives. Also, somehow I managed to get myself some snake eggs. We started hearing some snakes nearby as well and uh, began searching a bit. Day 6 to 10. A huge chunk of this time was also just continuing the exploration of the city. There was a lot to see and we wanted a bunch of loot before we actually decided to settle down. Oh, and there were crabs. Those were pretty cool. After all of that exploration, we found ourselves on a bit of a bridge. We didn't know where it led besides this little secluded area from the rest of the city. And we kind of liked it. Right at the dead center of the area we just stepped in was this one building that was secluded from all of the others. All four sides were disconnected from the rest of the city within that area. I looked up at it and I was like, yeah, this is going to be our base. And obviously, before we could claim it as ours, there were a bunch of complications. One of the biggest complications was the fact that there's a bunch of mobs swarming the place. So we had to go floor by floor to actually take care of it. We also haven't got mining, which means we don't have coal, which also means that we don't have torches to light up the area so that the mobs don't spawn in the first place. Despite this, we decided to still look through the building to see what we can do with it. There was a bunch of floors and there was a ladder system that led straight to the top. Days 11 to 15. Miles thought it would be a good idea to go mining, which he wasn't wrong. I, on the other hand, wanted to get myself some wool because I wanted us to have beds. I started looking around the area and finally I found myself some sheep after climbing the top of one of the buildings. Made myself some sneers and started snipping away. I wasn't going to kill the sheep because I needed their wool and they were going to regenerate some anyways. I tried bringing the sheep back to the base, but it didn't really work out the way I planned it to. We got attacked by a couple things, but we sliced them up. And right when I thought I caught a break, I decided to go into one of the floors. And for some reason, for some reason, there were like a bajillion spiders within that room. And all I could do was hold up my shield. If it wasn't for Miles being right behind me, breaking the blocks just so I can escape, I probably would have died then. But we escaped going two separate ways for some reason. During this situation, there was another problem that persisted. And that's the fact that my health for some reason did not regenerate despite me eating food. I had to eat a golden apple just to regenerate some of the hearts to make sure that I don't die. My heart's not regenerating. The solution to it was very simple. We just needed different types of foods because I got used to the food that I kept on eating, which in this case was the bread. So once we figured that out, it was pretty simple from there. The next morning, we were on top of the building next to our base, or what we were going to make into our base, obviously, before the mob started swarming it and almost killed me. Despite us figuring out how the new food system works, we didn't have much variety in that situation. Oh, in the meantime, while I was trying to regenerate my health, Miles, on the other hand, decided to hatch a snake egg. Who in their right mind in this situation decides to just hatch a snakeling? A freaking snakeling, dude. Whatever. And for some reason, he also named it Feet. I don't question him, okay? We don't we don't question Miles. Miles is, uh, is, is something. Now, when I say this health regeneration took long, I mean this health regeneration took freaking ages. I literally couldn't do anything, and I was just thinking of different ways to get different types of food. We didn't know that many. Eventually, it became really dark, but looking from the side of the building, we then come to see that there is a gigantic crab staring us down. Now, when you see something gigantic, you know, you'd normally move away from it, but us? No, 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 no. We went straight to the crab. Miles attempted to give it a little bit of a one-two, but he couldn't reach the crab, and it looked really stupid. He eventually gave up and went over to me and said, hey, why don't you do it, you know? I'm like, okay, using my big brain, I decided to climb the building and hit it on my way down. But when I was up there, Miles pushed me out. Classic Miles. What we didn't take into account for was while the crab was distracting us, an entire invasion of zombies started appearing and chasing us. It was ridiculous. It was like one of the lines you'd find at Black Friday. Crazy. Day 16 to 20. After being chased around by a bunch of zombies, we eventually decided, you know what? It's time to get serious, okay? It's time to get serious. We were gonna take over the middle building like we initially wanted to do, and today was the day. Me and Miles both went floor by floor, annihilating anything that got in our way. Luckily, due to Miles going on a mining trip to get a bunch of coal, he had a bunch of torches, so we were able to light the place up. Look at that. Safety, right? Upon inspection of the building, we decided to base out at the top floor. The zombies couldn't easily reach us, and we had the high ground on them. So if anything bad ever happened, we could just evacuate through the roof. With that being said, we started clearing out the floor because we wanted to make the room a little bigger. After that was done, we realized another flaw in the situation. Every time a storm hits us, the windows decide to shatter and completely get taken away. So that was a problem. We decided to go to the first floor and patch up the things that the storm took away from us. And there we go. The first floor has been secured. There were a couple of straggled zombies just, you know, vibing within the walls. But what we didn't realize was how annoying these zombies are. Now, they may look like 
like your normal zombies, but they are not. I can tell you that for sure. Because look, every single time we kill one of these guys, two more of them spawn. They're literally like roaches. We can't kill them. I decided to play as decoy to get the zombies out of the first floor so that Miles could finish up any revisions he needed to do. Upon inspecting the rest of the floors, we found out that there's still two zombies. I trapped them in a hole and just kept them there. Look at these two lovers. Cute. Let's uh keep them together as I drop them onto the floor below. At this point, food was really becoming an issue. Instead of eating normal food, I decided to eat rotten flesh, which came from the zombies itself. This could not be sanitary. But your boys gotta do what your boys gotta do. Without any time, we once again got another storm. We decided to check out the outside and saw a little bit of a swarm coming up and decided to go right back into the shelter because we didn't want to be blown away. This is when I took the time out to start using that bow and arrow of mine. Came in pretty handy, I'm not gonna lie. You know what's funny? Staying at the base was honestly the best choice, especially with the storm. But you know what Miles decided to do? He decided to go jogging for a bit, take down a tree, and then run back thinking he wouldn't get jumped by all the zombies around here. I decided to go to the building across from our building. Miles was closer to there, so eventually he managed to get up. We decided that we liked the infrastructure of that building, and we started clearing that out just like we cleared out the floor we were gonna live in. We didn't know what we were gonna do with the place, but you know, it was gonna be useful for something. Days 21 to 25, and just when all things started going well for us, you know, it was a cozy night, there was a storm outside, but we were just chilling. The storm blows me out of the window, and there I was, up there in the sky, being blown around by wind all over the place, and just below me, all of the infected zombies swarming around the tornado. Believe it or not, this tornado lasted a while, right? Eventually, I managed to get out of it, get out of its grasps, and it dropped me into the ocean. Sorry, I lied. Well, it wasn't really me, it was the weather. They, they caught me again, and I was back in the air. What made things 10 times worse was the fact that I wasn't alone, and not only were there zombies, but there were skeletons shooting me mid-air. Now, if y'all know Minecraft skeletons, these things are snipers, okay? They're like natural-made assassins, bro. What the heck? By the time I managed to leave the tornado and I was actually in the water, I was at around four hearts. And even so, it was still a struggle just getting out of the grasp of it all. What made things even worse was the fact that rotten flesh was my main source of food. But we survived, okay? Your boy made it. That's all that matters. I reached back at the base and I saw Miles patching up some of the other floors with some blocks, you know, because we didn't want the windows breaking during the storm. But also, we ran into some zombie issues. This is how it kind of looked like. Days 26 to 30. After a long day of work, we decided to continue working. We went to the basement and wanted to just check out what we were working with there. We started mining into the wall because we wanted to set up one of the first traps of the series. It wasn't the actual one, but it was kind of like a little bit of a test to see if it would work. And yeah, some of the zombies were in fact falling into the hole and we had easy access on killing them. Just chopping their legs off, you know? And if you haven't gotten the gist yet, Miles and good things together in one spot just doesn't coexist, okay? He broke the blocks and the zombies semi got in. He blocked it off with a dirt block, but that was literally it. Here's where things get interesting. Continuing our exploration of the basement, I soon find out that there's a lever near the back. I thought Miles was pulling a prank on me or something, so I decided to bring him over and ask him what it was about. Check this out. Look. Oh, wait. Not that. Is that yours, Miles? What is that? It just does nothing. And without a single bit of hesitation, Miles clicks the lever. Oh my gosh. Moments later, we hear explosions coming from the distance. We come outside of our base to take a look at the calamity that has befalled us. And Miles ended up being the reason that an entire building was decimated before our very eyes. Thank you, Miles. The island just lost some property value. I think the scariest part about all of this is the fact that not only was there a decimated building, but there was literally rotten flesh all over the place. Everything that was alive or semi-alive in there, aka the zombies, was gone. But hey, let's not end it on a bad note, you know? Right afterwards, we decided to actually give some life back into the world. And by that, I mean do plants because we really needed food. I at least I did. I, I don't know about Miles. Water source, dirt, a hoe, and there we go. We got ourselves a bit of a farm. That's all we need. No, 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 it wasn't. It was a very minimal amount. But don't worry, we had plans for a much bigger farm. But for now, we just wanted to test out the waters of it all. And this is when I got myself one of the biggest brained ideas I've had for the entire thing, right? Now, we're all aware that glass isn't very durable. So you know what I decided to do? I decided to use some of our hard-earned iron to make some iron bars. I wanted the place to actually look nice. So I started tearing down the walls and wanted to just kind of lay out everything. You know, I'm a bit of an architect. What can I say? I structure things like this. My upload schedule 
Jo my, uh, uploads good. Mm. Anyways, here's the result. Looking pretty nice, if I do say so myself. Then Miles decided to come up with a plan. He got a piece of TNT and he wanted to use it for some reason. So he went to the roof, he dropped the TNT onto some zombies, and completely ruined one of the corners of the base. I tried placing some water to save it, but I, I don't think it reached the floor in time. Oh god. What's even worse is he didn't even kill all the zombies. There were still some remaining. He just went there and started looting them. And this time I did a bit of exploring. I also wanted to see if some of the other buildings had any, you know, levers in the basement so we could get some TNT in case we ever needed it. I didn't have much luck with the buildings around us, so kind of an L on my part. Days 31 to 35. This time was more or less dedicated to Miles having a little bit of an idea for a trap. Miles being useless? I mean useful? We spent quite a bit of time making a little bit of a perimeter. What we wanted to do was build a moat, right? But we didn't need to put any water in there and we also didn't want to put lava in there because we wanted to use it for XP as well. What's even worse was during this process there was a huge storm that was going on outside. Luckily for us it kind of moved away some of the zombies but once the storm started ending that's when the interruptions came in. But eventually we managed to you know somewhat make a bit of a moat. We needed one last finishing touch and that's just putting trapdoors on the sides. If you guys didn't know zombies don't actually know whether or not a trapdoor is a full block so they just walk straight into the trap and that's exactly what we needed. For that we also needed a bunch of wood so I went out of my way looked for some trees and started chopping them down. While doing this I also noticed a bunch of structures and buildings around me and wanted to take a look at some of them you know maybe just maybe i might get some good loot on the chests so why the heck not and this is exactly how the thing looked like after we placed all of the trap doors and the zombies were just walking right into the trap this was beautiful this was innovation okay we were upgrading our lifestyle our life choices you know we were better people i wanted to improve on the idea as well like yeah you know i was feeling a little bit safer the fact that there's that there but what if there's a storm right what if there's a storm and the zombies get blown into the base there's not really much of an elevation within the land so why not make ourselves a little bit of a gate. That's exactly what we started using a cobblestone for. We made a bunch of cobblestone walls and started making our lovely wall itself. Look at that thing. Yeah, we built that. Afterwards, we went inside because there was another storm. Go figure, right? Days 36 to 40. We dedicated a bit of our time into making a fully functional farm. We realized that the food situation was pretty bad as it is. I had like 53 raw in the flesh and honestly, that's been carrying me throughout the entire freaking series so far. And that's just ridiculous. So we made ourselves a little bit of an agricultural revolution. We placed it on the building that's actually across from our building and I also took it upon myself to start making a little bit of a bridge. I wanted to feel twice as safe when crossing between these two buildings so I decided to make myself a roof as well on that bridge and this is what it looks like. Oh and also this is what the farm looks like. It's looking pretty nice so far you know. It might take a bit for it all to grow but listen okay. Yeah boy's a botanist now okay. That's what's up. Now I know I know what you're thinking. Adrian how is this gonna grow without any sun? Well listen okay. The windows are open. It's gonna do some photosynthesis stuff and it's gonna go through the window and uh uh, neutronize the, the, the seeds or whatever, you know, wh whatever it does. So yeah, I'm a pretty professional botanist. I know, I know. Don't freak out too much. The next few days we spent mining. We didn't really have many resources to work with up above, and so we needed a bunch of stuff. It didn't take long, and we finally found ourselves at a ravine. Now, ravines are really resourceful. There's a lot of stuff we can get from these. The primary things I wanted was materials for a gun. Because, you know, there's no zombie apocalypse without us having a gun. They go hand in hand. It's a bundle deal. Days 41 to 50. We're still on this mining trip. A lot of it was actually looking through a bunch of crafting recipes to see what I can do with certain ores. But there was a bunch of them, okay? There's a bunch of ores. But what caught my eye the most is this little bit of a biome we found down here. Yeah? Yeah, you heard me right. It was sick. It was a mixture of the colors purple and green. And honestly, that cave alone had so many diamonds, emeralds, gold, all you can, all you could possibly want from vanilla Minecraft in it. It was ridiculous. And it seemed that I wasn't the only one that found it because Miles was not too far away from me and we met up again. But I'm pretty sure I took the majority of the diamonds from here before he even got here. So he took the L on this one. I also collected a couple of these. I didn't really know what they were for. They look kind of cool, so I kind of wanted to use them for a build or something later on in the series. After the mining trip of ours, I decided to head back and start smelting a bunch of the ores that we had. And that's when I thought of a brilliant idea. Okay, hear me out. We got an entire base, right? We got an entire wall. We got the trap set up. What if we set up security cameras? Because I want to know if there's any infiltrators. If there's any zombies, you know, whatever happens, I want to be able to know. And I wanted to make a whole bunch of these things. I looked into the recipes and got to work. One of the major ingredients I was missing was also glass. I had to get quite a bit of that. And there we go. We got ourselves the first security camera of this series. Let's freaking get it. 
I showed Miles, and we decided to put it somewhere. And there we go. This is what it looks like in the camera view. Pretty sick, right? Now that I found out how to make it once, making it a bunch more times was a piece of cake. We just needed the materials for it. So all I did for the next few days was go back into the mines, collect the resources I needed, and just keep on making a bunch of these. Then I placed these little guys all over the place. And I was pretty satisfied with the results. I went back inside and Miles was working on an enchantment table. He also set up the books and stuff for us. So y'all already know what your boy had to do. Make his armor real nice and shiny. That's what we do around here. I think one of the luckiest enchants I got throughout this entire process would probably be my feather falling three boots. Like the amount of times Miles is going to push me off of a building and I'll be able to survive it now is immense. I don't even need a water bucket, but I'm going to keep a water bucket on me just in case. The food supply of ours wasn't doing too well because it took a while to actually grow the food. So I went in the basement, started chopping down some more zombies and started eating their rotten flesh. Oh, and also, I also did it because I needed a bunch more levels to actually enchant everything. I didn't have that much in the beginning. Days 51 to 55. I wanted to regain some of the experience levels that I lost, so I decided to go exploring a bit to see if I could find anything out of the ordinary. After I got back from my little trip, Miles decided to show me a little bit is something he was working on you know some top secret stuff i thought it was gonna be a worm or something you know something silly that he found on the floor but nope it was a gun we didn't have any ammo for it but it was honestly a start you know i also went on my routine scout throughout the city now i found a little bit of something but i don't want to tell you guys what i found yet and when i say this thing's a game changer i mean this thing's a game changer okay i want to tell you guys later on when we actually need it so we're gonna keep this one top secret as well now this this is where things got a little weird, because once I got back, I started looking around the bottom looking for any zombies, any invaders, anything like that, while Miles was working on making us some ammo. And I decided to look over at some of the buildings in the distance, and I noticed that there's a silhouette just standing there, watching us. I quickly brought Miles up to take a look at it himself. When they found out that we were looking at them, they completely ran off. We wasn't gonna just let that happen. So Miles was already done with the ammunition. We had a lot to work with, so we chased after them. But by the time we actually reached the building that the guy was at, he was completely gone. There was no trace of him. He also broke the ladders down, so we had to find a different way down from the building in the first place to even get back. Stupidly enough, we look over at the next building over, and we see them at the very top once again. This is actually just a goose chase. What are we doing? But whatever, man. We were gonna throw some hands, okay? We got ammunition. There's no way we could lose. As fast as we could, we scurried over to the next building. But right when we reached there, he was already gone. We looked below us, and Miles noticed that he was running off. I tried my very best trying to shoot him down, but none of the bullets actually hit. He was right there, right in front of us, in our grasps. We chased him through the middle of the city. There was no escape for him. We had him, or so we thought. He ran into this building, but instead of having a wooden door, this building had iron doors. It was a little suspicious. Before entering the building, I stacked up on a little bit more wood and also got myself some food. We did not know what to expect from this building. We were already sus of it from the very beginning. But by the time we got there, there was also a storm brewing. So we really needed to go inside somewhere. There were so many zombies coming from the next building. It was ridiculous. It was a huge swarm. Miles decided to distract them while I tried to get that door busted open. And legit, when I tried giving Miles some of my ammo, the door exploded. Oh my god. Oh what my god, that? Miles. What the hell? What is that? <laughs> is it a zombie? What the hell is that? Miles, those are not normal. That is no, not like, normal. Dog zombies or something. Cat zombies. Cat zombies? I don't know. They were literally everywhere, swarming us. On the trees, right besides us, coming from that one singular area. I don't know how the person that we saw actually went in there. All I do know is this is what we have left. We tried fighting them off, but there were honestly way too many of them. Me and Miles had to back off. I thought about it for a bit, and this could honestly spread throughout the entire city. We had no idea how these creatures function. With that being said, we kept our distance and tried killing off some of these. But they do a buttload of damage. So we honestly just had to back away. This, this was going to be a grave mistake later on. We climbed one of the buildings just to get a bit of an angle on them because they were following us. These creatures can climb the buildings like there's no tomorrow we legitimately had to book it home i jumped off of that building landed in the water and said screw it all i just booked it straight home days 56 to 65 all right listen up okay we weren't feeling safe not at all with those creatures roaming around the city so you know the security cameras it's finally coming into use because if anything like that happens again we're gonna know and secondly i was a little concerned 
what happens if they finally manage to reach our base? What are we going to do then? So I decided to make a little bit of a plan to make a fallout bunker in the nether. So not even in this dimension. We would go through the nether and the bunker would be in the nether. That's as safe as things are going to get. At least for now. An idea that Miles had was to make a glass dome around the entire infrastructure. We both decided to, you know, go on our separate ways and find a bunch of sand. After we do that, we meet back at the base and start smelting some of that up. But listen, okay, while that was smelting, I was just straight up paranoid. I was looking building to building, looking for one of those creepy crawling things to just lurk its way up to us. And I was just on the lookout. I wasn't having it. Your boy wasn't going to be caught lacking, that's for sure. The first thing I decided to do with some of the glass was make sure that our floor, where the chests were, where the beds were, that was all secured. So we covered that up with glass really quickly. Obviously, by this time, we didn't have all the glass we needed for an entire dome to surround our building. So we just made do with what we can for now, just so if some of those creatures managed to get to us they wouldn't be able to seep in through any holes okay so we had to make sure that the base was a hundred percent secure in the next few days we just focused on a bunch of ammunition and making sure the place is secured you know i was just sitting on the camera eating some mcdonald's i was chilling you know not much was happening but what i did manage to witness was one of the creatures managed to creep into the area we freaking called it dude it crawled out of a window looked at our facility and completely booked it probably to tell his friends i went down to check on miles and he made ourselves a weather deflector now this thing this thing is overpowered okay you know the weather and how it like moves blocks and just spins them around like there's no tomorrow yeah that's not gonna happen anymore because we got this little buddy yeah we're safe what we build here is safe so with that glass dome it's not gonna be flying off. But onto more important things, there were a couple spots that we missed in the base and we decided to patch them up really quickly due to the situation. Now the rest of the time within this interval was actually spent mining. Why was I mining? Cause I needed lava. I needed to make obsidian somehow. And the only way to get obsidian that I knew of was to put water and lava next to one another. So this took actually a lot longer than you'd expect. Let's just say as usual, if you guys have watched any of my other 100 day videos, my luck isn't the best. Oh man, what I do for some dream luck right now. Day 66 to 70. I finally reached the base again and we went straight to the basement. Because that's where we wanted to place the nether portal. We felt like it was a pretty good place to put it. And there it is. I checked the cameras one last time just to make sure nothing was going on. And we went into the nether. Now, you know, going into the nether, I didn't expect much besides the normal nether, right? Luckily, there was a bit of a change. I'm not sure exactly how to word it, but there was stuff going at the top of the nether and these little stalactite things. I don't know. It looked kind of cool to me, but we were also not exempted from the fact that there's a zombie apocalypse going on in the nether too. So putting that out there. And of course, we shot him down dead. What else would we have done? Let's be real here. They had no chance. But do you know what did have a pretty decent chance of killing me? These things. Yeah, um, you were looking at them. They're, they're invisible, okay? They're just chasing me invisible. I shot at them. I hit them. They exist, okay? I just can't see them. I decided to explore a bit more, and I managed to find myself these obsidian spikes. Now, this was new. This kind of looked cool. I'm not gonna lie. In our journey exploring the nether, I managed to find ourselves a nether castle. Yep, we found one of these things, boys. I think the worst part about everything is there were also invisible mobs that spawned in there as well. I didn't actually know what mod this was from. This was very weird. So I just decided to shoot wherever I felt like I was taking damage from. It was actually ridiculous. I explored a bit and soon realized that it was a little bit too deadly for my liking. I decided to leave the castle and went in a different direction. It didn't take too long to find the next zombie herd, but this zombie herd was kind of weird. It was looking a little like a Beyblade. I shot him dead. But you know what almost shot me dead? This freaking bandit that was just in the nether for some reason. Man had like a shotgun or something. It was ridiculous. I had to do the dash to get out of this one. And if it couldn't get any worse, I found these weird salamander lizard looking things, okay? They were just roaming around in a pack. It was kind of weird. But you know what? At least I can see them. Unlike some of the other mobs in the nether. So I decided to just shoot them down. Then I found some ones with a little bit of a staff. It kind of looked like Mr. Shifu from Kung Fu Panda. Let's be real here. Killed some more of these invisible guys and I went back to the portal. Because we actually need to start on the bunker itself. I decided to also mine a bunch of nether racks so I had the stuff for it. Smelted all of it so I could get a bunch of nether brick and make it into, you know, nether blocks. And made the bunker. There it is. I would have showed you the process if it wasn't just a gigantic cube. So let's just ignore my bad building 
building skills and let's head back out of here. Wait, almost forgot. I had to make a little bit of a trap because the zombies came into the bunker unwanted. So I used the trap door and used the same method we used for the trap, you know, in the overworld. Day 71 to 75. Once we finally arrived back into the overworld, Miles was there to meet us. Look at him, he looks really stupid with armor on. You can't even see his eyes. He's like a moron. Now while I was spending a lot of my time in the nether, one making the bunker and two just exploring the heck out of it, Miles actually decided to come back to the nether portal and start working on that glass dome we mentioned earlier. And he actually managed to encase the entire base in glass. Like what? That's crazy. But it didn't just end with our base. He also got the bridgeway up until the farms. Like everything was dumb secure. I feel a little bit better now. The fact that we have this little glass stone protecting us, we were chilling, you know? What could, we were unstoppable, to be honest. For some reason, there was a little bit of a spider infestation and we didn't want them laying eggs, so we shot them dead. We went to sleep, but next morning, something interesting happened. I opened up my little camera device that lets me see all the cameras, and one of them was obstructed. And I know I didn't break it, and I don't believe Miles broke it. So that just remains, who the heck broke it? And then we hear a gunshot. Hello? Oh my god, what was that? Miles comes down and we're both confused because we both didn't fire our gun. We look out at one of the entrances and find the guy. The same guy that brought us into that room with all of those creatures and let them all loose throughout the city. Somehow the culprit was camouflaged within the swarm of zombies. There were so many of them. Miles jumped out to go after him, but he got stuck in the pond while I started aimlessly shooting, trying to hit him, but instead I think I hit a bunch of zombies. And maybe Miles. But this time, this time we weren't gonna let him go. This time for sure, we were going to track this man down. Ain't no remorse no more. There's no negotiating. There's no nothing like that. We managed to chase him down into a building. He was going up really quickly up the ladders and we were a little worried because the last time we followed him into a building, it didn't end well. So we were a little concerned as to what he had up his sleeve. We chased him up, but it was a little too late. He was already crawling into vents. This was definitely not the first time he was here. We were a little hesitant at first, but eventually we mustered up the courage to actually go through the ventilation shaft. And at the very end of it was a laboratory, probably the culprit's laboratory. There was a hanging body literally just put up there. Beyond that, there were these two dark looking creatures that were in test tubes and one of them managed to get out. That thing. Oh, that thing there? Oh my god, there's a, there's a guy with a weird... Oh, thing. it's out, it's out, it's out! Wait, 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 did we kill it? Did we kill it? Ah. Don't let it live! I went in guns blazing on this creature. If I had to let anything live, these two creatures would be the last things, okay? Because if we let these two things loose, that's it. The city is gone. Simon, just play the clip of us killing the Godzilla-looking thing, okay? Cool. And we kept shooting the thing again and again and again. I wanted to get the upper hand, so I decided to break two blocks and try shooting it from the side, and oh my god, was that a mistake. It managed to get into the room that we were in, and we had to jump out of a window just to survive. We got back into the building through the ladder system, and we decided to kill off the one creature in the very beginning that we didn't quite kill yet. After that was taken care of, we went to the big guy. We went back outside and started gunning him down. And that was it! We killed whatever the heck that was. I don't got a name for it, and I don't think I'll ever need a name for it, because it's gone. Long gone. You know what else was long gone? The person that led us here in the first place. Like, where does this guy keep going? He's actually like the Flash, bro, what? We decided to bounce back to the base. We don't like exploring these places in the nighttime, because the zombies get much faster in the nighttime, and much stronger. So we weren't gonna have any of that. We booked at home and got some Z's. Day 76 to 85. Listen up, we got that rest in, but during the first couple days, there was a huge storm going around. Remember that storm deflector that we had? So that, that thing was still functional, right? Except for the fact that it had a bit of a radius. When it goes out of the radius, the things that are there aren't protected from the storms, such as the glass barrier of ours, which meant we had to repair it after the storm was done. During this time, Miles went on a tornado joyride. I, I don't know, man. He does some weird things. While I waited, I decided to take a look at the cameras and check out what was going on. I had to make sure that nothing else happened. What else was I supposed to do in the storm? I can't even go outside. Finally, the storm was over. Everything cleared up. We began the operation we were supposed to do a while back. And that was simply just to re-explore the laboratory because we might have missed something. We also didn't know what the rest of the building was like, so we also wanted to take a look at that. We eventually reached the building and instead of going through the normal floors, we decided to just climb some vines. This was Miles' idea, by the way. Not my idea. Right when we reached the top of the building and we were about to enter to get into the laboratory, 
we found this huge gigantic tree placed on top of one of the other buildings we have no idea how it even got there in the first place but to our surprise we witnessed the person that's put us through all of this annoying stuff go in through the portal that seemed to be placed in the middle and as the adventurers we were we decided to head over to that building and go into this portal for ourselves despite it clearly being a trap to our surprise once we finally got there it was still in the tree trunk that we left it at but little did we know we ended up in a whole different dimension we decided to break a hole into the tree so we can actually escape without going back to the old dimension and we decided to take a look around our surroundings we were hella cautious because this guy just entered the dimension and he's gone again which means there might be something waiting for us at the end right off the bat the first thing that we saw was again the zombie apocalypse not very different you know but the environment there was definitely something going on here. Oh yeah, there was an alligator looking thing as well. I decided to shoot it. The person that brought us into this dimension and made us go through everything that we've been through so far was on top of one of the trees there. We surrounded the tree. There was no way this guy was escaping from our clutches. But then out of nowhere, this thing called the Dreadful Pete Mummy was summoned into that world. Now this thing, let me tell you, was devastating. Not only was this thing just roaming around killing things, there was also an apocalypse going on. This was not easy stuff. So this creature has the ability to leech a weird branch looking thing into your foot. I'm above you, I'm above you. Where is it? I took, I got a couple shots. I see, I see, I see it. Yeah, shoot, shoot. And it just keeps you stuck there, kind of like a cobweb. It's annoying. Not to mention, it can cause earthquakes in the entire dimension. That is mad. To even have a chance at winning this, we had to get the high ground. And even so, it started spitting these toxic cubes at us. And if it hit us, honestly, I don't even want to know what would happen if we got hit by one of those things. We just kept a safe distance. I don't know if you guys noticed, but when we came into this dimension, our food all turned into mush. It was just gone. So the only food we had was raw and flesh. So when we started getting a bit low, we decided to just start farming a bunch of the zombies a little bit far away from this mummy. Eventually, we came back full force with a barrage of bullets until... You keep going for that gun. He's so close. Oh. Oh. Wait, actually, he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna die, he's gonna die. Oh, he got it. him. Oh. Okay. Okay. The whole world's shaking. Oh my it's god. It's me so much XP. I've got oh so much god. XP. The mummy was down another one of these weird creatures once again taken down so it doesn't mess up the city as much as it's already messed up with the apocalypse what's even worse is the person that we were chasing is long gone now we did not know where he was you know i wouldn't be surprised if i found out that the two dark creatures that were in those test tubes were from this dimension it all started kind of making sense now but the big question remains what was he even after what was he trying to do here maybe he's just trying to get rid of us we had so many questions, but none of them answered. Days 86 to 90. We had to head back. We traveled a little bit far just to find them. We were also lacking food, so this made it a little bit more challenging. Eventually, we found the portal and decided to go through it. We ran back to the base just to make sure that nothing was changed. And obviously, besides the storm completely wrecking a bunch of the glass there, not much was really changed. We spent the rest of this time fixing up and repairing it and making a bit more ammo for ourselves because we didn't think that was the last time we'd ever see this guy. And we were right. They 90 to 97 everything was calm you know we got back to the base everything was fine we were just you know creating some safety precautions like the ammunition that we made but right when we got a little bit too comfortable this started happening the creepy creatures that climbs walls were all over the place we were being swarmed by them and not only that but there was also a mummy one of the mummies from that one dimension this was bad this was really freaking bad. Not only was the thing bad enough, it also started chipping away the base to get to us. That might help a bunch. Uh, Tin. Oh my god. What is going on? Miles? Wait, wait, wait. Miles? Oh, they're coming in. They're coming in, Miles. I didn't know this thing could munch through buildings. What? We went down a couple floors just to be safe for a bit because they were on the upper floors. Me and Miles were thinking of strategies. Miles wanted to blow the entire place into smithereens. Bro, what? 
Why? All that hard work gone to nothing? Miles really badly wanted to go into one of his chests upstairs. Apparently, he was missing something that could have been crucial. So he went up there to go get it. But in the midst of going up, he got trapped by one of the claw looking things that the mummy actually has. I had to shoot the thing while Miles was right above it. The chances of me killing Miles was so freaking Hi. Luckily, I didn't miss my shots, and I shot the creature. Alright, we need an escape plan. Step 1. We would go over to the farms and get as much food as we possibly can. Maybe even some dirt. Step 2. Get into the basement and leave through the nether into our bunker. And that's exactly what we did, so we executed it. Once we were finally there, we closed off the door. Not to mention, I also barricaded it so that nothing could get in. We didn't know what to do. Luckily, we put this thing in the basement, so I don't think even the culprit would know that we were hiding out here. We had to think about things. I didn't have that much food, and it was just not a nice biome to be in, especially when things like invisible creatures can spawn on us. So, to be honest, in hindsight, this wasn't the most safest place. Days 98 to 100. This is when I thought of the perfect plan, okay? Now, hear me out. There was this thing that I found on top of one of the buildings, okay? But the thing was completely broken. I had to put a couple parts together. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. It's coming to attack us. It's coming to attack us. It's coming to attack us. No, 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 no. Is it attack? It's above you. It's attacking you. It's attacking you. It's attacking you. Why in the world did we try this? Let's get you accustomed. There's Bite, Monkey, Harry, and of course me. If one of us gives up, then the challenge is over. A couple goals in this video is to successfully infiltrate an abyss cult, reach past the sea of corpses, and finally escape without getting permanently cursed. Can we pull this off without giving up? Watch till the end to find out. Day one, we were gonna go straight into it. Our goal is to reach the very bottom of this abyss. It's a pretty straightforward task, except for the fact that we were hindrances to ourselves. But you'll see more of that later on in the video. The first thing that my friends decide to do is jump off of a cliff. Both of them. Yep, just off they go, I guess. Once they respawned, we were right back onto it. The thing about this abyss is that it's not a simple, straightforward, just jump to the straight bottom. There are actually five different layers, and potentially a sixth one as well. And that is exactly where we're headed. Ain't no looking back now. We were on our way down. There was a little bit of a pathway that they provided us, so we decided to take that route. Oh, and there's this really cool climb ability. We're basically able to climb up blocks, just for a limited amount of time. We didn't really put it much to use, because, you know, we were kind of cracked at the game anyways. But, you know, it's there days two to ten and so we enter the first layer and the first section of this bottomless pit this zone was called the edge of the abyss it was a total of 1350 meters deep this was no joke and this thing when i tell you that this thing is steep I mean it. Hey, no jokes here. This thing is deadly. We noticed that there was a bit of a broken down tree and we decided to head straight over there. We needed a bunch of wood to make tools, supplies, and everything else. And so we stocked up a bit. Despite me having a bunch of food, I also needed to bless up the boys. So I started collecting some wheat as well. Luckily, this was a lot easier for us. We ended up finding someone's house with a humongous farm. What a blessing. Ain't nobody starving today. One of the most major things that you need to know is basically beds are your best friend. They are going to allow you to set your spawn point wherever you die so we needed a bunch of those and i started collecting some to scale this first layer luckily for us there were a lot of bases and a lot of staircases that led down a little bit we just went base by base and tried getting ourselves down as safely as possible in the very beginning as we carried on exploring i eventually found myself some iron now this was going to be big because the most i had was stone tools and eventually that was just not going to cut it psych it was in an area where i couldn't mine so it's basically useless took the l on that one i got mean by the game y'all this ain't cool monkey on the 
other hand, was in need of a bunch of cobblestone. And, uh, what I decided to do is kind of mess around with them. Um, I, I didn't let him get much cobble, and I, and I kind of took it for myself. Hey, it's all fair game, okay? Finders keepers. This is when some of the pathways downwards were not existent anymore, and we kind of had to scale downwards. This was a bit of a problem, but I decided to also test out the climbing feature. It went pretty smoothly before realizing that once I lose stamina, I get slowness. That's not good. After realizing that that strategy is basically pointless, we decide to start block clutching our way down. Slowly but surely. We didn't want to lose too much health, and if we died, we'd have to spawn all the way back at the top. Didn't want that happening. No, sir. New section alert. We found another person's base. Now, when I tell you that there's a massive amount of signs here, there's a massive amount of signs here. Is that even the terminology for it? I don't even know. But basically, let's just say that a bunch of people wanted to put their names on a sign and give a little bit of a message to the people that come by this place. Which is us. We're the people coming down. And never being able to come back up. Anywho, the important part is that we got a bunch of food. And trust me, guys, we are going to need food to tackle some of the lower layers. Because these layers are deadly without food. So we basically just started collecting a bunch of munchies. While we were all collecting wheat, Monkey almost fell into a gap within the farm. We checked it out and that thing, honestly, could have killed him. While I was getting some work done and crafting up the bread that I needed to survive, these two decided to play some spleef on the other hand and almost killed each other. Like, bro, we're supposed to be working together on this. As if for those two to be at their throats wasn't bad enough, they decided to bring me along with it and almost spleefed me up. Like, bro, why? Why? What for? There's no need for this. Now, here's where things get a little interesting because I read up on a sign that basically told me if I go down a path, I'll be able to go down faster. This didn't really make a lot of sense to me because the only way down would be from the sides. And this thing goes straight to the middle. I was thinking in the back of my head that it might take us to the other side of the gap. Because that would make a lot more sense. So I decided to take my leap of faith. We arrived at a room with a singular bed, a hole in the floor, and it kind of looked like someone's base in the middle of the pit. This was very confusing because we did not know why it was there and how it would help us go down faster. Because upon looking at the hole and inspecting it, it just went straight down. Bite managed to keep track of the direction and the place that I went to, but Monkey on the other hand did it and we had to help him get back to us. Once Monkey realized the pathway that we took, he was questioning everything. Like, man really said, why the heck and why in the world would you guys go into the center of a bottomless pit to get down faster? Like, bro, y'all got a death wish or something? All we told him was trust us, you know, we had a plan. So, sort of. Once Monkey finally arrived, we decided to use him as our lab rat. We didn't know what this actually was, and we needed someone to go dive down. It was not gonna be me, and Bite wasn't having it either. Monkey, on the other hand, didn't even think twice about it. He just leaped. He's like, yeah, you know, I got my bed back there. No, he didn't. He didn't even right-click the bed. So when this man died, he went straight back to spawn. <laughs> and we had to wait for him. This process took a while because not only did he have to come to the section in the layer that we were at, but he also needed to find the coordinates. And it happened that he was kind of on the opposite end. So he had to walk all the way around, which was pain, by the way. I decided to buy some McDonald's while I waited. And at last, Monkey had finally made it back to the place. He actually this time right clicked the bed so his spawn point saved there and he wanted to give it another go because he thought of a really good plan. And there he goes again, try to. So the interesting thing about this method is it actually works. Monkey made it to the bottom and set his spawn point there. But the way it works is a little confusing. So basically, right, clutches like water buckets, boat, any sort of clutch, it does not work because it registers the amount of height that you jumped off from and deals you that damage. But with the mechanic of the bed saving your spawn point, if you right click fast enough, on your way down your new spawn point will be that bed and so that gives you instant access and that gives you access to the next section and on the first try your boy made it what did you expect come on now and right when i arrived monkey started spleefing me so i just booked it back to the mainland bite in this situation was actually afk so we decided to collect some resources while we waited for him days 11 to 20 after a little bit of a mining trip and me completely wasting a lot of the wood that i had to build as if i was playing bed wars we decided to take another leap it worked the first time so it had to work the second time right nope i died and monkey died i'm not sure why we did this but we decided to spend a lot of time here because instead of going the normal way where we could just scale the side of you know the bottomless pit we decided to use the bed method again on a bed that wasn't even meant as an elevator system it was just a random bed that we found and we we're like hey i think we can make it 
if we do we can skip an entire layer so let's give it a shot death after death after death after death after you get the point this was a pretty loop process and even the other people on the server started questioning us they're like yo you good it was ridiculous but eventually both me and bite managed to do the bed jump monkey on the other hand was having a little bit of a hard time so we had to build up a bit and create him a bit of a platform so he could right click the bed a little easier since it was a bit higher but at the end of the day all three of us managed to do the bed clutch which was good afterwards i found a sign that said this is the way down so i decided to take a leap and basically broke my legs but oh well we just still decided to keep going me and monkey decided to head down slowly but surely because we wanted to play it safe take the most minimal amount of damage and that was basically the goal that we were trying to accomplish here and then bite jumps off of a cliff and dies because he tried water bucket clutching good job bite you know it's whatever we'll just wait for him he has a bed up there and he'll be here soon right i looked up and i saw that we were not alone this is our first encounter with one of the creatures that lives in the abyss it was colored blue and it was flying straight towards us now if you guys didn't know these things are exponentially stronger than normal minecraft mobs and we would probably be best to avoid them at all costs but this was the first time encountering one so we were just kind of looking at it luckily for us we were actually out of its grasp until monkey decided to further look into it and it bit monkey and he started screaming it legit took out almost half of his health he had to straight away start eating something to recover those hearts back and we quickly went down into cover without a second's worth of thought we quickly went into the next section we were not gonna stay up there in that section with that bird thing trying to kill us shortly after we finally get to the next section we start collecting some resources waiting for bite but bite gets pushed off by one of these birds and ends up dying once again now he's all the way back up there we gotta wait even longer as you can see from here birds weren't the only things that we need to worry about in this layer there were still other things that could have gotten us and i think the most terrifying of things was the split jaw if we got caught by a split jaw it would literally be over for us like if that thing camped us we'd have to disconnect and wait a while before hopping back on on our adventures downwards we found this other system that didn't actually require a bed so the concept of it was very simple there was a ladder and in between the ladder there were two to three blocks so basically the ladder would catch or fall and we wouldn't get hurt well sometimes sometimes it did hurt I, I don't even know why but honestly it was a very good method on getting down there weren't too many of these and most of them were on the first section so we wanted to utilize this as much as we could but when i told the rest of them that i found an elevator they did not believe me they thought i was going crazy monkey legit wanted to bury me into a hole as if the elevator wasn't right behind them like come on now as you can see here we eventually convinced them that elevators do exist well whatever elevator sort that is but we started using it to get to the next layer i think one of the biggest issues with going layer by layer is the fact that each and every layer we have to find another bed to set our spawn we didn't want to lose any of the ones that we already had in our inventories and we wanted those as emergency beds this layer was a little different than the last one we couldn't find ourselves a bed anywhere near the top so what we decided to do was continue going down the elevator and the one thing that i was trying to avoid at all costs managed to find us the freaking split jaw but listen up if it wasn't for the ladder system we probably would have been chased by this thing until we were in a cave we decided to continue going but as you can see it got a little stuck on the ladders but then after we started moving it started chasing us once again eventually we got out of its grasp and that's all due to the elevator system we then started moving around looking for another bed because if we died we would have had to do all that again not to mention the split jaws is already over there and we didn't want to experience that again but we did find a bit of a town slash city looking thing in the middle and decided it'd be a good idea if we checked it out because you know when there's a city slash town there's usually beds right while we were taking the pathway to the city slash town there was actually a bird now this bird was different than the last bird that we encountered this one didn't have a lot of blue on them and honestly looked like a regular bird except massive and despite all the red flags that we received from this creature alone and this layer we decided to just walk past it as if nothing would have gone wrong well to be fair it was bites idea me and monkey kind of wanted to keep going down but it's you know it's whatever nope nope it was wasn't just whatever bite started getting chased by the bird and he ran quickly back along with the rest of us from then on we avoided some open places instead we decided to take the enclosed routes so that includes pathways ways down and we just started scaling the layer you know what screw the thing in the middle of the place we just wanted to go to the next layer okay we found this bed but it looked like more of a trap luckily someone already dug out of it but what we also noticed is that someone trapped or privated rather their crafting table like what would we possibly do to your crafting table mr 
nobody can touch my crafting table because I don't trust anybody. We weren't even able to use it. Like, not only was it inaccessible, but it was just there taunting us. We didn't want to spend the wood on that. Days 21 to 30, the forest of temptation. Just about 1,250 meters to go to get to the next section we finally made it to the second section the thing about this section to simply put it it's a lot different from the last section you're not just able to scale a mount well kind of but not really because the structures and just the terrain here is so much different than the last section on the bright side getting through this section is a lot shorter than the last one except for the fact that we have to go more horizontal than vertical what that basically means is to reach certain portions we actually have to go not down but sideways or straight forward or backwards and it's a have to as you can see this was no easy way of getting down a lot of the terrain has completely changed up and also there are more and more things that we had to fear on these layers not to mention the mobs get stronger and we get health effects the further we go down we decided to place our very first bed now this one was expendable okay we needed to use it we weren't gonna go back to the next section all right we made it to section two and we were staying here. We looked below us and there wasn't even ground to bridge down on. So we honestly just needed to find another person's path. And that was our game plan. So we headed over to the first path that we saw. It was kind of like a humongous cliffside. We basically just scaled the side of it up until we found the main land or what we thought was the main land when in reality it was just another one of these chunks in between us and the chunk there was actually another one of those birds we tried our very best to avoid it and we made it to the mainland once we made it we started collecting a bunch more resources because we needed that and started scaling a little bit down on our way there we saw a couple of signs here and there just like on the upper layers except less this time because probably less and less people made it this far we are amongst the survivors yep i know we're pretty cool aren't we bite had almost completely ran out of food me on the other hand i was doing a little well but i knew that i needed way more for the lower sections so we needed to find ourselves another farm we decided to take a look around this first layer of the section upon looking around we eventually found a house with a bit of a wheat farm now we were interested in going but we were also wondering if we could find potentially a bigger wheat farm to suffice for all of us upon going downwards we actually found a bit of an orphanage now it seemed like there were like eight plus beds in there it was kind of strange but we tried looking for one that we can set our spawns in and eventually we did find one we continued going downwards now something i actually didn't mention in the beginning was flowing water hurts more than static water and what that basically means is if you jump into flowing water it'll start hurting you and shoving you out of it just like any other waterfall would basically propelling you to the bottom and hurting you at the same time because of all the pressure we actually found this out the hard way well rest in peace us we died to waterbenders yay okay okay all jokes aside on our way down we tried to play it a little bit more safer upon looking up to bite and monkey i noticed that above them was another one of those flipping birds we basically booked it. I jumped down and then the bird was right after me. For some reason, it didn't even look at Bite and Monkey. It was just looking at me. It shoved me into the water and I was so low. I was on the platform right underneath it. The first death in the forest of temptation was Monkey. And then shortly afterwards, it was Bite. I was the only one alive. The sole survivor of the group. I quickly ran because the bird was not just disappearing on me. It actually started chasing me down. I decided to block myself into the side of the wall with as many blocks as I could. I left a couple gaps for some reason, but that's because I thought the bird was stuck somewhere. So I was just kind of vibing there as I waited for the rest of them to come back. I decided to take a peek and I saw that the bird was actually stuck in the waterfall. This was good for me, but in the background, all I heard was the other two struggling to get back down because of the amount of split jaws and other things that were just roaming about the place. Their spawn rates are probably also increased, so this made it like double the difficulty. This is where things took a turn for the worse. Because while I was waiting for them, I was a little bit AFK and a split jaw snuck up on me and bit my head off. <sighs> what made it even worse is that monkey and bite finally got to me. Finally, they saw me. They saw me get my head bit off. I was back in their situation, in their shoes. I was trying to get back to that same location that they were trying to get to. We were all trying to meet back over there. Unluckily for me, there was so much stuff, just creatures all over the place. And every single time I tried going down there, I ended up dying again and again and again. It was legit spawn camping from a split jaw. It sucked. 
But luckily for the other two, they managed to find a cave of safety where they hid. They also distracted one of the split jugs, so that made it a little bit easier for me to finally reunite with them. We also decided to start mining a little bit because we were lacking of iron, so that's exactly what we did. Unluckily, iron rates and iron spawn amounts were actually lowered. There was about like one to two pieces each vein, and it honestly made things so much harder. Eventually, we decided to leave the cave once and for all and continue heading downwards. We were not only looking for a bed but also food because we were running out of that stuff pretty quickly. As we went down we once again found another one of these houses. We decided to check it out but there was a lot of claim stuff so we decided to leave. But shortly afterwards there was once again another bird that we had aggroed so we decided to try our best to ignore it but it wasn't going too well. Our strategy out of it was pretty solid though. Run! Run for our lives. That that was all we had. There, there's nothing else to it. And finally, we got past the first layer of the forest of temptation. So many more to go. Most of the beds that we came by were also claimed, which really sucked because we couldn't set our spawn points anywhere near. Our last spawn was still in that little orphanage area. So dying was not something on the agenda this time around. It didn't take too long before we finally found an accessible bed and I told the others about it. We also started running out of ways to actually get down, so we decided to start doing some risky maneuvers for some reason but that was probably because we got a bed you know we were able to do these risky maneuvers and we were able to trial and error things until one thing worked well to be fair they all kind of worked but it was just one is more efficient than the other okay we were just messing around but as usual this terrain is different from the last one and the terrain or at least it's vertical terrain just completely stopped and went into a halt we had to go around and find another one of those bridges that led us onto different land that actually goes downwards. Again, mind you. So that's exactly what we did. Days 31 to 40. After a long walk, we eventually found a bit of a bridge that led to the side of the entire place. This legitimately led to the bottom, so this was a good sign. That means we can actually scale it. There was a bit of a pattern that we were noticing with these kind of areas. A lot of the middle areas are very, very short. And a lot of the sides are basically just the things that take it down, because at the end of the day it is just a gigantic abyss and it's shaped like a circle which means the sides most of the time have a way to get down eventually we got into a new layer and found a cross which happened to be at one of the centers of the abyss it was on this strange island and it kind of looked cool actually this layer was a little different than the last layers because this layer actually had bamboo on it it was either something that naturally spawned or something that other people decided to plant there regardless of how it got there it still looked pretty sick eventually we also found one of the things that that we really wanted which was more food how is that 29 bread i'm trying to starve here okay we got sections to get through come on people but yeah we stacked up a bit we got a bit more food we eventually ended up on one of the layers which was a little bit flatter than the rest of them and that's because we were actually able to go a bit horizontal not only this but we also found a structure that was a little bit bigger than most of the structures on the side of the walls this was a first this confused us a bit actually because some of the containers there that was locked were also shulker boxes how did they get shulker boxes is there even an end here our best guess was during events so that probably made the most sense me and monkey decided to climb one of the trees to further scout out the area and further in the distance we found a little bit of a thing that kind of looked like a hub of some sorts that led to different builds and different communities and obviously due to our curiosity your boy had to check it out come on now but in the meantime while bite was trying to get up on the tree in the first place he started getting attacked by some bug we barely could even see it so we decided to scurry quickly once we arrived at the place we saw in the distance we realized that it was an entire civilization there were multiple communities living here it was mad and at the dead center of everything we found a huge array of signs as usual with any place there's obviously a lot of people that want to you know write down their names so they'll be remembered and this was one of those areas now you might be wondering, hey Adrian, why didn't you put down your name on the sign? Or monkeys, or bites, or anyone else that's playing with you? Well, because we were aiming bigger, okay? We were aiming bigger than anybody else on the server. We wanted to get to the very bottom and then put our signs down there. And then put our names down there, alright? Not these whack signs. They're lame. So at this very moment, my friends decided to use this little bit of a tactic called climbing down vines on an empty void. I told them that it was going to go wrong. Did they listen? Absolutely not. 
they just decide to go down the vines and lo and behold a bird decided to attack them mid fall so they were kind of screwed i'm not gonna lie and i stand above them up there in safety by the way watching them fall into their demise and get attacked by birds but on the way down that monkey took he actually witnessed something that he was super hyped to show me so i'm like okay let's check out what it was right so i decided to give in and decided to go down the vines and check it out for myself and on the way down i saw an incredible build okay when i just look at this take a look at the clip yep you guys saw that right it was incredible we almost made it so without any wasted time we decided to start rushing down there was a bit of a staircase that bite found and we decided to take that down or so i thought i was gonna do but instead i decided to take some vines down once we finally reached the bottom of the little chunk that we were on we found out that there was a huge upside down forest and that's what we were using to figure out how to get down it was very confusing because there was no clear-cut way out and we thought we had to go to some of the edges of the map or just that section in general just so we can get down and check out the builds we were determined as heck to check out the build that we saw on our way down from the vines and we were not stopping until we figured it out unluckily for us we got lost but eventually i met up with monkey and bite was busy getting food i'm not sure what he was doing honestly but we all had the same goal in mind which was to get to that build no matter what the situation so that's what exactly we were all putting our mind to monkey was dying from hunger bite needed food i needed food so we all needed a break all right this was going to be it once we got into that building i bet you there's an entire farm system in there well at least it seems like because it looks like a freaking palace eventually we managed to see the actual floor we knew where and how far the actual goal was we were looking at some of the vines and considering if we could fall down from them but honestly none of them seemed to look doable days 41 to 50 eventually after walking all of that distance we at last found a building a structure actually that went from top to bottom we could go down into that thing and reach the very surface where we need to go anyways just to get down another section at last we finally made it to the structure once we entered, we quickly decided to look for a bed because we were not going through that once again. Something that was even better is on our way down, we found ourselves a water elevator and we took that all the way to the bottom. Lo and behold, we were finally at the ground floor of that layer and the acres of food, crops, and everything you could ever ask for when it comes to health regeneration was right in front of us. It was a miracle. It honestly was. If it wasn't for this, we probably would have just ended up quitting because this was not an easy task, guys. This was actually difficult. What was even worse is some of the creatures from the lower section made it to the top section somehow and started chasing us around. That was a little chaotic, but luckily we avoided most of them. We were going for the Undertale pacifist route. We also then found out that one of the creatures were rideable. So we all decided to ride the same creature for some reason, and we all ended up dying. Very counterproductive, if you ask me. But listen, okay, we were just trying things out, okay? You can't even blame us. It looked cool. Like, imagine riding around in one of these velociraptor-looking things. Like, who wouldn't want to do that? I, I meant pterodactyl. Not, not velociraptor. Um, yeah. And finally, we managed to get out of this section the next section was called the great fault this was around 4400 meters down that's almost double the amount of the last two like that is an insane drop but that didn't stop us we continue to carry on scaling this abyss the thing about this place is it's somewhat a little bit easier but also harder to scale down because it takes the concept of just being able to go straight down through different pathways, block clutching, and, you know, just bases all around. But it also takes a bit of a steeper take on it because there are no cliff sides. There are no pieces of land that we can just stand on besides the ones that are player built. So this place was dangerous, okay? If you fall, you're going to fall until you suffocate in the air or fall on someone's base, that too. Another issue with this place is that there were actually no pieces or signs of life anywhere, at least the natural kind, because there were, in fact, a couple farms here and there, but there was no grass. There was no sign of trees. How are we gonna get wood? And there were honestly a lack of a lot of materials, but we were prepared for this, okay? We stacked up on food, all right? We were set. We kept pacing forwards. A few layers below, and we eventually reached this place, which was a bit of a cavern. This cavern was within the marble masses. Like, I don't even know how I got there. But honestly, there were trees in there. It was a little bit of a biosphere, as I like to call it. But there were also creatures in there, so we had to be careful a little bit. But looking around inside, it looked pretty cool. We looked around because there might have been something special in there. Maybe like someone's base, someone's valuable items, per se, but... 
we ended up finding not much maybe a couple blocks here and there but that was about it there was also one of these bird creatures that we found up there well right at the beginning of the section at least and they were just kind of roaming around we tried our very best avoiding them because they did not look fun to mess with now this is when we found something that would have helped us if we found out in the very beginning and that's the fact that someone custom built an entire staircase that leads to the next bit and we completely overlooked it because of the fact that we were fascinated over builds yeah yeah you know what i'm not even surprised you know that, that basically sounds like us we quickly went over to the staircase and started utilizing it this made things twice as fast but again this was double the section size as the other sections which was ridiculous so even with this it was still a pretty slow process also remember the sign thing that people like doing at really crucial moments or like positions within the abyss yeah that there there was a lot of these there were actually quite a few of these all over the staircase on our way down we were just looking at all of the cool builds that we saw all over the place also every bed we found we tried by clicking because obviously we need to set a spawn point just in case we got jumped by something like a split jaw you know we didn't want that happening once again further down into the layers we found another thing that was underground now this one looked a lot more sophisticated it looked like there was an entire community living within this place and i couldn't blame them this actually looks sick and it was probably a really good protection against all the split jaws outside and another one of those bird-like creatures so this was honestly very clever we were just looking around and didn't really do much here because there wasn't much that they could offer without their chest being locked of course so you know eventually we also found a bit of a ship now this ship was not normal okay it was not made out of wood you know what this thing was made out of and this site dire which one was it the, the, the white one that's what it was made out of okay i honestly thought i would have found some like secret treasure or something but also nothing but we kept going i was actually ahead of most of everyone else so i tried pulling a prank on them but i couldn't quite finish by the time they saw it and they eventually just jumped over it i almost got bite though to be fair okay i almost got him we'll get him next time it didn't take too long before we found once again another massive city with some crazy looking builds now, this was also incredible, almost as incredible as all the other builds, except this time it looked pretty interesting because the contrast between the buildings and the terrain that we were in was pretty drastic. What was even crazier is, you know, this is kind of a thing that repeats throughout the sections, but there was something in the very middle of the abyss again that was near the city that looked very sick and we decided to check it out it looked cool at first but it wasn't very practical and didn't really it it was it was nothing it was it was just decoration and we decided to just head back to the staircase i kept moving forward and kept my head up as well lo and behold before i knew it i was eventually at the next section i was one of the first people here um, amongst our group not with all of the players just amongst our group this section was known as the goblets of giants which approximately was about 5000 meters that's how far we had to go just to get to the next section that sounds like a very very painful experience also why is it even called the goblets of giants are there giants here like we had enough we had no idea what to expect honestly i was a bit ahead so i waited for the rest of them once i found a bed is what i wanted to do but let's just say that they were having a couple difficulties with their connection and stuff so i decided to move on ahead i'd meet them in a lower layer the first thing that i noticed on the layer that i was at at the moment is the fact that there was also another city slash town thing now the thing about this is that the area was actually filled with these huge gigantic i guess you could call them flowers what would you even call these things it's these giant stems with a huge circle at the top that's filled with water i don't know what to call these things let's just call them spas okay i hopped from one spa to the next spa and honestly there were a couple of staircases around a bunch of blocks in the water and a bunch of pathways that i could have taken also take a look at the ceiling of the area that i I'm in i don't even know what to think about it like I, what is that today's 51 to 60 eventually we hit one of the towns that are a little bit lower than the one we initially were at i tell you what this town is named but i have no freaking idea in that very town there was also a public ender chest where i had a bunch of blocks this would help me block clutch my way down on some of the parts not all of them obviously and it honestly didn't take too long before we continued heading further and further down below to my surprise there were also a bunch of areas that had a bunch of ladders and a bunch of beds just all over the place you know the lower we get you'd expect the less and less life would actually be there but surprisingly this area had a bunch of life around every house that we also came by i decided to take a look inside of it just in case one of the chests was you know by accident open i don't know i just needed some more materials and you know if it was there i might as well grab something from there what caught my attention was this one house on top of the water that was a little bit closer to the middle than the side it looked pretty nice actually 
Whoever built it did a pretty good job. But what was more important about it was the fact that there was a bunch of food right next to it. That's exactly what I needed. Not only this, but I also realized that a lot of the ginormous trees that were all over the place could have also been used to scale down because I started block clutching on them and going branch to branch. And with each and every layer, I decided to get more and more confident with some of these block clutches. Yeah, boy, I was feeling it. What can I say? You know, I'm crap. It didn't take too long before we find this huge platform. I have no idea what this platform is. Like, in all honesty, it seemed very extra because almost all of it was not in use. It was just a bunch of torches so that things don't spawn on there. I'm not sure. I have no idea what the purpose of this place is. We decided to carry on. We found this little bit of a structure that had an enchantment table in it. I really wanted to use it. I had 21 levels and nothing, literally nothing to put it on. But regardless, I still wanted to enchant something, so it was a bummer that it was claimed. I would like to say around halfway into the layer itself, we started seeing a whole bunch of these ice glaciers. They were really random because like, the fact that there was glaciers right next to fully grown trees was honestly one of the most bizarre things I've seen as far. And obviously, the farther we went down, the harder it got to actually scale this place. Luckily for us, the spawn rates, for some reason, we lucked out on that. There were no mobs in sight for this time being, okay? Just for now. And we were honestly really lucky because of that. Eventually, at some point, the land below us was actually just non-existent and I had to take a pathway that led me straight to the middle of the abyss. I know it sounds dumb, but listen, okay, hear me out. On the other side was the way down, so we needed to check it out. On the way there, though, I did find this one look strange looking structure i didn't know how to explain it really i honestly went to check it out and i think it was a throne room but on our way there we got attacked by a bird but little did he know i had a shield and it had no match for me decimated that's what happened to him we got decimated that's actually a pretty cool word we kept going down the path and eventually found this place where we could use as a bit of a highway and that's simply because it was set up in the way that smp nether highways are where you use a boat and slide it across ice with gaps in between it it was honestly very efficient and it got us to some interesting places like this lovely city these buildings over here hey look at that thing that's pretty cool right <laughs> upon first entering the area i fell off and had to do all that again but we'll just skip over that just so you guys don't get bored day 61 to 65 this place honestly looks sick it was in comparison to all the builds i saw up there this by far had to be one of the coolest things probably side by side as that one structure that we climbed down around like a section or two ago it was a bit of a struggle getting down from one layer to the next with this bit because i did see a couple safer ways to get down but i decided to take a bit of a riskier route and climb down the statue why did i do that i don't know but listen okay it was kind of fun i'm not gonna lie we kept going at it up until it worked all right it kind of started feeling like re-zero at some point at the place we were at i also noticed that there was a bit of a beacon the beacon had a lot of iron and let's just say your boy wasn't doing too well in the iron department so we started looting it by the way after i was done with the recording this is the reason why they banned me from the server for griefing i'm sorry this kept happening and i didn't want to make the same trick back to this very location so i decided to place down one of my limited beds by the way and place it over there this way even if I did die, I could just respawn back up here and try again. All right, this was just to make things a little bit simpler. Once I did finally get to the next layer, I noticed that there was a little bit off with the entire section, honestly. The ice started taking over more than the ground itself, and the ice actually led us to the next town. There was a miniature town at the bottom of that huge town above us, and I wanted to check that out too, just in case there was some goodies like the last town had. There wasn't much, honestly, but we decided to pack our things and head further down. Finally, after scaling glacier after glacier after glacier, and just going across a bunch of really risky bridges and whatnot, we finally found something that looked kind of promising. So do you guys know what this thing is? Some of you guys might, some of you guys might not. So basically what it is, is called a blue vine. Now this thing is supposed to be a bit of an elevator down throughout each of these layers, which made this layer so much easier. Or so we think. Nothing ever goes right when I say that. You know, for the first bit, it was actually pretty normal. We were just going down, we were just having fun, you know, just witnessing the area. But the problem with this situation is when we reach the next layer, the route that was supposed to take us down all the way to the bottom were gone. Someone decided to break them and thought it was funny to do so. And so I was left falling aimlessly to my deck. Good job, you know, to, to whoever did that. Amazing. 
amazing joke. I decided to use my big brain because I didn't want to go all the way back up and find a different direction. So instead I realized that there were a couple checkpoints in between and decided to block clutch on one of them. Look at how low my hearts were when I actually did it. We did this all the way down until there were more vines that we can go down. And that's what we decided to take down up until we hit the bottom of wherever we were at honestly. There was a huge town here but it looked very barren. It didn't seem like a lot of people lived here but the structure was definitely here. It might have been ruins to be honest now that I look back at it. After checking out the surrounding area, I then soon realized that there are gaps on the floor in the center building. The reason why this is important is it leads us to the next section that we need to get to. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this section is one of my favorite sections. Why? It's because it just sounds cool, to be honest. So I did what any sane person would do, jump into the abyss of water. Duh. There was a huge gap in the middle and honestly there was also a little bit of a system to get down but I didn't really want to use that. I wanted to see how the original people that first discovered this place attempted getting down. And that was just aimlessly going downwards within the water. I saw some platforms on the sides as well and I wanted to try seeing if I could land in some of them. But oh god was that a mistake. I just kept dying left and right. It was honestly... What, what was I thinking? I died so many times that I need to place a bet because I needed to respawn right here. I did not want to make a walk every single time that I died. Day 66 to 70. This section is known as the Sea of Corpses estimated to around 1,000 meters but let me tell you the reason it's only a thousand meters is because of how severe this place is it's not fun and honestly it's one of the most devastating layers or sections that exists besides obviously the sixth one one of the main reasons of this is because of the simple fact that there's only certain locations on the map where you can actually progress through, alright? Most of it is just ocean and it's not even a full ocean. They are chunks of water as you can see here while I'm walking across this bridge. I kid you not, I went acre to acre, literally all across the place. I tried following this path because they had to start somewhere, right? And they had to eventually lead to somewhere else. So I was really adamant on finding that exact place, but eventually... I just kept seeing another ocean after another ocean after another ocean right above our heads. It was one of the most weirdest sights, yo. Eventually, I finally found a way down. I decided to set my bed on one of the pathways just in case I decided to fall and completely lose all the progress that I've already made. Not only this, but I wanted to see what was below me. Was there more ocean? Was there land that I could bed clutch on? There was more ocean, but in between the ocean and where I was, you know, going to the bottom of the layer, there was a bunch of air which meant fall damage. Great. One of the interesting things about this area is once I was finally done doing a bunch of trial and error I eventually found myself on this little bit of a platform. Now this thing was weird, okay? It wasn't a staircase It was definitely not some sort of a block clutch thing But it was a bit of a pathway and it was a bunch of falling with no damage actually taken It's hard to explain but just look at it eventually at the very bottom We finally got to some sort of an island. There was actually someone living here No, they're not actually on but you know, there was a bit of a building here and a bunch of stuff here and a campsite, which was kind of cool to see, but nothing that was useful to us. So we decided to keep going. I eventually found a pathway and I decided to follow it because eventually it would lead somewhere, right? I was right. It eventually led us to the place that had land on it. Okay, not just an island. I mean, full on land that we can scale and go down. This was big. And oh my God, was I happy when I found this. Like this thing was actually such a blessing because I had no idea how I was going to scale to the bottom because I've never even been this far down. And you know, just when I thought everything was going according to plan and that I was just simply gonna go down with that, you know, piece of land, it decided to just completely end. There was nothing underneath it. There's a pathway. I decided to take the pathway, but above us was a huge chunk of island or whatever it was. And there was literally no clear cut way of getting down. So I just aimlessly walked down this path, hoping for the very best. Day 71 to 80. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. This duration of time was honestly the worst for me because I did not know where to go. My friends were still in the section above me, by the way, still trying to get themselves down. It was looking very hopeless. I decided on one of the platforms that I found on that bridge, I put down a bed and decided to drop down to see if I could maybe just potentially luck out and that there was something I could bed clutch on besides one measly path another one by the way there was nothing there it was looking bad and lo and behold after all of the time wasted finding this thing we finally found ourselves a staircase let's go that's what I'm talking about it obviously led to the path below it but I did notice that there was some land nearby and I was actually excited about that after reaching there what I was more excited about was the fact that there was a minecart system which meant we could ride our way down into the lower levels hopefully that's at least what I thought and obviously we created a minecart with the limited iron that we 
we had just so we can ride a whip down this thing I think this was a really good decision you know this was a really good investment if I do say so myself you know I'm quite the master of stonks what the minecart led to was actually just like lower and lower levels but what I did discover was that there was a snowy biome on this section this was actually surprising to me because i did not expect there to be wood or any trees or any life forms around here especially when the place is called sea of freaking corpses like what all oh, right and i think i almost forgot to mention that every time we're actually on this section of the world we get this strange effect that happens to our health remember the thing that i said in the very beginning the further down we go the harder the mobs get and the harder that it actually hits our internal organs and everything yeah well let's just say that this section is trying to kill us off the scary part about this is that it just keeps getting worse like it takes out half of my health just in general but i found out that if we just stay in one zone and not move around too much it actually doesn't affect us so what i decided to do was actually live in this biome waiting for the rest of them to catch up to me i took this time to actually build myself a house now this is where we basically just decided to build and this is what the house looks like after obviously a long freaking waiting period they finally made it to the base but the first person that came wasn't actually monkey or bite it was my friend harry he joined us on this adventure a little while ago but he was all the way at the top so we kind of let him come down on his own but on his way down he actually made friends with one of my friends called bagsy boy kids a bit of a menace but we'll get to that later after harry got here it didn't take too long for bite to finally appear but monkey was nowhere to be seen but the fact that three-fourths of us were already here i decided to help harry build one one of his houses and bite built his own not to mention we also started setting up wells for some reason i don't even know during this duration of time i also decided to go mining a little bit get myself some diamonds bite also wanted to do some mining we collected a bunch of wood around the nearby area but not too close or else it would have made it look kind of ugly and harry also started working on a farm for us that way we can be self-sufficient around here during this duration we also got attacked by more of those bird things and honestly it was really annoying we eventually had to kill them off and that's exactly what we did that and hidden houses you know it was kind of a mixture between the two i am not going to be specifying which one we did more of but i think you guys can guess despite monkey not being here we were not gonna let that stop us and we decided to carry on we kept going down eventually we find these really cool ice spikes that were kind of curved it was a little bit strange but it was still pretty sick nonetheless at least on the bright side instead of the lousy iron armor that i had before now i have a diamond chest plate and diamond pants like i mean now this part was actually super fun for me at least the primary thing that i did was ride the rails all the way to where it led and the rest of them actually walked so i was just chilling you know i was vibing in my whip eventually we finally found ourselves at someone's base now this base looked absolutely sick like look at this place the water was just dropping down and their base were on these little floating islands which also looked freaking amazing we decided to invade it because honestly it looked very flourished they looked like they had a lot of resources and we were in need of some resources one of the most important things that we found in this place was actually their enchantment table i decided to start killing some of their animals but i didn't kill them off to a point where they couldn't reproduce so i kept two in each pen but i needed the exp just so i can enchant my diamond armor this helped out so much later on because we didn't realize how important it actually was but besides that we honestly just took some food and just explored the rooms that they had because this base was really sick so props to whoever made this days 81 to 99 eventually after we were all looted up from everything we needed from the place i also decided to take some of their books because i don't know maybe i wanted to enchant something later on and we could potentially make our own enchantment table so we don't need to keep bothering this place to be fair we decided to continue following the rails because that was kind of one of the only places that led us to these cool findings so i was like you know what why not they obviously lead somewhere right in the midst of this we also managed to lose harry I, I don't know where he went it was actually starting to feel a little weird as if we were being watched or something first monkey disappeared and now harry i had no idea what was going on but it wasn't gonna stop me from reaching the bottom all right if they get caught slacking that's on them that's not my fault now this railroad right it basically brought us into the water area and it was honestly sick just look at this thing right we were going through this long narrow tunnel okay we had no idea what to expect but once we finally got there it looked amazing the floor that we were on was glowing the ceiling was glowing the surrounding areas were glowing and even the builds that were built there were freaking glowing it was nuts and we honestly just rode the tracks all the way there we found this really cool structure and decided to look inside, but it was a flop. There was nothing in it, and in all honesty, it was just a waste of time. We also decided to kind of leave the tracks. I wanted to check out some of the other buildings as well. On our way there, we also noticed that there was a bit of a pirate ship. We wanted to check that out because it looks sick. But first, we wanted to check out the castle-looking thing. Upon reaching the castle-looking thing, we realized that we're not actually alone down there. And no, it also wasn't Harry or Monkey. 
we had no idea who it was so we were very very cautious about it because at this layer you're able to commit murder no one can come save you nobody worst case scenario we get into a bit of a fight with them and they find out where our beds are if they find that out and they break our beds we are back at the very freaking beginning we were not gonna let that happen nope for now we just let them be we were still exploring around the town and the kingdom that we were at but honestly they were coming in our direction that's when things started getting a bit serious we eventually after a little bit of time finally found them they didn't know that we were scouting them we were just watching them we looked at their armor and realized that they had full enchanted diamond armor they were not playing no games at first what my mind went to was that hey we should probably keep our distance and keep carrying on on whatever we were doing. But at the back of my head, I just thought, if we could kill them off, this place will be ours. And they will hopefully spawn far away from us. This would be good because I did not want that anxiety of our beds being potentially broken every time we placed them due to these two. And so that's exactly what I did. I decided to take action and declared war on them. We set our spawn point underground. That way they weren't able to actually find it, hopefully. And so we decided to charge straight at them, but we didn't know where they were. We tried chasing them down, but eventually they escaped from our grasps. But one of them died, which meant that they went back to the last bed that they were at. And that was more closer to us than to their teammate. And that's when I decided to take a little bit of action. I needed to instigate the fight happening in the first place. So I decided to message him. I whispered to him and I tell him that we should meet up. And he said, stick to the tracks and eventually you'll find me. And that's exactly what we did. We waited there up until he finally reached us. This is when the mistake was made. Because right when I asked him about it, is the fact that he gave me one of the biggest red flags of them all. He asked me if I was part of the cause. I had no idea what the cause was and I just out of nowhere said yes because we needed a way to lure him in. And I had no idea what I was getting into. But before we could fully think about the situation, we decided to charge in and try killing him off. After we got a couple hits in, really quickly he decided to slice back with his sword that also had fire aspect on it. So every single time he hit us, we were burning. Added to that, the lower amounts of health that we had just being in these layers made this task almost close to impossible. He was on a whole different league. I was the first down. And once I realized what the situation was, I quickly decided to shift. That way he wouldn't know the location of where we were hiding. Shortly afterwards, Bite came as well. And we were both just stuck in the whole shifting. He had a hunch as to where we were, so I quickly started burrowing downwards. But I realized no matter how far that I go down, Eventually, he will find me. I placed a bed down there for both me and Bite and decided to climb back up and said that we had a bit of an offer. He thinks that our bed is up there at the beginning of the burrow, so that was to our advantage. Once we came up, we explained to him how we were travelers and we're trying to get to the very bottom of it. And to our surprise, he said that we can come with him because that's exactly where he was headed. Something definitely seemed wrong because why would you go from trying to kill us to helping us out? Something was not right here. Before we realized it, we were actually a part of them. We were recruited by them. If we tried escaping, who knows what would have happened, but they outgear us by miles, literally miles. We didn't know what to do and honestly, we were just held captive. We were hoping for the very best, that he was gonna lead us to the place we needed to go. And honestly, we had nothing else to believe in at that point. Hint after hint, we started realizing that we were now a part of a cult. The weird part is, regardless of them recruiting us, they didn't tell us what the cult was about, or what their morals are, or anything. All we were told was to follow them. They were also taking the rail cart system, so we decided to follow them there. They had better armor than us, which made it a lot easier for them to navigate throughout the place without actually dying, because protection actually helps you out with the effects that you get on your health and your organs and stuff when moving around. My armor was actually better than Bite's armor, so I had a little bit of an easier time, but Bite had it the worst. Like, every single time he'd get that effect, he'd have to stop and place down a bed. It was ridiculous. It seemed very weird because the further and further we followed them, the more and more it felt kind of like a ritual of some sort. They were showing us all of these statues, all these really cool places where very important things seemed to happen. Everything was in the past, nothing was current. We didn't know what was going on and honestly, all these places seemed very surreal to us. We passed by amazing cities and they also helped us navigate throughout the sea of corpses. They also showed us that there were plenty of people living here as well. To think that people are actually stuck here. We were honestly in the same situation, but our goal was to go even further than that. We were headed to the sixth section. Not many have went there and nobody has come out of there. Once you're down there, 
You're stuck down there. Well, at least that's what the stories told us. To make it even worse is that they brought us to this... Was this huge, gigantic statue. It was holding a lantern and it had red eyes. It was a little demonic looking, but apparently it was something to behold. I didn't know how to feel about it. This was also another red flag. Just everything that they made us do just seemed like it was wrong. Something was wrong with it. You'd think that I'd enjoy sightseeing a little bit better, but this was honestly one of the strangest experiences we've dealt with so far. And we've dealt with some weird ones, believe me. We decided to look around further and eventually found ourselves a ginormous map of the area. The area looked so strange. It almost looked nothing like the upper layers. This place was a whole different dimension practically. We walked around a whole bunch and looked building to building. Little did we know that there was actually nobody on this specific area for some strange reason. Something about the area just didn't seem right. There was a whole functional city or town with a bunch of lights with a lot of the places making it seem like it was touched pretty recently. Just ended up being an untapped area with no humans in sight whatsoever. Only us four. They told us that our destination was hella close we were basically there and so they decided to take off in the waters which was kind of strange to me I personally thought in the beginning that it was a bit of a shortcut oh was I wrong A strider. Yup, me and my friends joined a multiplayer morph SMP. And this is how it went. The goal of this video is to raid the golden city, escape the nether banishment, and slay the ender dragon. Will we survive till the end? Watch till the end of the video to find day one. Instead of spawning in the normal Minecraft world, we ended up in the nether. And that's because we're surviving this as a strider. Look at them legs go. The upside of being a strider is the fact that we can actually walk over the lava. Lava does not affect us and we can also not burn. We were in our element, but the one thing that was a problem was wood. We needed to get ourselves some resources and tools to even start off with. But in the meantime, check out these other striders that are just minding their own business. I ended up leaving the lava and exploring a little bit and I found myself in a soul sand valley. And right off of the bat, I started getting attacked by a skeleton. We I literally just started this, but behind it was a chest and I needed to get to that chest. But you know me, I'm dodging and weaving these arrows. I opened that chest and found some obsidian. I also found a bone in there. It was a bit of a strange chest, but four obsidian was actually really good because I did in fact need to go back to the overworld to even get to the ender dragon. So this actually helped us out a bunch. I decided to continue my adventure and actually leave that biome. Days four to five. And to my surprise, we actually ended up at a pretty interesting structure. We ended up at a bastion remnant. These things not only have a bunch of loot inside of them, but they also have gold, which could definitely get us a huge head start but normally when you'd enter one of these you'd probably go through land but instead we decided to go through the lava because we were a strider this lava ain't got nothing on me i looked into one of the chests and there was a bunch of stuff inside but no obsidian sadly there was a bit of gold and a crossbow not to mention a golden block the second one on the other hand actually gave us some food and a golden apple so honestly big w it also seemed that some of the mobs were kind of being a little passive aggressive with me and that's probably because i'm a strider you know i kind of belong there so a lot of the mobs didn't even interact with me that much or so I thought. And the third chest that I found, I actually got myself a diamond shovel. The durability wasn't looking too good, but hey, finally we got ourselves a melee weapon. We eventually also got ourselves up to the second portion of the bastion. If you guys didn't know, bastions are split into two portions. And this was the second one. This is where all of the goodies were supposed to be. And check this out. We got so much stuff from here, especially all of the obsidian that we got, because now we can practically get back into the overworlds. But at that moment, I also got a little bit of an idea, because not only were we in the nether, we were in a modded nether. So there were different things within here but then the server crashed and all of the files got corrupted so we had to create a new world this is the actual days one to ten now if you guys are wondering why i actually lost a bit of hunger and some of my health i was fighting a ghast and i didn't really record that bit but it's fine we basically just spawned in luckily this was no normal nether the modded nether really did help out a bunch because there was a bunch of wood and custom everything there like these crazy looking purple trees like what are these even supposed to be so i didn't hesitate to make myself an axe real quick and start chopping down this tree one of the bigger problems was how was i gonna get food food was a very crucial thing and I definitely needed it especially in the nether while exploring this interesting biome I also found myself in this thing which I thought was a gold totem I'm not sure why I just you know I had the feeling it was a gold totem uh lo and behold it wasn't gold I don't actually know what it is but it looked cool so I decided to mine a bit of it but in all honesty let's just pray we didn't anger any civilizations around here now check this thing out this was like some random structure that I found in the middle of the lava ocean I've never seen it before but you know your boy had to check it out the only issue is if we jumped off of the ledge there we probably would have taken fall 
fall damage and ended up dying. So I had to find another way around it. There were these root looking things that were hanging from one side of the nether to the other. And I decided to utilize that to my advantage. But obviously that alone wouldn't help us out. So I had to bridge over the lava. But that's when another brilliant plan hit my mind. We are literally immune to lava. So if I could get myself on lava level, I can just walk right in there, take anything that I want from there and dip. And that's exactly what I did. Operation, take whatever's in there and just completely dip. I found some of my other strider brethren and I had to act normal. I had to act like I belonged there. And that's just in case a lava shark was nearby. I did not want to be attacked by a lava shark. I can tell you that much. As I casually strolled to the structure, I noticed that there was a chest right in the middle. Upon opening it, I found a bunch of food inside, which is really good because not only did I need to regenerate health, I just needed a food source in general. Although we can't really replicate the food that we got, there's definitely more of these out there and I just had to find them. And there we were back on the vines because I need to get past this and I didn't want to go through the side for some reason. So I decided to take the hard route. But hey, it looked cool, okay? That's my... Take it or leave it. Now, the next part was where things got a little bit weird. Now, you might be asking, what do you mean by weird? Well, weird as in there was a gravestone out in the middle of nowhere and fire surrounding it. This is definitely not some normal structure that some random structure generation mod actually put in here. It was definitely built by a player. But the biggest question was, what was actually inside of it? My expectations was probably a barrel or a chest with the belongings of someone that has passed away. So when I went to check on it, it ended up being a living and breathing dog some maniac that decided to come by here decided to bury their own dog what is wrong with them there is so much wrong with this but i decided to release it and luckily i had a bunch of bones that i picked up from earlier so we decided to take it as our own poor guy was just left here all alone but on the bright side now we have a companion for our trip i started bridging up because i once again needed to use one of these vines to get across the lava all right listen okay this time around i actually thought about walking through the lava but guess what the dog doesn't survive in lava okay so we have to take branches there was a little bit of a problem because once we finally got on top, we also ran into an enemy. And that enemy was a demon pig. Now, if you guys don't know what demon pigs are, they're the bane of my existence. Okay, screw these things. I honestly hope they fall over a ledge. All jokes aside, it was a problem. It probably would have killed me, to be honest. And the second issue was, if I do manage to hit it, my dog would go after it. And there is a chance that it might die in the process. So what I decided to do was I told the dog to sit while I take care of the issue. All right, it's time to get down to business. It was no match for me. All right, I was gonna five head the heck out of this demon pig. I've been training in seven years for this fight, you know? There was no way in chance I was gonna lose. This was Operation Finesse the Demon Pig. All right, step one, we bridged over to the nearest tree, all right? This is one of those crazy looking purple trees. This way we can avoid actually going on the branch itself. Step two, bridge over to the branch, the upper ledge. This way at all times, the Demon Pig is either far back there or right underneath me. And it'll give me enough time to block him within there. Luckily for us, this one wasn't actually that complicated. And that's simply due to the fact that the Demon Pig was distracted. Then I thought about it a little bit. Why would the Demon Pig be distracted. It's just me and my dog here. Uh oh. We have to hurry this up. Step three. Once we finally got over there, we were gonna take some of the black stone that I spotted earlier. This way we can make a bunch of stone tools and actually fend for ourselves. It's all part of this genius plan, of course. And so I crafted myself the stone tools that I actually needed. And it was a success. The operation went flawlessly. Days 11 to 20. Both me and my dog got away unscathed. Uh, let's name him Brian. Yeah, yeah, that's a good name. Me and Brian decided to just further into the nether and look for some more resources. I also found a little bit of gold, so I decided to start mining that. Yes, it wasn't gold. I don't know what it was. It looked like a honeycomb. But look at this place. Look at the place we found. This place was filled with a bunch of black stone. It's perfect. All of the stone tools that we'd ever need could potentially come from here. This is quite literally a gold mine. But with everything in this world comes with a consequence. This amazing gold mine came with a flaw. And that flaw being a wither skeleton on a wither horse. What the heck? I literally booked it for my life. It was definitely a trap. That thing was waiting for someone to come in thinking that they hit a gold mine just to get attacked and slain by it. I just kept on running. One biome after another. The thing was fast, but finally I managed to lose the wither skeleton on the wither horse. But there was something that didn't manage to come back with us. That, that thing was Brian. Brian did not manage to save the skeleton. We tried to save Brian. Brian was stuck underneath the ground and we tried saving him, but instead we just ended up bringing him. Doom. We kept our heads up though. We continued on on our journey because that's what Brian would have wanted for us. And that's exactly it. We continued our adventure searching for different things that we can find. There was this little bit of a shrine looking thing and within it there was this sack. Once again, I didn't know what it was for and in all honesty it could possibly be just to mark someone's territory which might mean we might be in a little bit of trouble but hey we're in the nether right when aren't we in trouble days 21 to 35 there was this crazy looking biome i don't know what it was made out of at first i thought it was quartz but upon further looking into it it kind of looked like a shard of some sort the place here was honestly beautiful i thought it would be the perfect place to put brian's grave down and that's what i did i also decided to make him a little sign so that if anybody came by they know exactly who it was well sort of they don't actually know him but you get the point but right when we were done with everything that we were working
working on, aka the grave. I ended up getting followed and chased down by another player on the server. Now, I didn't even know what these creatures or species were called. Just look at that thing. And you know damn well that I just decided to completely book it. I decided to start mining downwards so it wouldn't be able to find me. But lo and behold, it found me again. What I did have on my side was the fact that I was faster than it. So I just decided to straight up leave. As I still got out of the general area, it still decided to follow me all the way out here. It was a relentless player. In all honesty, it was probably out to kill me. It probably wanted my stuff and wanted me to get banned off of the server. But that wasn't gonna happen. I wasn't gonna let that happen. But my plan to get out was brilliant. There was this cliffside and I decided to turn the corner, do a quick block clutch and mine into the wall. And it went flawlessly. I was safe. There was no way it was gonna find me in this wall. I also started mining a little bit because I needed blocks. But lo and behold, someone started breaking blocks from the outside. I thought I was done for. It probably heard me mining within the wall. This was it. This was the end. There was nothing I could do about it. I'm in this small enclosed area. But to my surprise, it ended up being a strider. It was one of my kind. They saw me being chased by the thing from a distance. So once it finally left, it decided to approach me. We talked a little bit, but our goals were fairly similar. Not the end game goal, but we both wanted to leave the nether in one piece. And they offered to help me out a bit. They even gave me some food. He also told me to follow his lead. So that's exactly what I did. On our way to wherever he was going, we also got attacked by a piglin. So he had to kill them off. Let's just pray we don't get into a war with the piglins. He also decided to take it to the lava. This would be a much easier way for us to travel since it was, you know, kind of natural to us. But we did have to watch out for the lava sharks. We ended up at this crazy biome. It was the color of emerald green. These trees would go from the ground floor of the nether all the way up to the very tippy top of it. I didn't even know what to say. It was incredible. Now, I'm not sure why, but we decided to spend a good chunk of this trying to scale the thing. Again, I don't know why. Why, why do we do this? We thought this was a good idea. We also got attacked by a flying skull. This thing was crazy. Look at that thing. I mean, we killed it though. You know, your boys crack. I'm not letting no dumb skeleton head get the best of me. Days 36 to 45. You know the Strider friend that I had? Yeah, he led me to a nether castle. Now, I needed one of these things because blazes spawned there and I needed the blazes to get blaze rods, obviously, to make into Eye of Enders. What a goaded strider, honestly. Big ups to this guy. We didn't waste any time. We instantly started going upwards so we can reach the actual tunnels to explore in. While trying to go up, another molten skull decided to attack us and we completely mauled it. This was the first blaze spawner we found. And yeah, yeah, you, you're looking at that, right? There is no spawner in there. Some player came by and completely wrecked the place. But we were in luck, okay? That was not the only blaze spawner over there. I ended up using this one instead, and it was kind of merged with the emerald green biome that we were in earlier. The other strider decided to take their leave because he was still on a quest on getting to the overworld. He just wanted to help me out with my journey, which was really thoughtful. I continued exploring the nether castle until I finally found something that intrigued me. There was a mini wither skeleton just going on about its day in the middle of nowhere, and for some reason, a boss appeared over my head. I was confused. What was going on? I went a little closer to realized that a player was actually controlling the wither skeleton. I saw a glimpse of what it looked like and I wanted a closer look at it. This was the blackstone golem. This thing was no joke. It could literally break blocks. So no form of barricading could potentially stop it. And it wasn't my fight to deal with. So I was just kind of witnessing it all. For some reason, the aggro decided to hit on me and it started chasing after me. I quickly fled to safety as the mini wither skeleton started attacking it. The golem was almost dead. It managed to actually leave the nether castle. It was on the normal gravel at one point. It was so close to being dead. And right when we thought he was going to get the final hit, the blackstone golem decided to chuck a meteorite at me. What the heck's wrong with you? I ain't even in the fight. I was just watching. Why aren't you going after the wither skeleton? That's crazy to me. It literally could have just ended the series right there and then. I was so done with the place. Honestly, I got my blaze rods. Why am I even here still? The mini wither skeleton actually wanted me to follow him. So I decided to say, why not? You know, he was a lot more powerful than me. He clearly had better armor than me. So I gave him a shot. <coughs> Stranger danger. I started bridging in one direction because I wanted to see what that one thing was. It was kind of like a cocoon if you think about it. But then I got attacked by a freaking ghast. I don't know how, but I somehow managed to clutch that up. Days 46 to 55. This is when things got a little bit interesting because instead of finding a nether castle, which was a structure that you guys already well know of, we found ourselves a nether kingdom. Yeah, I bet you haven't seen this one before. As the strider I am, I decided to take the lava but there was a little bit of an issue because the wither skeleton i didn't know if he could swim in lava or not and he fell into the lava and died rest in peace the wither no i'm playing i'm playing i'm playing he he can definitely survive in the lava look that's him coming right back up unlike me though he can't walk on lava but instead he can swim in lava which is kind of a 
interesting thing to see. I ended up on one of the sides and decided to mine into it because that was the easiest way we were going to get in there without actually throwing into any problems. I was also given this nether ruby pick by the wither skeleton. What a legend. You know, damn well, I was going to keep this. I ain't giving this back. Get out of here. When we mined upwards, we actually mined into someone else's house. We didn't really want to leave the place because we knew that other people were going to be here. So we went ninja mode. I also found out that day that I couldn't fit through doors. I was... I was too big. Shut up, okay? Stop laughing at me. Goofy, you don't know what a strider goes through, all right? We have a heart in life. I was also given one of the Blackstone Golem's hearts by the Wither Skeleton. Not to mention, I somehow had a Wither Skeleton skull in my inventory. All right, let's just keep this between you and me, okay? We don't need to let the mini Wither Skeleton know that I have one of its brethren's heads. But right when we thought that we were actually alone in this house, a fox came out of nowhere and killed the Wither Skeleton. Honestly, that was so uncalled for. I was a little worried because I thought they were gonna attack me next, but it turns out they just had bad blood with each other. So for now, I was safe. I quickly also scurried in to get a bit of the stuff that they had because that ruby gear kind of looking nice i'm not gonna even cap to you i started talking to the fox a bit to basically get a grasp of what kind of person he was but i'm not gonna lie guys he seemed very shady i did not know if i should trust him or not he scurried off quickly after killing my friend literally the person that helped me kill that blackstone golem i just continued exploring the city if i see him again i'm gonna show him a piece of my mind i went to the second floor of one of these houses and i saw a gas in the distance i kind of wanted to ignore it to be honest because we were under a shelter the fox also showed me to an enchantment table i was definitely gonna take that for myself but when going back up to check on the fox i quickly realized that he was by a windowsill looking downwards i decided to knock him off it was a bit of a bold move on my end but listen okay he killed my friend all right so this is the least i can do to get revenge for him on my way out i grabbed the enchantment table and basically booked it i continued exploring the place but the gas just kept getting deadlier and deadlier i quickly hid in the building itself but right when i was in that building defending myself from gas i heard a strange noise coming from outside now i didn't actually go outside but i was peeking a little bit as to what that noise was and there it was it was this gigantic purple creature just emerging out of the lava going across the bridge as if nothing had happened. I was terrified. I didn't know what to do in this situation. I did not want to get into that thing's bad side, okay? Because if I got chased by that thing, that's nightmares right there, bro. I'm trying to sleep tonight. While I was leaving to the left, I decided to take a peek to see where it's going. Just so I can make sure it's clear and I could actually leave the building. Because this was no joke. That thing could probably step on me and I'm gone. I just booked it, bro. I just went to the nearest building and I was like, yo, I'm going to be staying here for the night. I don't care. I'm not going out there with that thing. Crazy. Days 56 to 65. After a while, I finally decided to explore a little bit more because I wanted to see what the world in the nether actually had to offer. I'm sure there's a bunch of cool structures and biomes that I've already missed. And I spoke too soon. I ended up going to the exact location that that purple thing was at. This was actually bad. It had spotted me and I just completely booked it. I didn't know where to go. My health was also running really low. I didn't know what to do. Just one foot after another, I just kept going. And finally, after I ran out of breath, I decided to just mine into the wall the same thing i decided to do the last time and it worked like a charm at least until i mined the blocks in front of me and realized that it's still roaming around looking for me that thing was out for blood no mercy no nothing i mean just look at it there was no way i was actually getting out of there without mining out of the place so that's exactly what i did i started mining once i was far away enough i mined out and i went back into the city actually i need to get some stuff from there i started breaking some of the bookshelves down hoping that the other people around me didn't actually spot me i think it was a success despite the fact that the entire bookshelf was gone but hey nobody spotted me so i'm good there's this really cool golden looking room that i decided to head into as well i wanted to just check the place out again i can't fit through doors so that was kind of annoying but what i did find there was to my surprise a bit of a red furnace it looked kind of sick so i decided to pick it up and there he was again the fox that i had thrown off of the side i wasn't sure if he actually recognized me as being the person that pushed him off he seemed kind of preoccupied honestly but hey if he doesn't have an issue with me i don't got an issue with him then out of nowhere, I was starting to get attacked by this wither thing. I didn't know what it was. It definitely wasn't a wither skeleton. It was one of those wither mages or whatever. Such an annoying creature, you know? I quickly ran away. I also found myself a chest and decided to loot it. Day 66 to 75. Throughout this bit, in all honesty, I didn't do anything too beneficial. The thing that I was primarily doing was going biome to biome, and if I ever stopped by a chest, I decided to loot it. There were a few biomes that I definitely wanted to check out, and I couldn't seem to find them anywhere. I also needed a place to settle, and I thought, what better place to settle at than the nether since it is my natural habitat so that's what we began 
I found this emerald green biome, we've already seen this once before, but I found this little tree trunk and I decided to renovate it. This is where my house was going to be, the strider was living in this crib. I also realized I didn't have enough for the materials that I actually needed so I went out exploring a little bit more and I finally found myself in one of the most creepiest biomes I've ever found in my life and I call it the eyeball biome. Why you might ask? Because of those things, look at them, the little eyeballs that connect to the top of the nether, disgusting. This definitely has to be a form of bioterrorism. What I basically did is I just kept moving forward. Eventually, I also found myself in this little molten looking area. I don't know. As if the entire biome wasn't already burning. We didn't find too much in this area, so it didn't take long before I realized that I found most of the biomes that I wanted to explore. I found this chest full of bread, and I also found myself a fox in the area. I'm guessing they were just adventuring off themselves, but I decided to follow them. We ended up finding another one of these golden cities. Now, I wasn't exactly sure what I was doing here, but honestly, I was just tagging along with the fox, and the fox didn't seem to mind. The only part that I was a little bit confused about was whether or not it was the same city that we were at prior. I also couldn't tell if this was the fox that we threw out of the window the time before it was, you know, I have no idea. In all honesty, I got the fox over there and I decided to head back because I still wanted to build my base. And this is kind of what it looked like in the very beginning. I did take a few props from the city, so I went back and forth a bit. But overall, it was looking pretty good. I also wanted a couple more rooms and a second floor to this place. After working on it for a bit, I also wanted to find myself a bastion because bastion loot crates or the chests that you can get from bastions, they're really good, and I wanted to get myself some. So me and the fox decided to go adventuring a little bit, and we found ourselves a bastion. The stuff in the bastion wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, but hey, it was working, okay? It was alright. I just don't think the piglins around me was very fond of me stealing their valuables. But hey, at least I was able to escape from there. After that adventure, we decided to go back to my house. And I did some renovations, and this is what it looks like. Now, I know that the general structure might just be three big rectangles, but listen, okay? I'm not that good of an architect, I, I do have to admit. But even so, I wanted some more decorations from the Golden City, because the Golden City had a lot of established items and a lot of furniture. So I wanted to take some from there. The fox, on the other hand, for some reason, didn't want to come with me. But that was one of the most biggest grave mistakes that I've ever got myself into. And that was just simply due to the fact that that very fox is the same fox that I threw out of the window. Day 76 to 85. The fox did not hesitate. Right when I left, it started getting to work. But what it was working on was a matter of question. I didn't know what it was taking from me. After the journey back, I decided to come back a little bit early because I wanted to check up on the fox. I also didn't give it any food. But obviously at that time, to my surprise, the fox was gone and I had no idea where it went. I looked at the back and I noticed that there was a nether portal behind my house. Well, that was a bit convenient. I don't even need to make my own portal anymore. Was what was going through my mind at that very time. But in reality, it was also the source to why everything went wrong. It was a grave mistake that I also decided not to take too much consideration into what was going on. I just wanted to use the nether portal to get out of here, but before I do that, I definitely wanted to establish my base and get some last minute resources before we leave. I went out to get some more wood because I wanted to make myself a third floor. Why do I want a third floor? Well, that's just simply because I wanted my chest room not to be in the main room. But that's when things got even worse. Not only did I leave the base unattended, the fox came back through the nether portal. Now you might be thinking, that's kind of a good thing. No, no it's not. Because while I was distracted getting all the materials that I needed to make my third floor, it started placing explosives all around my base. After hearing that huge explosion, I decided to come back. Ignore the wither hearts. But there lied the area that my base used to be in. Now it's just barren. There's nothing left. All I could see is a floating enchantment table. I was extremely confused at first because I didn't know who could have done this. It could have been anyone, one of the Blackstone Golem's minions, the piglins, the pigmen, any single creature could have been the culprit in this situation, but I didn't think twice about it. I decided to make my way over to the nether portal. No hesitation. At first, I was a little reluctant as to actually going into the nether portal. And that's just simply because most of the series was in the nether. And being a strider, water was one of my weaknesses. So the overworld was not a friendly place. I also decided to trap the portal a little bit. In case anyone was following me or the culprit was still back there. Upon coming up, I also decided to kill this enderman. I boated it. Enderman in a boat. The ender pro honestly wouldn't hurt. Not only this, but I also wanted a full set of iron armor, so I decided to go mining a little bit. But this time, instead of cave hopping, I found myself a mineshaft. We also found a few chests within this mineshaft that had a bit of diamonds, so that was pretty good. But check this out, an obsidian mineshaft. This thing's really weird to see. You don't see this one every day. And because of these diamonds that we found in the mineshaft, we decided to make a little bit of diamond armor. You know, we were treating ourselves. The thing was, was right underneath the nether portal, there was also this massive ravine that I wanted to explore, and that's where we were. But that's also where I caught an eye 
onto one of the foxes. Now here's the thing, I just had my base explode, and I had to come out of the nether because of it. And the first creature that I see that's playing on the server right now is a fox, okay? Firstly, I was jumping to conclusions, honestly, it was a normal fox, but the fact that they started booking it the instant they saw me was red flags. I chased them throughout the entire ravine. We even fell into a pit and it managed to escape me. I kept on looking and another mineshaft appeared, but I was also being attacked by mobs, which was a huge setback. Sadly, they managed to escape, but this wasn't the end. I was going to get my revenge. That fox has no idea what's coming to them. Days 86 to 95. In this duration of time, I also wanted to meet up with some of my friends. Alongside this, I also wanted to fight the ender dragon with them. This was the time. I decided to throw one of the pearls and followed in that direction. I found myself at this strange house structure and before long I find out that the fox was actually following me. Now this thing was really clever. It would mine into the dirt and wait for my footsteps to leave. But one of the things that I wanted to do was stockpile on some wood if we were killing the ender dragon. But then the fox came out of the ground and started booking it. But this time around they had nowhere to go. It was a beach and I was right on its tail. The only place it could have gone is the waters because again water hurts me as a strider. It genuinely damages me. I tried reaching for him but it was no use and the land was even more deadlier because of the mobs and I had to be pushed pushed away from the situation. But then something very strange happened. The fox started running towards me but without a weapon in its mouth. Instead it came to me with two diamonds. So this got me very confused as to who it exactly was. But for the time being there was nothing else that I can possibly lose. My base was gone, my resources are all gone, all I had was my inventory. So we decided to accept this truce for the greater good, alright? The dragon needs to be slain and at the rate that I was going at that wouldn't have happened if we didn't make this coalition. It didn't take very long to go into the next thing that we wanted to do. I wanted to find a village because I needed more food. I didn't have enough of it and so I found myself in Acacia village that was kind of nearby. It kind of took us a while to get there though but there was tons of hay bales here. This was also the go-to meeting spot for the other friend of mine. Funny enough they're actually a dolphin. They can't live outside of water and I'm out here as a strider where I can't live within the water. I can't even touch the water. It's kind of ironic if you think about it. And there they were. You know, it's honestly a really funny sight seeing a dolphin out all on land. But they did have a bucket with them, so they had a bit of a portable mobility type thing going on. Nah, like real talk though, it's kind of cool to see. It. Different species getting along with each other, that's the move. They also had a bunch of ender pearls that I was able to get from them. And I decided to merge the ender pearls and the eye of enders together. And with this teamwork, I threw another portal to then get the direction that we were heading in in the first place. And there it went. That was the direction that we needed to head on to. On the way in that direction, we actually found ourselves at a bit of a flying castle. Yeah, you heard me right. A flying castle castle now the only issue was this thing was over a body of water and i've said it plenty of times already but your boy's not immune to water bro this thing's deadly but we decided to bridge up while the other two swam up why can't i swim up this is unfair and i also didn't know if water actually gives me fall damage now this was one of the most riskiest things i did in the series i did not know it was a huge 50 50 but i leaped off of that castle and landed in the water remind me never to try that again especially as a creature that dies to water why did i try it i don't know i don't know either way the castle didn't really have anything that we needed it was more of a detour like the pit stops you take on long journeys and then we began the journey once again through the waters we took a boat this time around i'm just happy that i wasn't in the fox's position because the fox just couldn't ride in a boat it sucked but for me, on the other hand, I was completely fine. We had to go through a bamboo forest, which took us a little bit of time, but eventually we found ourselves at a dark oak forest. I could tell that we were getting closer to the end portal and to the ender dragon, but that was also short-lived. It also gave the fox enough time to actually catch back up to us. Honestly, this was a sight. All three of us, a strider, a fox, and a dolphin together, Going over to the end, we were messing around a little bit at this time, I'm not exactly sure why. Not to mention, every time that the dolphin places water to breathe, it kind of damages me, so I had to keep my distance. And there was a ruined portal on the way there as well. But that definitely wasn't the end, the body of water continued. We kept moving forward without any regrets, and we just kept our heads up. I threw another pearl once we finally hit land, because I wanted to know if we were going in the right way. And by pearl, I meant Eye of Ender. Unluckily for us, it was not only nighttime, but it was also a jungle biome that we were heading into, which meant there was a lot of creepers and mobs around, which kind of sucked, but eventually, we found out that the Eye of Ender went downwards, and we started digging down. Days 90 
96 to 100. We got into a little bit of a space issue because me and the fox decided to go on the same block for some reason, but we were finally in. We also got jumped by a couple mobs just by falling into the strongholds, but it didn't take very long before I concealed myself just so I can regenerate some of my hearts. We then began to search for the end portal. We weren't going to let this thing out of our sights. We've came this far and we were going to finish it off with the ender dragon fight. Whether the dragon liked it or not, we don't care. Our goal was set and that was to defeat the ender dragon and we were going to do that before the 100 day hit. After a bunch of searching around, we finally found ourselves the end portal room. Now, I did not hesitate, but I left a couple of the slots still open for the rest of them to come by. But then I realized I was actually one short. We were missing an eye of ender. Luckily for us, the dolphin still had some eye of enders remaining and they decided to use that on the portal, which means if I went there by myself, I probably wouldn't have everything that I needed to actually attend the fight. And so we went into the end and decided to start the fight. The end was looking a little different, but that's probably one of the mods. We weren't going to let this new version of the end stop us with anything. I had the beds prepared and I had everything prepared for this final fight. Two of them also stacked up on a bunch of arrows, so we were able to take out the towers that way. I bridged over to the main island, because obviously that's what you're supposed to do, right? And this is the method that I actually used to get the ender crystals. At least the ones that were a little bit more difficult to shoot down from the floor. While I was up there, it was no easy task. The dragon just kept on spitting out its dragon breath. I had to waste so many hay bale blocks. I know damn well that I was going to need that later on. So I decided to collect it all over again. I didn't want to risk anything, so I instantly jumped down because I saw that the dolphin placed down some water to breathe. But unluckily for me, they were picking it back up. I was so close to missing that water, but eventually we managed to hit the water, but also took a lot of damage because I get hurt in water. But I didn't die. That's pretty much the important part. What we also didn't take into consideration is the fact that the middle of the end is a little different than before. We didn't actually know if the bed system even worked on this orientation. So we decided to scrap the method of beds and took more of a hands-on approach. But either way, I still decided to use one of the beds because I wanted to see if it would really work or not. And as you can see, the dragon kind of broke in and flung me into the air. But of course, your boys kind of cracked, so, you know, obviously we landed that with the hay bale. That's what I'm talking about. Some of the local endermans were also mad at me, but luckily I had myself a boat and I got them trapped in the boat. But then the under dragon finally came back down after we took out so much of its health. And the dragon was destroyed. All the EXP started falling from the sky and we were all celebrating. We finally managed to kill the ender dragon with no beds. This thing took ages. But at last, we finally managed to kill the dragon and go over to the new end that we had. And check this place out. This place is insane. But right off of the bat, there was an end city right next to us. And that was really fortunate. I wanted to be one of the first of us that would actually get our hands on an elytra. And that's exactly what I did. By the way, if you guys want to see any sneak peeks of my 100 day videos or any products that I'm working on, my Twitter's down below. Peace. We're an axolotl. Yup, me and my friends joined a multiplayer morph SMP. And this is how it went. The goal of this video is to join a powerful nation for world domination, survive through the nether banishment, and defeat the dragon. Will we survive till the end? Day one. So we start this all off in a bit of a different place. We're not actually above the world. We're underground. Now there's a reason for this. Instead of spawning up there like a normal player would, we're not exactly a normal player. No, 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 no. We're an axolotl. Now, if you guys didn't know, axolotls actually spawn in lush caves. So that's exactly where we're beginning. I also decided to test if I had the ability to breathe underwater. Now I still got the bubbles for some reason, but they never went down. So I was able to survive in the water. The issue with axolotls is that they die in the air after five minutes. I think you guys can guess why that's a problem, but if you can't, let's just say the nether isn't looking too good for a water-based creature. But that's the challenge for future me, not me right now. My main goal was to get out of this cave. Luckily, there was a little bit of a water chute, so we climbed up it. What I also noticed was that there was a bit of iron in the lush cave, so you know damn well your boy was gonna go back and mine it. But for the meantime, we need to get some wood within the five minutes that we had of being above air before we start suffocating. Another problem that you guys might have missed is the fact that we have less than average health and that's true axolotls don't have that much health compared to a normal human player this just made things all the more difficult i also noticed that there was this huge castle right next to us we were definitely gonna explore that but we were not ready for that yet on my search for wood i also noticed that we were next to a village i quickly scurried over there and took some of the hay bales got some wood and got a bunch of cobble stone age i also found a chest in the village and within it it had a leather chest plate i mean it's a start it's not iron armor or anything but i'll take it anything that can slow down my damage process because I don't have that many hearts. Another issue that I ran into was some of the villagers just didn't want to trade with me. I guess it's because I'm an axolotl. Bro, what is this slander? I don't deserve this. <laughs> 
They so mean to me. Oh, and I also took their beds. But that wasn't all. I also took their animals during the night. I know, I'm sneaky. You know, this might explain why they hate me. My goal was to bring these two animals back to my base so I can put them somewhere for safekeeping so that I can make a farm later on. But lo and behold, we got jumped by some zombies. They did enormous amounts of damage and I even had to build up just so I could be protected from them. You know, I thought the zombies were bad, but wait till you see the skeletons. I swear the skeletons on this version of Minecraft was relentless. So your boy ditched the animals. I went back home. Day is two to five. I woke up to the sounds of zombies above me. Now I didn't know exactly whether or not there was a cave above me besides the one I came in from. And I was a little concerned. We mined some of the iron that was down there as well so I can make myself a bucket. That way I'll be more portable. This actually plays a crucial part in surviving the nether. I also decide to reap the resources that are here such as coal and the other ores that I can find. And let's just go ahead and smelt those up. Oh and also I kind of stole a lectern from them. Don't tell them okay? Ain't no snitches allowed. While this was all happening I also decided to break a bunch of wood just so I can get some resources to start building my base. I wasn't sure if I had enough, but I had quite a bit. I also need to make a new axe. And that's what we had so far. I know, I know, okay? It's not much, but I really wanted to think about this one. Because if any other player on the server were to find this, I want it looking kind of nice, you know? We also went out of our way to actually get two cows, so this time we can actually breed them. As you can see, I put them in a pit, and there's a reason for this. No, 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 there wasn't. I also decided to start attacking a bunch of fish. Now, you might be wondering, why are you going out of your way to attack some fish? You already have plenty of food. I don't know. I just wanted to keep the tradition going. With my other 100 day videos, I, I did the same thing. Now see, this is a situation where I thought I was full of myself. You know, I thought I was ready, prepared to attack the dungeon. No, not the dungeon, the castle. Just by going into the castle for like a mere couple seconds, I realized that there was a lot of danger there and a high density of mobs. The entire thing was filled with spawners. The only thing I wondered was what the loot was like in there. It's probably a lot. I also wanted to see if there was any other easier dungeons or structures that I can bump into, but I had no luck with that. Day six to 10. I spent a lot of this time trialing and erroring with a bunch of the builds that I wanted to do, but primarily the house. I didn't really know what kind of shape it should look like, but this is what I came out with. Not too shabby. Somewhere along the lines, I also wanted to explore a bit of the jungle that was nearby. It's actually right behind us, and I wanted to check out what was in there. I don't know why, but I was really hoping to see like a panda or a panda's base. Instead, I encountered a fox, which wasn't that bad. They seemed to have a home, and two of them were just lying in front of it. I personally wanted to check it out, so that's what I did. I went inside, took some iron from one of the chests, and I just left before they realized that I took from them. And here's a clip of me struggling to actually get out through the vines, because I'm an axolotl. After I got back to my base, I also went on to make some fences. This is because I wanted to make a bit of an animal pen for the cows that I left underneath the ground. Uh oh. Do they have air in there? And that's what it looks like. Pretty simple, straightforward, nothing fancy. Right when I went there to see what my house looked like, there was something else there with it. It was one of the other 1.17 additions, the goat. This thing sprinted at my house. It was ridiculous and I was just keeping an eye on him. It broke open the gate that I just created for my cows and killed both of them. And then he just walked away as if he didn't know nobody. This was a situation that was so uncalled for. I don't even know why they did it. But there was one thing that was certain. I was definitely going to figure out what the heck was going on and get revenge on my dead cows. Days 11 to 20. Upon closer inspection, I also realized that the goat got in through the window. They just completely demolished one of the windows. I actually had to patch that up and alongside that, I also decided to make a different pen for different animals. I started bumping up the security. I also needed a shield. And then out of nowhere, I started getting attacked by a skeleton. Now this thing was mad. It would only take it around two to three hits to actually kill me off. So luckily I had a shield. And in remembrance to the cows that were lost during this event, I also decided to make two lovely graves. The one on the left will be called Zachary Mateus. And the second one will be called cow number two. It will forever remain in our memories. I'm happy this initial starting area is kind of like a bunker if everything goes wrong. But we out of everyone wasn't going to let that happen. I decided to continue my security measures. I also made it so there was quite literally no way to actually escape the gates. This way there's no getting in or out but I had a little bit of an idea on a way in and out that would only be specific to other axolotls, which by the way on this server aren't the dominant species, but despite that, I also decided to add a layering of another set of fences. I just had some extra and I didn't know what to do with them. And just in case any human actually came by, I also wanted to set a bit of a flooring because if you didn't know, axolotls can fit on half slab areas. So that's exactly what I did. I created my half slab interior and this is what it looks like. And as an even added security measure, I decided to add a sign that says gone fishing. So ain't nobody coming here, bro. Ain't nobody coming to this house. I felt safe. I really did. After I practically have the base set up, I decided to go exploring again. I wanted to find any more cool structures and get some wood along the way because, you know, I wanted to build a basement and maybe an attic as well. Also decided to go mining. I wanted to see if I can get full iron. Alongside that, maybe just a diamond 
or two? Come on, game. Just be lucky. To my surprise, I probably got something just as equally as cool as diamonds. I found an amethyst geode. Now, these things are also part of 1.17. I decided to drop down and... Hey, Bill Clutch. First try, let's go. Yeah, no, this thing was cool, but I didn't really need any of the stuff inside, but it is quite the sight. Shortly afterwards, I also found one of the custom biomes that we also have within the caves, which was the mushroom cave. Alongside that, there was a spawner next to it. Spooky, right? But also valuable items, and that's what I was here for. Nope, not according to the baby zombie that almost completely decimated my existence on the server. Because if you die on this server, you're, you just get banned. It's it's out of my control. Now, getting to the chest that was in the back of the room was a little bit difficult, but I realized I could just mine around it and figure out a way to access the chest really quickly and bounce. And that's what I did. But listen, okay, if you thought that was cool, just take a look at this. This is also another one of the custom biomes. There's crazy amounts of emeralds, crazy amounts of lapis. I was hoping diamonds, but we didn't really get any, unfortunately. But yo, I'm not complaining. I kept going further down and eventually I hit a point where I tapped into a lava pool. Now this thing looked sick. Just take a look at this. Look at the amount of obsidian all over the place. And this huge gigantic lava pool in the middle. It was definitely a sight. But another cool thing is that I noticed that there were actually chests that randomly spawn in these caves. So not only can you go normally mining, you can also just find a bunch of crazy stuff down here through the chests alone. Now that, that's revolutionary. And look, it gets even better. Take a look at this lush cave that somehow merged within this ravine. <gasps> These cave biomes are too much. Lush cave and a lava pool in the same place. Bam, there you go. Obviously, I'm not gonna keep every single thing I find here, but there was a lot of other cool things that I just had to skim over. Days 21 to 33. I took this time to wrap up the little mining trip that I had. And when I say little, I mean a very extensive mining trip where I just went biome to biome because I thought they were cool. Yeah, that sounds like something I'd do. On my way back, I was actually heading to the coordinates of my base and suddenly I encountered a house. Not just any house. It's definitely not my house, but it was the goat's house. The goat that vandalized my property. Let me tell you, this goat had it coming for them, okay? I was gonna mess some stuff up. It was a good thing I knew where it was, but then I went into the mountains trying to get some creepers because I wanted some gunpowder. That way I can blow his house to smithereens, but that didn't go as well because I don't have a lot of health. Bummer. Instead, I decided with plan B. Arson! We we're gonna blow it down. Burn it. I meant burn it, not blow it. It didn't take too long before we got the flint and steel, and we headed straight to his house. Hopefully, he wasn't actually there. That way, he'd be surprised and come back to a pile of ashes with his base just completely burnt down. Out here, it's kill or be killed, all right? And I was not gonna let that goat slide. Ain't no way. I snuck in through the back. I broke a little bit of a hole, enough of one so that I can fit through and the goat can't, just in case he did catch me, which he wasn't going to, because, you know, I'm sneaky with it. But to my surprise, he actually was at his base. I thought he would have been mining or like cutting down trees or something. Maybe I should have got the flint and steel a little bit faster, but it's fine, you know? He wasn't really paid attention to who made that noise when I broke the fence. Instead, he was more paid attention to crafting something, I think? I don't know. I'll let you guys judge what he was doing. And there it was. We were burning down the house one piece at a time. It didn't take too long before it started burning down a bunch of stuff. They soon realized that someone had to right click their house with flint and steel for it to burn down like that. And they quickly scurried outside in search for the person, or creature in this case, that burnt their house down. And I just quickly got out of there as soon as possible, but close enough so I could still keep watch of it. Nothing was safe. Not even their fences. Everything was burning down and it was all coming down into action. And that's when I knew that my job was done. I have gotten revenge. I went back to my base. This is also a clip of me smacking the all notifications button down below. You don't want to miss an upload, trust me. I was trying to work a little bit more on the interior design of the place. That way I'd look like a sophisticated axolotl than just some caveman axolotl. All right, don't judge me. Reputation is important. But as soon as I began these new reconstruction ideas and plans that I had, I came out of my base and noticed that what I had done to the goat had been done to me. My entire base around me was burning down. It was all made out of wood. The only thing that I had left that wasn't wood was the glass. All of that work was just burning down before my eyes and now I got the taste of my own medicine. I think I went a little too far. There was nothing I could do besides watch it all burn down. Even the animals were dead. I was the only one that remained. No trace of the culprit whatsoever but I can kind of assume that it was probably the goat that did this. I grabbed everything valuable that I had and decided to move my my base location because this place this place was not safe i don't know what i was thinking making a base nearby a structure that massive days 34 to 40 i decided to go on a bit of a voyage i wanted to find a nice place to live all right at first i kind of wanted to be a nice green environment with a bunch of trees and a bunch of nice things but instead i decided to opt out of that when i finally got myself around a huge batch of water but here's why because i am an axolotl i need water to survive so why not make an underwater house 
slash aquarium because i think that'd be kind of cool also the rest of the axolotl team was living here as well so your boy was with his people or axolotls in this case now i know i've already made this mistake once which was living near a gigantic structure and as you can see right here we were also near another one of these gigantic castles but listen okay listen this time around my house won't be able to be burnt down or blown up and that's just simply due to the fact that it's underwater all right it's going to be surrounded interior wise and exterior wise with water how is it how is it going to burn down tell me it's also going to be practically made out of glass so i should be fine and we got straight to work i decided to pick a spot this seemed pretty decent it wasn't too bumpy around this area and it was pretty nice i decided to place a crafting table and my trusty barrel while i was thinking of what kind of shape that the dome that i was going to make aka the aquarium was going to look like i got approached by a fellow axolotl now this axolotl was a little bit weird i would go around labeling them but there were way too many to label so we'll just call him axolotl prime he took me down to the main place that a lot of the axolotls were just kind of vibing at it was actually really cool it was kind of like a huge secluded area where they're safe from any predators it was actually kind of sick i also decided to make a little bit of a safe haven for them because obviously once they leave that cave that's it like they're just in the ocean so my dome since it was going to be filled with water was going to be the little transitional phase i also decided to put four markers down just so i know kind of like the space that i want to work with for this dome i set out to get some materials as well because i definitely needed some more and that's including the amount of sand that i needed i needed a lot like when i say a lot i mean a lot this stuff was dusty yo once i got back i kind of created a little bit of a smeltery and started smelting a bunch of the glass that way i'd have enough to actually finish the dome once again i was in the need of a mining trip but this time around i needed lapis and i needed diamonds those were the two materials that i was primarily aiming for this time around because one just diamonds so i can upgrade my gear and two to enchant what else once i got back up i also put a bunch of the coal that i needed to actually smelt the glass in the first place turns out i didn't even have that much so that's also another reason i went on the mining trip but i did get nine diamonds so that's a dub i continued to work on the infrastructure of the dome it was kind of looking nice days 41 to 50 and i was finally done with the dome it was all good to go also here's some dolphins kissing i i, I don't know hey yo that kind of sus bro but you know while they were here i let them in the dome because i wanted to keep them as pets and hey it worked out not complaining this is when we ran into a bit of a problem i was really not expecting this and i'm not even sure to this day if it was the same goat that we found initially but some goat decided to drop by the base and just check it out for a bit it was very strange but i need one thing for sure that goats from my experience have not been the nicest of people so what i was gonna do was i was gonna enchant my stuff so i'd be ready for anything this time when something happens i was ready to straight up just jump in and start slicing some stuff up no regrets i started utilizing the diamonds that i had for an axe and a pickaxe now i wasn't sure what to do but i definitely needed a lot more diamonds so that meant a second mining trip when i went to go mining i eventually found myself in a cave with a bunch of stuff but i also started getting attacked by so many skeletons i was so close to dying in so many of these occasions thank god i had a bunch of food and a shield because if i didn't the series would have just ended there i would have got banned off the server and that's it i ain't gonna let that happen okay luckily for us in this cave we also found a bunch of the diamonds that we needed days 50 to 60 after this mining trip of ours we also decided to head back up luckily a lot of the ores also gave us a bunch of exp to work with now not a crazy amount of exp but enough for us to genuinely enchant a decent amount of our armor and this is me going on an animal killing spree as if i didn't already have enough food i keep forgetting that i have a bunch of food i just keep doing this oh but the killing of cows was actually a bit strategic because we needed some leather i also needed some paper so i went up to get a couple of the sugarcane created a farm so we can get more sugarcane and made a little bit of a hut for myself and i waited there for a bit so the sugarcane can grow once the sugarcane was fully grown i decided to take a bunch of it i left the bottom layer so that it could regrow again whenever i needed it so i basically made a bunch of books that way i can make some bookshelves to get better enchants i noticed that something was a little weird some of the axolotls have actually escaped from the area and just started vibing around the place like as normal axolotls do they were hunting for fish but they weren't alone they were not the only hunters out right now a pretty big predator of the axolotl is also a fox and that's exactly who was hunting down some of the people that live there. I tried saving one of the axolotls by attacking the fox head on, but unluckily it did a lot of damage to me. I couldn't stay there for any longer, I had to book it. This was no laughing matter, a bunch of our members were dying to this one fox. It was ridiculous and I couldn't do much about it. But from what I soon realized, it wasn't just the fox that I had to worry about. Cause not only was there a fox 
going around killing some of the axolotls. There was also a goat that was going around killing the axolotls. And who knows what else was there? While they were distracted and occupied, I decided that it was finally time. One of my team members in the axolotl team also decided to make a nether portal underneath. Just in case things went south. And that's exactly what I decided to use. I went down there straight away and went into the nether. Now you guys already know that I'm an axolotl. And to be an axolotl, you need a source of water to be in every single five minutes so i only had five minutes to actually be in there then i need to get out or so i thought i decided to stay there for around one to two minutes and before i knew it i was put into a bucket after talking to some of the admins on the server i realized that if you go into the nether as any water-based creature you kind of end up in a bucket if you're able to and that includes things like pufferfish but the problem is i'm unable to move without other people so i need other axolotls but then there's another problem because we'd both turn into water buckets so i got some of my friends on to help me out they were dealing with their own issues and problems on the server themselves with their species and so we all decided to coexist with one another within the nether to get through it and get all the stuff we needed to kill off the dragon it was all out war back there and we weren't really eager to get back anytime soon so it was a way game day 61 to 70 finally after all that time i finally got some allies that can help me out the first person that approached me was actually a fox now this fox was the one that was carrying me the entire trip within the nether for this portion i'm also going to be showing you some cinematics i got from replay mod because when in actuality when someone picks you up like that, the POV in the first person perspective is really weird and just glitchy. So we're gonna keep it like this, enjoy the replay mod angles. The fox was honestly just exploring the area, he wanted to see if there was anything nearby, and eventually, he saw a goat. But he kind of ignored it for the beginning because he thought that the goat was gonna attack him, so he waited for the goat to attack first just to make sure if he was friendly or aggressive. This was a smart move, especially when all the species out there are going through war right now. It is ridiculous out there and we don't need any more chaos than what's already here. It's a little ironic when you think about it. We left the old area where our house was so we can avoid violence just to end up being violent again. It was a bit of an endless loop, but we had hope. We wanted to create a bit of a peace journey. That way that all these species and the nations that are out there could come into a bit of a coalition. Because what if something external decides to attack all of us? We had to be prepared for the absolute worst. So we were looking into things that we can use as a bit of a signing treaty, but we didn't just want to use some normal paper because anyone can get that. We were aiming for the dragon egg. We wanted to place a dragon egg right into the center of it all to then rebrand, reform, and just revolutionize everything within this server. The fox traveled for ages but eventually found themselves at a bastion. But the issue was it was guarded by a bunch of piglins and they didn't have any gold. So what happened instead was that the fox was being attacked by the piglins. Then the goat decided to ram into one of them and save the fox. And boom, that's how the trust was created. They both decided that they wanted to loot the bastion equally so that both of them got a bunch of stuff. It seemed fair and all honesty, it was a pretty decent idea. It didn't take too long before they were approached by the guards over there and attacked the goat as well, but then the fox came in and saved the goat. What comes around goes around, I guess. Obviously, there was only two of them. Like, what more can they do? It was an entire heavily guarded area with a bunch of normal piglins inside and that was very deadly but what we decided to do was go into the center chest and loot it despite their efforts to swiftly grab the stuff and leave it wasn't that easy they decided to go into an all-out war it was that one goat and that one fox versus the entire bastion remnant it was honestly a gruesome fight that went on for quite some time they just kept coming and kept spawning so we decided to leave it wasn't easy but eventually we got on a bit of an outskirt and decided to leave through there but before we did we also realized that there were two more chests up there and why would we even miss out on that opportunity those were like the two best chests out of the entire bastion and there it was we also got ourselves a bunch of iron a bunch of gold from that and even pig step now this was also crucial because not only are we going to use the ender dragon egg we are also going to use pig step to create this alliance between all of the nations we take in all w's today baby then the second voyage of the nether began and that was to find the nether castle now this thing isn't the easiest thing to find and obviously with my luck you guys already know how long this thing takes to get and it's just annoying you guys are lucky this part is cut out but it's honestly just a lot of walking until we get lucky but boom 
Lo and behold, we got ourselves at the Nether Castle. This was so we can get some blaze rods because we need that for the Eye of Enders to get to the Ender Dragon. Y'all know the drill. I think one of the most dangerous things within this situation would probably be the Wither Skeletons. They're the most aggressive and most dangerous thing here. Then second to that would probably be the blaze and the third, the ghast. It was ridiculous. To my surprise, the fox also got themselves a Wither Skeleton skull. What are the chances of that? I'm telling y'all, I swear down... The things that we don't need, like this Wither Skeleton Skull, are the things that we end up getting. Like, why? What for? But enough talk about my bad luck. And so the camping began. We started camping the Blaze Spawner, you know, as you'd normally do, especially in speedruns, for those lovely Blaze Rods. We needed a bunch of them, so we were there for a bit. Then began the third voyage, which was to find one of those red biomes, because we needed that to get ourselves a bunch of Enderman eyes. Luckily, we also remembered to get a bunch of gold from the Bastion, and you know what that means. It's trading time. We only really had one piglin in the beginning, so it was super slow, but eventually we got a couple more as you can see right here. There was a lot of random loot that we didn't really need, but got anyways because the piglins were being dumb. But at the end of it, we did get a bunch of ender pearls, and that's what really matters. During all of this, the two was also attacked by other piglins, and you know, obviously they had to just put them into the hole, but we were also jumped by demon pigs. Now these demon pigs are ferocious, okay? I know the pain. Although I was in a bucket in the pocket of a fox, I knew the pain that they were going through. Also, the goat fell into the hole with all the piglins, and that was very dangerous because if they ran out of gold to trade with, the goat would have been the victim. As interesting as that sounds, that didn't happen. I was gonna say unfortunately, but I stopped myself. Instead, all three of us got out of there unscathed. Day 70 to 90. They weren't actually able to get all the pearls we needed. We needed a few more, so we just went to one of the blue biomes and started killing some endermen. After we got all the goodies that we needed, we decided to dip. It was pretty straightforward, so the portal was a little bit far away. But eventually, we got back and went through the portal. Once we were finally back to the overworld, I was able to finally get my body back. Man, did it feel good to actually use the arrow keys again? It was nice, trust me. Especially from that long nether trip. Unlike me, I'm able to breathe underwater, but the fox isn't able to breathe underwater. So it quickly went up to my enchantment room that I cleared out because I couldn't really properly enchant with water in it. You guys get the point. We decided to reassemble at the very top, where I initially started growing my sugarcane crops. This is where we decided to start devising a bit of a plan, because we needed a plan of action, right? We all had lowered amounts of health, so how are we going to do this in the first place? But obviously, we needed a bunch of beds to straight up kill the dragon, a bunch of food, and we need to actually get there. So we decided to throw the first pearl and head in that direction. It took a while because we were really far from the stronghold, and for some reason, the eye vendors kept going in weird directions. It's as if something was getting in the way of it. It was probably someone else's base with a modded item called the EEA, and it's a really annoying device by the way, but it's meant to throw players off. Eventually we reached a point where it was only going in one direction, and that was really good for us. We knew that we were nearby one of them, we just didn't know how far of a distance it was. Luckily for me, water was my element, not to mention I was able to ride a boat, so once we reached the water portion, we were able to move through that pretty swiftly, and so did the goat. The one problem was, when the fox got into the boat, it kinda started suffocating, so they had to normally swim. FYI, it kinda took him ages to actually catch up with this because he was super slow. But once he finally did, he finally threw the last pearl that we needed that told us that the stronghold was right underneath our very feet. Unluckily, it was underwater, but I was able to mine underwater, so we were straight chilling. I mined straight into the stronghold, and our main goal was obviously to find the portal so we can get to the end and kill off the ender dragon, bringing back the lovely egg. But the issue was, was that this stronghold was like any other stronghold and we had to spend some time finding it. On our journey trying to find it, we also encountered this little bit of an open area, which had a custom cave in it, and it was attached to a library. It looked pretty sick, but also kind of broken. But you know what? We appreciate it regardless. Now in this bit, I'm sure some of you guys have already noticed, but our hearts were kind of glitching at that time. Despite how much food and saturation I get, it never really goes beyond that, and that's kind of just how the mod works. It glitches sometimes for some reason. I don't really know how to fix that. But regardless, we kept moving forward, and I realized that those three hearts were kind of non-existent anyway, so I didn't consider them there. And at last, the goat has found the ender dragon portal. The issue was, we still needed some wolf, but despite that fact, we still started lighting up the portal with the eye of enders and this is what it looked like <laughs> you know a little bit off topic but the fox holding an eye of ender in its mouth looks hella goofy i don't know why it just looks really funny to me the goat was the first person to enter the end and when i started bringing up the fact that we didn't have wool 
for the beds that we kind of wanted to speed up the ender dragon fight it was basically just like the last person still in the overworld is the one that has to get it all and guess what your boy jumped you know i wasn't letting the fox get in before me it was fair play we were also gonna wait just in case we were near killing the dragon before you know the fox got there but it wouldn't be too difficult we were right on top of land anyways and there we were we were finally at the end this one was a little bit more difficult because i didn't have that many arrows but i did have a couple a lot of the places i actually had to build up to and it was really annoying when i angered enderman because i was literally like a one to two shot it was ridiculous in conclusion it was not a fun experience and we didn't have beds so it sucked it took a while but eventually the fox came back with the beds that we needed and you know basically distributed it amongst us and here's one of the clips of me actually placing a bed and blowing it up i was only able to blow up one i don't know the dragon died before i can place another but we killed it you know it was a collective effort but eventually we managed to kill off the ender dragon and there it was the ender dragon egg you think from here on out it was a bit of smooth sailing but again we're not the best team okay so there were there were a bit of issues such as the ender dragon egg not being able to be collected because we kept right clicking it it was like a game oh my god it felt like whack-a-mole okay days 90 to 100 after finally being able to collect the ender dragon egg we decided to hop back in through the portal this was kind of annoying because it actually brought us back to the initial place that we spawned at that's a bit mad but hey you know, now we can finally explore the castle that I mentioned in the beginning. It was very chaotic. Despite us being fully stacked, fully enchanted, it was still a difficult place because of our low amounts of health. There's a lot of creepers, a lot of witches, skeletons, you name them. Everything was in there. Not to mention there was a batch of TNT in there that we also blew up. So the castle kind of blew up a little bit. Let's just hope the owner of the castle doesn't find out that we were the culprits. <laughs> it's for, for our sake. Eventually, once we were done looting the place, which we did get some pretty decent stuff, but it was stuff that we already had, mostly, we went on to go back to our bases and finally reunite the species. We gathered a bunch of the players and gathered them all in one place. And there it was. At the end of the day, what we decided to place down was a shulker box that was made out of the shulkers that the goat got from the castle, a dragon egg, the wither skeleton skull that we luckily got somehow, and the pigs that we got from the bastion remnant. We actually had two. Both me and the goat had one. But all in all, this was a really good day. We also decided to move out of the original place that we were in to a much more snowy place, and it looked great. And this is how we decided to end off day 100. We decided to go by a cliff and all just stare into the distance. This was great, you know, we did a lot today, but it was finally over. With all good things comes an end. There was nothing we had to worry about anymore. All of the dangers in the world were gone, and we were finally at perfect peace. Buildings over on. Listen, we need to get out of here, okay? We can't stay here any longer. What the heck are these things? There's a global pandemic going on. Sounds familiar, huh? Our goals for this video is to escape a city filled with the dead and bandits. Find a teammate I can fully trust and find the cure to the virus. Will we survive till the end? Watch till the end of the video to find out. Day one. It started off pretty simple. We started off in this abandoned train station with a couple of supplies, but no one to be seen. It was a weird situation because I didn't exactly know anything that happened prior to this. One thing that I did notice that was a little bit off was the fact that I had a broken leg. So I spent most of the time exploring and looking for some loot because i thought maybe just maybe there might be a pack of morphine around sadly i wasn't in luck there was no morphine in sight after a while i decided to actually leave the train station and explore some of the city that i was in this was all very unfamiliar land to me so i didn't know what anything was but upon coming out of the train station i saw this weird looking man he was just standing there i was aiming my gun at him but i don't think he was looking in my direction i didn't think much of it so i just decided to move on days two to ten it really didn't take that long before i found myself at a bit of a military settlement now, i didn't know exactly what this place was used for but it seemed very barricaded and there were some military supplies in there i was really hoping i'd get a heavier gun than the pistol that i carried but i had no luck with that it was also this ginormous ferris wheel that i saw in the distance i'm not sure why i wanted to add that but i decided to we kept going rummaging through the city i was trying to collect as many materials as i possibly could but my one big mistake was the fact that i was still on the main road i was basically a sore thumb sticking out out of the entire city and i got sniped i was knocked down to the floor and i went unconscious the first thing that 
I saw was the fact that I was at a bit of a safe zone when I awoke. There were a bunch of other people around me just discussing their plans and going about things. I also got all my stuff robbed from me, so I had nothing remaining. This wasn't too much of a good thing, and I honestly needed to get some stuff really quickly. So I decided to start conversing with some of the people there. Your boy's a bit of a negotiator, so, you know, we tried some things. One of the people in there was named Stony, and the other one was Sav... Yeah, they both seemed like pretty decent people, despite their appearances looking like something of ex-military of some sorts, but I didn't really let it get to me. They were discussing a really good place to get some more materials and some more guns and some ammo. And you know damn well that I was interested. I'm trying to get some of that loot too, so I decided to just kind of be there and be like, yo, you guys, you guys need someone to carry your stuff around? Like, if so, I'm kind of your guy, you know what I'm saying? They were talking for quite a while, because apparently the way there wasn't the safest way. But there were some intricate ways that they decided to go, and one of them happened to be through the Underground Railroad System. That had been abandoned for ages, and they have no idea how infested of zombies that place really was. And yes, there are zombies in the world. Apparently, there's a whole global pandemic going around, and it's infecting everybody. It's no bueno. So they were trying to think of the easiest and best way to go about it, because there were also some enemy factions that were in the way, not to mention the area in general is pretty wide known through the people around here. So there's probably tons of armed enemies at the place itself, so we had to be really careful and camouflage the best we could. We just needed the loot, not the attention. They didn't mind me tagging along for the adventure, and they saw that I was in dire need of some stuff, especially because my stuff got robbed. So they gave me an M16A1, whatever the heck that's supposed to mean. All I know about it is it looks like a pretty cool gun. They were letting the rest of the people within the facility know that they were about to head out into that dangerous place, and if they don't come back, to basically send us a rescue team. This was gonna be big. This was gonna be the way that I would get really overpowered, with a bunch of gear, a bunch of guns, and a solid team. This was looking pretty good for us, and honestly, this is probably one of the best outcomes, because even if I didn't get knocked down and robbed from, I probably wouldn't have met these people, or so that's what I thought. Days 11 to 20, and so we were ready to go. On our way there, we also found ourselves a helicopter. Unluckily, the helicopter was dysfunctional and crashed into one of the nearby buildings, which meant we can't really use it to escort us to the place we need to go. We had to go by foot, and also, a helicopter would bring us a lot of attention. That's not what we want. So we maneuvered around it. There were a couple traps as well for the walkers that came by, and luckily, luckily to our surprise, none of the walkers were around there, and it was a pretty safe exit. Now, these guys are super fast. It was super difficult to keep up with them. I don't know if they run track in high school or something, but oh my gosh, just keeping up with these guys was a troublesome feat in itself. But I tried my very best to keep up with them, especially because they seem to know where they're going. I don't even know what city we're in. We could be in New York, Seattle, Wyoming, anywhere. There were a couple loot crates on the way there, and that honestly helped a bunch as well, but I also needed some food, so I got myself some food, and we were all set to go. We found ourselves in this strange alleyway, and I was a little hesitant on going in there in the first place. There were a couple cars that crashed over there, and a bunch of bins. Also, barbed wire was kind of the demise of us, I guess you could say. This group, its biggest problem wasn't the bandits that were around. Weren't the people that were trying to kill us. Weren't even the walkers. It was the barbed wire that kept getting on our shoes. That stuff was annoying. The only problem that I had with the place that we were going was the fact that there was a huge open area, just like the same place that I started taking damage from that sniper and it got robbed. I tried convincing them, but they wouldn't listen to me, and obviously they knew the map better than I did, so I decided to just follow along with what they said. We found a little bit of this cargo bay and decided to loot a bunch of stuff from it. Apparently, it had a lot of goodies, but honestly, if you ask me, there was barely anything. They kind of took all of it. There was this wire that we walked on as well. Very risky stuff. I don't know why we couldn't just walk around it. Like, come on. It can't be that difficult, can it? We finally decided that it would be somewhat of a good idea to go inside the building and gather some resources in there, so they collected some stuff that they needed. I didn't really need much besides a little bit more food, but I wasn't having any luck with that. I know it's pain, but in all honesty, this was kind of like the little loot process that we did. We kind of made some distance, started looting some of the bases in the place, but I did get this really cool looking machete. The only downside is there's a bit of blood on it, and I don't know whose blood it is, and I don't intend to finding out. We found some more military vehicles, and I got a bunch of ammo that really isn't for any of the guns that I have, so it was a little bit useless, but hey, alright. The place we were going to, that was gonna treat us well. We also came by the city sewer line system. It was pretty interesting to look at. To my surprise, during this entire situation, we actually didn't bump into much of anyone. No getting robbed today, but I kind of spoke too soon. Technically speaking, it wasn't a player, but it was one of the undead, and I didn't really want to encounter one of these things. But the thing was ginormous. It was double the size of us. Luckily, we had the ammunition for it, and, you know, one of the homies got me. They shot him in the head, and that was it. Definitely didn't fire a very loud gun in the middle of a city filled with zombies. No. Why would we ever do something like that? That's just silly, isn't it? Right? Right, guys? While one of the teammates was actually shooting down the zombie, the other one shot down a player. His loot was honestly just splattered all over the place, and we decided to loot it. I also got myself a vest, and I was looking pretty stacked at that point. I had almost everything I could ask for, but 
obviously the more ammunition that we have the better and the more guns that we have the better and also a bit of preparation because that's also important after a really really long journey we finally reached the very place we were supposed to be at this place is known as the Colosseum. it's a very interesting place because apparently a lot of military personnel used to basically just take this place over as the safe haven of theirs and from the looks of things it seems to be taken down and by that i mean the military was killed or either rendezvous to a different point which meant a lot of their supplies was probably left here due to the walkers especially seeing as there's tanks in the front of the place so things were looking a little bright up until the first shot was fired and one of our teammates was down this was when things got a little bit difficult because not only was our friend down the other one was right next to him and that was a very big problem because if they came to loot the body they would see my other friend i didn't really want to be hit in the crossfire but i decided to go up to them i went around and tried getting myself closer to the situation so i could help out because i too had a gun that they armed me with i was hiding behind some cars just so i had a little bit of an advantage on them luckily for me i actually didn't have to do much of the work stony on the other hand this guy was a menace to society all right he shot both of the people that were attacking us down instantly we decided to loot the bodies because that's probably what would be the best of choices we didn't want to leave anything for the enemies days 21 to 30 this was a huge setback one of our teammates was down and we didn't know what to do about it we didn't have any sort of medic so they were just kind of lying there they couldn't do anything they were immobilized it made things even worse as we actually had to leave them behind we still kept going because the mission was very simple and it was right there we entered the stadium saw a bunch of helicopters and a huge array of just stuff but not only that but the stadium was not alone we also found ourselves at another person but we decided to ignore them because it seemed that the walkers had got to them before we did but a different question is who else was actually there are any of the enemies still remaining here because if so this is going to be a really big problem especially if the enemies come back and look at this guy this guy's name is adrian as well look at that how useful see adrian's such a good name it might not be spelled the same but hey but this guy almost had it all as long as you had money you could buy anything from this guy it was ridiculous but before we knew it the victory of ours was very short-lived because right afterwards we got shot down and there i was lying down on the floor Floor. I decided to book it and escape. Unluckily for me, one of the shots actually did hit my bag and I lost a lot of my materials. I helped Stony back up, but we were all missing the stuff that we needed. We ran away from the place just to go right back in there because we were not going to let this guy slide. All right, he took all of our stuff. This was definitely not the end. We found quite a few loot crates and also found ourselves another military settlement that seemed to get taken down. It kind of sucked being the fact that, you know, everything happened, but me and Stony, we decided to part ways. If Stony keeps leading me into dangerous situations like that, I don't want any part of it whatever they can have the one or two guns that i have i'm sure i can find a better one at least that's what i was telling myself in my head last i found myself at a hospital now the cool thing about a hospital is i'm sure there'd be things like morphine in here right so this is kind of the perfect place that i can settle down also not a lot of people would know i'm even up here so i was just praying that the place was empty in the first place i'm sure quite a lot of people have already looted the place but you know maybe the second third or maybe the higher floors could have some valuable materials in them it seemed like the people in this hospital were also trying to put up a fight but it didn't seem like it went very well seeing as the front door is kind of wide open and there's nobody in here i went room to room on the first floor and i was gonna do the same with the second third fourth and fifth all the way up to the i think 16 that's just a rough number days 31 to 40 you guys are so lucky you get to skip all this boring stuff of me just you know walking around looting stuff but after a while i got myself pretty established i had quite a bit of food a bit of water and i got myself a baseball bat look at this thing i could just whack someone out of existence and take a look at this this is my inventory i was dumb stacked not to mention my backpack had so much canned food in it that i couldn't even eat this thing myself one thing that i was lacking here was allies and i'm probably gonna need to make some but i didn't know how to go about it but that all changed when some random person decided to visit the hospital for materials themselves and this person was named will i was just in the cafeteria stocking up on some stuff and checking out some of the medical crates when i see him on the side just walking by exploring the place with a gun to my head i needed an ally there was no way i can survive in this world without some allies so i decided to drop my gun first and put all of my trust on this random stranger no tricks up my sleeve i decided to say screw it all if we're gonna team we're gonna team right here and right now if i get robbed so be it luckily for me will had good intent all he wanted to do was survive and he was looking for a teammate himself and so this is where me and will's alliance forged us together we were gonna make it out of this gigantic city escape into the countryside because the city is the worst place you can be in this situation the outbreak is basically viral here just like this video would be if you guys hit that like button after talking to will for a while we also noticed that our situations were very similar we both had these two groups that we were part of before and they both basically either got abandoned or shot down the ambitions that some people have in this world are crazy and i was not one of the people that were trying to get that extreme with things i just wanted it out this virus was deadly and i did not want to be infected by anything like that now i'm not alone 
exploring the upper floors where walkers could literally be infested in. So it was me and Will going floor to floor checking out the place, making sure there weren't any other people here because if there were, we'd get a bit of a conflict on whose base this actually is. And then this happened. We started seeing gunshots coming from the roof, or much rather a bit of a balcony of sorts, and we were really confused as to who it was. That meant that we weren't alone here. There were other people here. The building was not ours. There were other people here, but I did not want to lose this building. This building was one of the most crucial things we could have ever found. And in all honesty, we both had guns. Will started spilling a bunch of information that I really didn't understand about these organizations taking over places and calling it theirs. But I didn't care about any of that. This, this is our hospital. We needed this if we were gonna escape with our lives. Who knows what would happen? What if one of us breaks our legs? Or like, one of us gets shot and we don't have any bandages. It's over for us. But after talking to Will, he convinced me that we should leave. At least for the time being, because there seemed to be a little bit of a... A little bit of a war going on between two factions, so I decided to listen to him. Uh, we tried our very best trying to escape, but we ended up finding one of their squads. And they were put right in front of this building. We decided not to hold back. We shot them down. They were actually killed. And by our hands, we didn't even think twice about it. If we didn't kill them, they could have killed us. That's the world we're living in right now. Apparently, Will had this one location that one of his teammates gave to him right before their death. So we decided to go to those very specific coordinates. There was an intricate way that we actually got over there. There was this huge train line and we had to crawl through it just so the people outside couldn't see us. At that point, we finally reached a certain location. This was called the Central City Bank. This is where we were going to get some more supplies. And honestly, we were really hoping that one of Will's teammates escaped here, but there wasn't much luck. This was the direction that we needed to go in, but it was locked. The doors were freaking locked we were stuck on this side days 41 to 50 we found a couple monuments around and a little bit more of a military base so that was kind of interesting there was a zombie that got caught on the barbed wire and will started shooting at it but it also made a lot of noise which wasn't the best thing it started getting attacked by the thing the thing that i didn't anticipate was the fact that will broke his legs when the gigantic zombie slammed him onto the ground it was devastating and i had no morphine this was exactly why i wanted to stay in the hospital this is why i wanted the hospital to be the base of operations if we ever need supplies we can get it from there but i had no morphine and neither did will will couldn't feel his legs he also dropped me a weapon of his there's no saving me i'll just be dead weight are you sure about this man i'm 100 percent if I make it out, I'll meet up with you again. Trust me. Okay, the hospital, right? Head north. Yeah, the hospital. All right. Head north. He told me the direction that I had to go into, and I was just... I, I couldn't believe it, okay? We we were supposed to get out of this together, and now I'm just leaving him to die. But it's what he wished for, and I kept going in that direction looking for the nearest bridge. On my way there, I got attacked by some ferocious wolves. First of all, why are there wolves in the city? Like, that's just weird. But whatever, I started firing some shots and booked it. I also managed to get myself the scythe, and apparently it's one of the most powerful tools in the game. I don't even know where I picked this thing up from, but I ain't complaining. And I was safe. I was safe and sound. At least that's what I'd like to think I was. And right before my eyes, I got shot down again and robbed. A bit of time had passed and I got a little bit of stuff back. I also met up with one of my friends, Snake. We found this one random guy and it was a bit of a big shot around here. But we didn't care, we shot him down. He's pointing a gun at us. We were not taking any more chances. It's either kill or be killed and we were not gonna be the people getting killed because all it takes is a player to get down and then executed for us to die and lose this entire challenge. But we weren't gonna let that happen. That was not happening, okay? We kept moving forward. I decided to actually go back to the little cargo site that I got taken in the first place. It was overrun by a bunch of zombies, but me and Snake took it over pretty fast. This is where we stocked up on a bit of food, but sadly there weren't many crates there. We went back to the main city and decided to explore a little bit because I'm sure there's some hidden bases here and there. We found this massive gap in the floor that actually led us to this pool. For some reason, there was some sort of an underground lake. That's probably the better word for it. And in there was a helicopter as I leaped into there. I didn't know why, but it was definitely there. It was also a little bit difficult to actually get out of there, but eventually I made my way through. Then me and Snake rendezvoused to this place called the statue. And it's literally what it is. It's a gigantic statue. We were supposed to meet up with another person here, 
apparently over the radio. They gave us some weird mixed signals, but obviously we had our guns up, all right? We weren't gonna trust some random nobody. We also decided to go very high up, just so we had a view of everything, you know? We wanted to know where everything was, where everyone was, and we wanted to know the gist of the whole area. This is very crucial information. And finally, once the person that we were supposed to meet over here finally came to be, it ended up being Will. I don't even know how he made it out alive over the night with no possible way of getting morphine but he somehow managed and he was back ready for action we were once again reunited me and will and now we got a third member of the team snake nothing was gonna stop us in our way to victory and by that i mean getting out of this dumb city filled with a bunch of zombies days 51 to 60 i went on a little bit of a stroll and the reason i went on this stroll was simply to figure out what was going on you know i heard some gunshots in the distance so i went to go check it out but what i didn't realize what happened was when i came back both of my teammates were gone. Once again taken from me. I didn't know where they went, but I was sure as hell gonna find out. On my search there, I found this person named Mason. He seemed like a pretty decent person that I could trust. I wasn't too sure, but both me and Mason found this really large group of a bunch of people with armed weapons, and we didn't know what to do about all of that. Mason managed to convince them that we were nice people, and that we were willing to join their group as to whatever they were doing. I have no idea about Mason's intent, but my intent was to find out exactly who it was that took my friends, and they were the nearest group in the area, so I was gonna infiltrate them. I mentioned it to Mason, and Mason didn't seem to mind it that very much. He wasn't there for the long run, he was also there for the short run, and wanted just some materials and some help by them. If he got in trouble, he knew he could rely on these people. I don't know about me though. If I was them and two random people decided to join my group one day, I definitely wouldn't help them out or even put anything related to my life on the line for these people. And with that mentality, I thought that's exactly what they were thinking as well. And right before we knew it, some special ops came from the roof and started attacking all of us. A lot of us fought back and shot back at them. And their leader, this guy right here, he was just standing there as if nothing had happened to the whole situation, to his whole team. He didn't care. This man was a cold killer, and we were not gonna let him get away with this. Q was shooting him down, by the way, in the corner of the office or whatever, and they all looted his corpse. Everything was ours. I also decided to do it. I found this really cool gun that I wanted, and I'm just like, you know what? It would be pretty nice if this gun was in my inventory rather than his. But sadly, I don't think he had any affiliation with either Will or Snake, so I remained in their group. We started walking around a bit. We wanted to explore the area and loot as much as we possibly could. We found this very strange vault in the middle of the place, and we decided to try getting into it, but we had no luck. We started exploring a little bit more of it, but then soon realized that we were being picked off one after another after another. And before I knew it, all of my teammates were down. I was left there speechless. What I decided to do was probably one of the best things I could have done in that entire situation. That was to stand very still, take off anything that would cause me any noise, which is basically my inventory, and I slowly booked it out of there. Luckily for me, I wasn't the only survivor, from at least what I can see. Mason also survived, and we decided to go into this random building. Building. The reason as to why it's random, I'm not sure, but it looked like some sort of a base, so we decided to go in and take the elevator up. We also started looting a bunch of the stuff there because we needed more stuff now. Day 61 to 70. We honestly got everything we needed from them. There wasn't anything else they can offer us, and one last time, I went back to the cargo bay just to see if there was any leftover food remaining for me and Mason, which there wasn't much of. Me and Mason had different goals. I wanted to escape the city, and he, on the other hand, for some reason, wanted to stay in the city. I wasn't gonna stop him. It was his choice after all, so I decided to go off on my own. I also left him with a bunch of my supplies because I felt like he needed it more than me. I saw a couple people here and there on my way around the city looking for the nearest bridge. There was also some people that I had to sneak past and luckily I was actually able to. I didn't have much ammunition because I gave a bunch of it to Mason and same with my food and drinks for some reason. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm a little too nice to these random people. I went by the pier because I wanted to see if there was any boats. That was also a pretty reasonable way to escape the city. I also did find a bridge, but these two people were kind of walking by there on patrol, and I wanted to see if I could kind of aim my gun at it, but it wasn't worth it. The bullets that I could have saved was basically the bullets I wanted to keep, so instead I decided to try to get myself away from them. At the end of the day, I managed. I also ended up at a little bit of the industry side of the city, which was a little better for me because everyone seemed to be in these apartment complexes, hospital, banks, all of these very very high traffic areas that people would have been originally but these places this place is like a dead zone for corporations it's ridiculous but that didn't stop the virality of the virus there were a bunch 
And when I say a bunch, I mean a bunch of zombies around. I tried my best to avoid any zombies and any interactions with any of the dead. I'd like to say it was actually quite successful. The thing I didn't take into consideration was the fact that I was going to find some hanging bodies in some of these stores that I was looting. Like legit, I just came into these stores for supplies and food and stuff, not dead hanging bodies. This, this was no joke of a situation. There really wasn't much else that I could do to help them out. Then I found these zombies that kind of looked like they were being mind controlled. I have no idea why they're all very similar in terms of their facial expressions, but I didn't let them get to me. But one thing that I did get to is eventually I got over to the stadium. I started checking out some of the military camps around the place. This is the place that I lost my two original friends that I had, or my first ever allies on this server. At this time, I decided to actually hop off and lock back in at a different time. And this is where I met my boy Invader Zim 200. Now this guy, this guy right here is an ally to me. He brought me over to an interesting part of the city where he started crawling into this small space. I didn't know if I should trust him with this, but hey, you know, he's my homie, I might as well. I later found out that he actually needed my help retrieving some of his stuff because he actually got robbed a while back, so I decided to help him out. I didn't exactly know how severe of a situation this was, so I was more of like a tag-along partner in this whole situation. I did not realize what I was getting myself into. We stayed there overnight, but nothing actually was seen. Nobody came out of the place, so we decided to just book it and meet back with the others. Instead of waiting for the night, we actually decided to go during broad daylight, where we could be seen from a mile away. I'm not sure why this was Invader Zim's big plan, but I was not letting my boy Invader Zim tackle this alone. I was going to back him as much as I possibly could. Right when we were getting nearby, he actually told me to cover for him. Now the issue was I didn't exactly have that much ammunition in the first place and I was working with a pistol so I wasn't even sure what I was getting into. But that didn't stop Invader Zim, he just kept going. We also needed a couple more supplies so we started looting some of the cars while I covered him. And this is when we finally managed to reach up to the enemy's campsite. He threw a smoke screen. I, I'm not sure why, we didn't even go through the front, but I guess it was some sort of a diversion. We hopped over a fence and without any doubts, we started looting the place. Luckily for us, the campsite was free of any enemies. But the question remained, where were the enemies in the first place? While we were checking out the upstairs of the police station, Invader Zim heard something from the first floor. So you know damn well we were on the prowl. If there was an enemy in the building, we were gonna shoot them dead. They ain't got no chance. We couldn't really find anybody, but once we left the police station, that's when we saw someone climbing over a fence. They were treating once they saw me for some reason even though I really didn't have much I climbed over to that wall to see two armed individuals with their guns to my sight I wasn't having it I just booked it what made things even worse is I think someone threw a molotov on me so I started burning during the whole situation not only this but they had snipers at the top of the building so honestly going out right now would be one of the worst things that I could possibly do. I had to find some cover and I had to find some cover fast. I also tried my very best firing back because I did have a bit of ammunition that Invader Zim gave me, but honestly nothing I did seemed to really help. At this time I also decided to head back into the police station because I needed somewhere to hide from the villains. I was directly on the rooftop at this time. I didn't know what to do exactly besides just camp out here and hide a bit. At this time Invader Zim actually switched servers due to the fact that he died on that one, so I decided to follow with him. I wasn't gonna leave my boy behind, but on this one apparently he already had a bit of a gang setup. We stuck as a team and we honestly enjoyed our time there. We were having a bunch of fun. We also had a little bit of a decent sized group and we were just walking around really. Loot was a little bit more scarce because we needed loot for the whole team now. While sticking together we were also trying to siege this one place and we saw someone there and we shot them down. We also looted their corpse, you know, it's common courtesy. One of the worst things we decided to do was also go to a different person's campsite. Day 71 to 80. Now their base, their main base I should add, was actually over here. But what we decided to do, we decided to get gassed up and we actually decided to go there. What I didn't take into consideration was my team teammates dead bodies lying there on the floor as it poured. The only thing I heard during this situation was sniper bullets. I was pinpointed. They knew of my existence, but I was not going to let them get me. I tried my very hardest to actually escape the area. After a very long time, I finally found a way out of the place and decided to hide in plain sight. What that basically means is I decided to actually hide right next to the building that the enemy team was on. And the sniper, the sniper that was up on the building, they decided to come down too in search of me. And look, I just barely made it out of this place alive. It didn't take very long until I got back on my feet and started walking around the place. I also found this person from the military that was just walking around shooting stuff. So I decided to hit him with a bat. Right when it actually hit daytime, I decided to go back to the stadium as well. I wanted to see if I could buy anything from the guy because, you know... 
I wanted to buy some weaponry, maybe a rocket launcher if I possibly could. That would be pretty nice, you know, if I got a rocket launcher, if I could afford one. But yeah, no luck, I was broke as heck and I didn't have enough money to buy the rocket launcher. That is basically the end of the story, so I decided to go by the carnival side. Some military people were also over there just patrolling and stuff, and I decided to start shooting at them for some reason. Listen, okay. Uh, it's my form of justice, yeah. By the way, if you're wondering what I'm on right now, it's actually a blimp. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting area. I also started exploring some of the sewers because I thought it was a pretty cool place, and I ended up back at the safe zone somehow. It eventually also led up to the train tracks. I didn't actually know where I was going, and I kid you not, I was genuinely lost for quite a bit because I didn't know where I was going. It seemed like the tracks were just, you know, continuously going on forever. Did I make it out? Yes. I eventually also got to a building where I met up with some of my other teammates that I called up to, you know, hop on. I gave them a bunch of stuff to work with and a couple of weapons, but we definitely needed to gear them up a bit. At least if we wanted to survive in the outside city like it is. I did try my best to gear them up as much as I possibly could. Then we went down the elevator and we were ready to get going. And what better place would we get loot from if it wasn't for the lovely stadium that's armed with a lot of people that are enemies funny enough that's exactly where we were going because i need to get these guys some stuff and to our surprise there wasn't actually anybody else there so we did get them some stuff days 81 to 90 while they were gathering some stuff i decided to go to a little bit of a rendezvous place one of my friends hopped on and wanted to check out this little bit of a place or what he called a facility we went room to room looking for people apparently this was owned by some people that weren't really up to any good so we decided to take things onto our own hands and, you know, if we saw them, it would be kill on sight. They also had a really creepy basement that we also decided to check out. But honestly, it looked like one of the maps from Phasmophobia. We actually did find some people. We started shooting some of them down, but we didn't get all of them. And before we knew it, we were kind of outnumbered. So we had to leave that place as soon as possible. We ended up running for a while, but eventually we found ourselves in this underground bunker that looked really cool. It was in the middle of, I believe, a park? I didn't exactly know where we were, but that didn't matter. We were being tracked down, so we had to book it as soon as possible. We finally decided to leave the park to see a very, very interesting sign on the apartment buildings. It said pray. Foreshadowing, maybe? As usual, we also had to get a couple more supplies. I needed a bunch more food, and I needed a bunch more drinks, so we decided to loot some of the buildings around. I heard some gunshots, so I hid in this house, and Will had to go find me after it calmed down a bit. Once again, we were back at the stadium, except this time around, we were actually in the upper area. We were by the seats, because there were some helicopters here and some places we wanted to investigate. Also, rumor had it that a lot of the people that were in charge of the cure used to be based here, because I wanted to get myself a hold of the cure, just in case I got infected by one of these zombies unluckily for us it was guarded by some you know zombie dogs so we had to take them down we tried keeping as low-key as possible since we were by the seats but some of the zombies started getting attracted to us and we had to take them out as quietly as possible we didn't want to use our guns just in case there was an enemy faction or team there now one of the main reasons that my teammate actually wanted to go there was because of the fact that there was a working helicopter apparently so we used the helicopter to the new area days 91 to 100 this is it we finally managed to escape the city through the helicopter it was pretty smooth sailing from here on out we didn't really do much besides just talk about how we escaped and what we went through it was honestly quite the relief i was just happy that we got to leave from that area even on the countryside, we could probably get like a little base sorted out. As long as it's not a high traffic area, we should be good to go because the zombies will be very minimal. Let's just say the person flying it wasn't really that good at flying the helicopter, but at least we were a couple miles out of the city. I started looking around for a bit, but I didn't really find anything. I found a couple of walkers and I decided to shoot at them. Obviously, like what the heck else am I supposed to do? Eventually, after a ton of walking, I finally found myself at a little bit of a town. Now, these buildings were pretty tall to be part of the countryside, but I guess it was like a little mini city that they tried starting up. There was a bunch of crashed helicopters here as well it seemed pretty prevalent now the one thing that i did notice from this was that there was this ugly looking spider like look at that thing it just started attacking me out of nowhere that thing is scary and also one thing that i didn't think i'd find is actually one of the two people that i brought to the stadium to actually gear them up with one of them was just wandering around here for some reason i guess they finally found a way to escape the city without a helicopter so good on them we started talking a bit and apparently they were headed to some very specific location that's supposed to be a safe haven now listen all right i was a little skeptical about the situation but honestly 
they didn't seem like they had any malicious intent and either way they were wearing some of the stuff that i got them from the stadium so i didn't think they had anything against me and oh how wrong that was we found a couple more walkers and a couple more spiders but we found this huge hotel what we didn't expect from the hotel was that it was rigged with a trap or so we thought something basically shot at us no remorse not even a heads up. We were honestly terrified. Some of the blast actually hit me and we scurried to the trees because that's some place that they actually can't find us. They were shooting at us. My best guess is there was lethal chemical gas that they were shooting at us because there were particle effects that came up. All while this was happening, we were also attacked by a bunch of walkers, but honestly, we just kept moving forward. We were not going to slow down just because of that fact. We weren't going to let the other people get to us. Now, one thing we actually didn't expect was a bit of a research facility. Now, this place was no normal research facility. This kind of looked interesting. I don't actually know what it looked like in the beginning. But the one downside to it all was that it was filled with a bunch of zombies. And I started shooting at them, which meant I was going to attract every walker in the area. What's even worse is one of them actually threw a mine. But at last, we finally got ourselves in. And there he was. There was Will. Will was actually alive and made it out. Apparently, he made this little bit of a research station. And he was just researching bodies and stuff. But he was a little bit different than when I last talked to him. Now, I didn't know exactly what he was researching, but I'm assuming it was some sort of cure. We stayed there for quite some bit because we were waiting until the zombie horde in front of us actually died down. Either that or Will found some explosives that he left around the area. What made things even worse was the fact that I had a broken leg, so I was injured. So one thing that was a little bit interesting was that she was actually trying to get Will this flash drive. And in the flash drive, there was the cure. The cure to the virus was on that flash drive, and we just gave it to Will. Basically, he knows some people that can replicate it. And with that being said, it could save a lot of lives. And just when things were getting a little bit good, Will shot her down he didn't even blink twice and it didn't just end with her getting shot and that that is where i had my last breaths Except we're in Squid Game. My goal is to pass all six challenges of the Squid Games and defeat the other contestants. Every 15 days, the next event will begin. And depending on how many items we get, we'll determine the perks that we receive. Will we survive till the very end? Watch till the end of the video to find out. Spoiler warning, if you haven't watched the show Squid Game yet, I highly recommend it prior to watching this video. Our story begins just like the main character of Squid Game, which means I'm in a stupid amount of debt for no reason. And guess what? Turns out I don't got a job either. So on a casual night on the way home, I was waiting for the train like the normal pedestrian I am. And suddenly, a man in a really nice looking suit decides to come up to me and ask me if I wanted to play a game. Alright, do you want the blue? Or do you want the red? If I win, I get a bit of money. And I don't really think I need to commentate any more of this, because you guys know the rest. He gives me his business card, which is literally just three shapes. Then I ended up on the side of a street waiting for a van to pick me up and put me into a coma that I'll never wake up from. That was the plot, right? Now, I know what you guys are asking. How the heck did you know where the van was going to be? I didn't. Here's the explanation. With each interval of 15 days, there's a different item that I have to collect. Collecting that item will give me a perk during the next challenge. Although this sounds fine and dandy, we're also being chased by one of the guards, and if the guard kills me, I am eliminated. So let the challenge begin! Days 1 to 15. And so the chase begun. Now, I didn't really have a chance to get some wood at this moment, because obviously there was a hunter right behind me. Notice how they also have a gun with them. Yeah, that's kind of the perk of being a hunter. You start out with the gun. So they could basically shoot me down. Not a fun experience. Mm-mm. But despite all of that, we began. I then distracted the hunter and basically just booked it. It worked for a bit and it gave us a little bit of distance between us and the hunter. So I decided to collect some wood eventually. Made a crafting bench, started making some of these wooden tools, then upgraded to stone tools. I also found myself at a village, so I got myself a bunch of food while I'm at it. As long as I'm always on the run and I have a couple blocks to basically defend myself with, I should be fine. For these 15 days, my goal is to get as much iron as I possibly can because for every piece of iron that I collect, I also also get a second's worth of time and this is kind of a collective thing and I definitely want to pull my own weight for this one let's just hope the other contestants do the same exact thing it didn't take very long until I found my first cave and I started mining some of the coal there because I was definitely gonna need some of those and that's when Harry decided to stop by and basically give the hole a little look but I outsmarted him while he was going into the cave I was going out of the cave and then jumped him from behind after the small little mining trip that I took I also found myself a temple which had complete garbage loot by the way just take a look at this stuff this how am I supposed to work off of this? And of course, by the time I actually got up the temple, the guard was obviously already there, but you know, I debated him. Then I realized one of the perks of actually being near a village. Iron golems. They 
literally dropped iron for free. So I killed the one at the village that we were at. Then I continued a little bit of iron mining and I eventually found myself a ravine, which really helped out a ton by the way. I also found myself a lava pool and made another portal out of it. This was simply due to the fact that I wanted to get some distance between me and the hunter. So I bed bombed him in the nether. I also decided to make my way to a bastion where me and the hunter once again had another fight. I got out of it alive, left the ravine, climbed a tree, and started smelting all of the iron that I have for the remainder of the time. Put the iron in the hopper and made my way to the event. The first challenge will be red light, green light. The thing we need for this challenge is time. Five iron ingots gives us one more second added to the timer. Everyone's iron will be put together at the very end of the 15 days to see how much time we're given. I better pull my own weight because I want to try playing this very carefully and this is where things start getting serious we get transported to our living quarters and then lined up in the very front as you can see there's a couple of sporadic ones but overall we were pretty contained not to mention there was an armed individual in front of us there were two people in these red suits one had a square on his head and the other had a triangle except for the fact that it looked clap as we know there's no triangles in minecraft but that didn't stop them from trying but enough of that the first challenge was coming up, and that was red light, green light. Now, for whatever reason, if you guys don't know what this game is, which I'd be very concerned if you didn't, when they say green light, we're basically able to move. When they say red light, we gotta stop or we get shot in the head. Yeah, you thought this was some normal game, huh? Nope. Our lives are on the line here. It was either my life or the money. I don't know if it's just me getting ahead of myself, but the people around me, they're going down, all right? I'm getting this money. And after seeing how much that my fellow contestants love to move around, I actually had a pretty good feeling about this one. Luckily for your boy, standing still is your boy's middle name. So at this point, we were just waiting for the event to actually start. I did, however, want to make some teammates. I wasn't just gonna be here not knowing anybody. And obviously, I had to team up with Monkey, cause, cause I already knew him pretty well. But yeah, we got a bit of a small group group now i don't know how long this group's gonna last but hey having teammates is better than not having anyone at all look at me being inspirational adrian i just want to say if i die tell my mom i love her and the show begun the barricade was lifted and green light filled up my screen as you can see, I was very hesitant, and honestly, I was probably one of the last people in the back, because I knew they were gonna pull a fast one on us. And down goes the first two contestants, Attire and Soku. What a bummer, is what I would have said if I didn't get more money if they get eliminated. And this is where we found the first thing that has been changed about these challenges. It wasn't just a simple go forward and you'll win. There's actually certain entrances that you had to go to to get to the next position. Luckily for me, Monkey, and Axton, we were right at that place. As for the other contestants, they were pretty much confused out of their minds. And amongst that confusion, two more have fallen. Will and Spazboy. That's a name. But despite all of that, the show must go on. We continued and people started getting the gist of it all and they started rushing into it. On my books, we had plenty of time, so I wasn't gonna let myself get greedy. I was just gonna take things slow and let them go ahead of me. And this was the third and final barricade before it was be the finish line that was remaining ahead of us. At this point, we didn't waste any time. We quickly scurried over to the red line and made it out alive. In comparison to the starting group that we had, we definitely lost a bunch of our numbers. And the odds of us winning isn't looking too good, especially with everyone dying. This this is definitely not gonna be an easy one. Luckily for me, the person I made an alliance with, Monkey, he was still alive. So I guess the alliance stays alive for another day. Or 15 to be exact, until the next challenge, that's what I mean. So after all that was completed, we then were taken back to the living quarters. Also, if you look up at the transparent pig that it's supposed to be imitating, you'll see that there's a bunch of more gold now, which means that the money that we receive when winning has been increased. Thank you very much, Fallen Contestants, for your lovely sacrifice. You'll somewhat be remembered. We had a bit of time before we get shipped back into our world to get the next resource, so we decided to explore a little bit. In the far back corner, there was this little hatch that we opened. We went through it, and it really just leads us to the front of the place. We weren't really sure what it was used for, but it was something, right? The second challenge is Honeycomb. Each player is in charge of getting a whole 20 honey blocks to attend the next event. To get one of those, we must take a bunch of campfires, locate beehives, and place the campfires underneath it. Then we place flowers nearby and wait for the beehive to tear up until we can finally shear it for honeycombs. Four honeycombs gives us one honey block. Time in this case is actually our disadvantage. Day 16 to 30. In this duration, I actually ran a very far distance because I just wanted a lot more space between me and the hunter. Well, that was the goal in the end, but I ended up making a bunch of campfires. But that wasn't by mistake, and that's because the challenge right now is to get as many honeycomb blocks as I possibly can. Preferably 20 so I could get into the next match. And that's exactly what we were after. The reason we needed campfires was because if you put a campfire 
right underneath a beehive, they don't get angry at you. And that's kind of what we needed. When bees are angry, they kind of tend to die. But we need them alive for the honeycombs. I also had to take a little bit of a detour because I need to find another village because I ran out of food. That's no surprise. And in that village, I also found myself the guard again. Which, by the way, he got smacked. But then I realized that the ammunition that I had wasn't actually enough. I needed a couple more bullets, especially if I was going to keep killing this guard. If you couldn't guess, long distance was kind of my priority here. And the slight advantage I had against them. So I went in search of another nether portal. AKA a lava pool where I can make the nether portal. And I found one. I made the portal went into the nether and got myself more bullets from bastions. Bastions have golden blocks, which then I could turn into normal gold, trade with piglins, and get myself some spectral arrows, which is basically bullets. This also gave some of the hives some time to actually generate into higher tiers. If you guys didn't know, it needs to be a tier 5 beehive for it to have honeycombs in it. Then when I went back, I sheared my first honeycombs and then put flowers on the ones that didn't have many flowers around it. Also kind of waited for the hunter, but eventually killed him. I'm not gonna lie, if I was the guard, I'd probably be raging right about now. The only thing I was really thinking about was the fact that if I get more honey blocks, would I get a bigger advantage or would it just literally be more honey blocks? And thinking back to the show, the less of the cookie that you actually had to work with, the better. So I think I'm gonna just stick with the 20. And eventually I managed to get all 20 of the honeycomb blocks that I needed and went to the next challenge. And then we went back to sleep. Toby, do not sleep next to me, you weirdo. I wasn't planning on You don't sleep with me. And so we awaken back into our horrible living quarters, by the way. This place sucks. And in front of us, we see all of the guards lined up. And they want us to line up as well. So as you can see, our numbers have dramatically dropped. And we're not looking too hot. So we got to think strategic about this one. After announcing it, they then take us into the next challenge. And that very challenge is known as Honeycomb. So what we were told is that we had to pick one out of the four shapes that were written on those signs. Me, for some reason, I picked circle. I didn't really know what implication this had. But I'm not joking, this actually took a minute because we couldn't split people properly. But eventually we managed. And that's when the walls came crumbling down. And what we saw before us were the honey blocks that we collected. So depending on the shape that we picked, we basically had to make the shape in Minecraft. Luckily for me, I didn't pick the umbrella. Whoever picked that, I genuinely feel really bad for you. But for me, it was a sphere, which wasn't that bad. And so once everything was all good and set up, we also got some guards watching over us and th th this happened. But once we were ready, the timer had started and we were ready to get going. We started punching at the honeycombs like there was no tomorrow. And by the very end of this whole entire process, we ended up with a perfect circle. Feast your eyes on my magnificent build that I definitely didn't copy from the reference that we had to copy. And the timer was completed. Our guards then took us to the very middle to then see everyone's results. And from what I could tell, there weren't really any gunshots that I heard in the distance while making this thing. So I don't think anyone died. I think everyone got their shape right. Props to the people that had to make a freaking umbrella. But there we were, in the middle, waiting for everyone's results. Although the people that did make it wrong probably already knew what they got wrong, but it didn't seem like anyone was wrong in this situation until the guy with the square-shaped mask put up his gun. This is when things took a very, very dark turn. See, the part that was confusing about this was the simple fact that he wasn't shooting or aiming at someone that was a contestant. Instead, he was aimed at the person he was working with one of the other masked individuals. Apparently what had happened was that they started helping one of the contestants make the shape, and that just wasn't allowed. I don't know who you are, homie, but rest in peace. As for the rest of us, it was good days. We started messing around as they were preparing for the next challenge. Luckily for us, we didn't lose a single soul out of the contestants, which means our chances of winning are still the same as it was before. Even though it's low, it's still a possibility, and I'll take it. Well, back to the living quarters we go. The third challenge is Tug of War, which will be a one-on-one -on -one battle to the death using fishing rods. But we can't just take any fishing rod that we craft out of the world. In order to get one of these fishing rods, one would need eight diamonds. I'll try to get as many as I can, because if our one fishing rod breaks, we automatically lose. My plan is basically just to strip mine for a bit, search for a mine shaft so I can loot some chests, and potentially look for a sunken ship. Sounds like a solid plan to me. Days 31 to 45. This was for the tug of war challenge, and the way we did this one was through fishing rods. Except instead of having fishing rods, you need to basically purchase them with 8 diamonds in exchange. So your boy had to go diamond hunting. The first strat that I did try was strip mining. 
And so I was strip mining for quite a bit, but the only issue with that was it's such an enclosed place that the hunter could literally just sneak up behind me and shoot me in the head. And that's honestly exactly what happened, except they didn't really shoot me in the head per se. But I ended up killing them anyways, with some tactical maneuvering of course. After trying a couple more times, I then started hearing like weird noises around me. And I honestly just didn't want to risk it, being that enclosed in a space with a hunter, I'm okay. Thanks for the offer though. Instead what I decided to do was I went ravine searching, because often ravines would also go to white level 9 to 11-ish. So I was kind of hoping for some diamonds to just be out there in the open, but there was no luck with that. But I did eventually find myself a bit of a mineshaft. What's a mineshaft gonna do? Well they have chests and within those chests the loot table has diamonds in it. So there is a chance and I like my odds. Sort of. There we once again found the guard trying to attack us. He doesn't learn. I don't think he understands, but we're too powerful for him. I'm sorry. Also, I know you guys are looking at this accuracy. My accuracy this this time around is, is going nuts. Call me a gun spammer all you want, alright? I just want to stay in the game. I want to be a contestant, alright? And I'm going to win this. Eventually, after looting almost, I believe, all of the chests in the mineshaft, I decided to look for a shipwreck. There's a chance that there could be diamonds in there, but I was more looking for the buried treasure, because buried treasure tends to have more diamonds in them. So after locating one, I then went into one of the chests, found the treasure map, went to the location on the treasure map, dug down using a little 9-9 method, and it ended up being a dud. Just my luck, huh? I also kinda decided to get myself some looting for the next challenge, but that also didn't go that well. By the end of it all, I did manage to get myself two of the fishing rods, which would cost me up to 16 diamonds worth. And two honestly was plenty, I don't even think I'd managed to break one of them. But it's a nice little insurance that's in the background, just in case. And so we were ready and prepared for the next challenge. Finally, after all that exploring and mining, we at last begin the third challenge. As you can see, the gold didn't really change since none of the contestants died. So I guess it doesn't count for the red guys dying. It's a little bit biased if you ask me. But no matter, it didn't take long for the people in red to finally come out and greet us. And that's where they began leading us to the next challenge. Now this one was interesting. It was tug of war and we had to use fishing rods. Now I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I'm trash at using fishing rods. Like I cannot do anything, even if it's my life on the line with these fishing rods. My only hope for actually getting this done was being worse than the person I was versing to let this game a chance begin. You're going and you're going. Oh, oh. The first one v one that we did was my I'm guessing they knew each other pretty well. So if the next one is gonna be a team game, it's gonna be me and Monkey against the other two. We also got taken back to the living quarters where we'll basically rest once more and do the next set of challenges in the normal worlds. The fourth challenge is marbles. In order to have a winning chance, we need to collect as many Eye of Enders as we possibly can. One Eye of Ender gives us one marble to work with, but this will require us to go to the nether for quite a bit. Days 46 to 60. 
During this duration of the time, our goal was very clear. We need to get ourselves some Eye of Enders for the Marbles Challenge. Now this one was actually uncapped. We can get as many Eye of Enders as we wanted, and the more Eye of Enders we get, basically, the more marbles we'd get. This was a huge tactical advantage, but we also had a very limited time. And my RNG wasn't the greatest, so I had to make do with something quick. I quickly got myself into the nether and then searched for a nether castle. Eventually I found one, got myself some blaze rods, and that was that. The only other thing that I needed was now the ender pearls. See, this is where things got a little bit tricky. I used a bunch of mine for the fights prior, so I had to get some more gold from Bastions. The first Bastion I went to didn't really have gold that I knew how to loot, but the second Bastion I found, I knew exactly how to loot that for its gold. We got the gold and started trading it with some of the piglins there. We also got attacked by the hunter, but we managed to kill him. And yeah, no, I wasn't joking by the way about my RNG. It's actually garbage. It took quite a bit of time and a few tries, but eventually I managed to get a decent amount of Eye of Enders. I tried getting some more from the mushroom biome, but that also didn't go that well and it took up a lot of my time. I also didn't want the hunter sneaking up on me, so honestly, I was considering going back to the overworld and that's what I did. I then, after leaving the nether, crafted up the Eye of Enders that I were able to make. I honestly don't believe that I was in as much of a tactical advantage than some of the other teammates. I'm sure some of the others have crazy amounts so far, but I was honestly happy with this amount. And basically all that lied was to just avoid the hunter and that was pretty simple, right? I just run in one direction. I also wanted to prepare myself for the next challenge just to get myself a bit of food. That way I can actually transport myself to places. That's probably going to be one of the smarter moves. And we were ready for the next challenge. When the guards left, me and Monkey started thinking about a strategy. If we were put against them, would we hold back? No, absolutely not. We were just going to destroy them. And look at the money. It increased. And here we are, the fourth game. It has finally came time to experience the next challenge. On the way there, Monkey was also kind of bad mouthing the other two, but we don't need to talk about that too much. But this challenge, to simply put it, is just marble. So we actually got, you know, free reign over what type of game that we wanted to play and what the teams would look like. So we did go with the 2v2 format, but what we were aiming for was basically to get one of these marbles into the hole. There was slime and there was magma slime. We were team slime and they were team magma slime. And we'd simply just take turns hitting the button. Whichever one's marble hits the hole first is declared the winner. That was what we agreed upon. And that's not for say that 100% of the time or like a really high percentage of the time, it'll actually manage to throw that far. But there was a decent amount of luck involved with this game as well. And we were basically putting our lives on the line for it. And so this went on for a while. We just kept going at it, pressing the button again and again and again until finally we got one to get in. But it was a magma cream, and despite this, Monkey started celebrating because I think he forgot that we were Team Slime. But that came to a quick stop when I gave him the realization of what actually happened. Why are you That's celebrating, so... Monkey? We just lost. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now, remember in the beginning when I said that the teams were basically entirely up to us? Tropical and Xander decided to take me onto their team. It would be better for them for the last two challenges if they had more people involved. I tried getting Monkey on the team as well, but one person had to be eliminated in this one. It was either we lose or we forfeit and Monkey lives, or it was Monkey dies and the rest of us go on. And in a heartbeat, one of the red suits decided to pull up with a gun and shoot him right in the head in front of us. And that was it. My one ally that I had throughout this entire thing was gone. For the sake of his sacrifice, I had to beat these two in the next two challenges. Wasn't gonna go down without a fight. And obviously we were sent back to our living quarters. But Tropical, he wasn't having it. He didn't like the system that he was put into. So he literally ran up to the triangle mask and punched them in the face. That was disrespectful to a different degree. But obviously afterwards he had a gun, you know, to his head, but he didn't die. He did, the shot wasn't made, but that wasn't enough for them. They actually had a different plan in mind and they were preparing this from the very beginning. Remember that schmuck that died in the beginning? The red suit with the circle head. Yeah, that one. So basically they were smuggling in weapons from their worlds. They actually planned to take out some of the red suits. Now you might be asking, what would we exactly gain from them doing this? I have no idea. Maybe it's something personal, I don't know. But after they left, we basically started work. They wanted to jump some of the red suits. So what our plan basically was, in the middle of the night, when we were supposed to be sleeping, they would basically come out with knives on both sides and I'd be the distraction that would bring them to the middle of the room while they attack them. Is this the right thing to do? Perhaps. But is it a felony? 
Yeah, 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 it very much is. But you know what? Screw the red suits, all right? They killed Monkey. They killed my teammate. They're not getting away with this. As revolutionists say, blood must be shed. And that's when they showed me where they got the knives from. So it was from that red suit guy. But they hid the knives for the perfect time to take them out. And it was in the little ventilation that we had. And so I went up right in the front of it all while they were on the sides. And I knocked on the door asking them to check this out. I didn't even know what I was going to say. It was just pure waffle. But alas, two of the guards, one triangle and one circle, came out to see what was going on. And I pointed them up at the very thing that we came here for. Big bucks. And that's where Tropical and Xander came out of the shadows and stabbed them in the back. It was a victory. It worked. We eliminated two of them. But then the other guards came in and started aiming guns at our heads. They confiscated the knives from Tropical and Xander and fired a freaking warning shot at me. For what? It honestly could have gone much worse. We did kill their kind and... I guess they just didn't care. The fifth challenge is the glass bridge. The only perk we can receive is the totem of undying, which we do keep. We get to keep it in the playing field and it'll make it so we can afford making mistakes on these steps. Days 61 to 75. Now, this part was probably one of the most straightforward challenges. If you can find and get yourself a hold the totem of undyings, you get to keep the totem of undying for the glass bridge. And I don't know if you guys know this, but the glass bridge is basically all chance based. We also only have three people remaining and I definitely don't want to go first. So I better get myself some totems of undying just in case that does happen. So the first thing I decided to do was actually think about where I'd find myself an evoker. The mob that actually drops the totem of undyings in the first place. Now one of the easiest ways would probably be to find a villager outpost next to a village that would get raided eventually. But the second way to get an evoker would be to go to a woodland mansion. So I kind of had to weigh my odds because villages are a lot less scarce than an actual woodland mansion. But then again, what are the chances of it being next to a villager outpost? I tried one of the villages, but it didn't really work out too well. So I ended up going to the mansion. Where was this mansion, you might ask? I have no freaking clue. I honestly just took a horse and, and booked it there. And by there, I mean like I just went north until I saw something. I was honestly just aimlessly walking in a direction hoping that I'd either run into a pillager outpost or the woodland mansion but the woodland mansion came first throughout this time the hunter was also complaining about me just literally walking in one direction and it was very unfair would I be able to argue with that point not really and I finally found myself at one of the woodland mansions but the hunter was also not that far away from me when I entered the mansion I was basically just having to look around and I see the hunter in the corner of my eye and I'm not even joking you guys, this fight actually took ages to complete, alright? The hunter started stacking up and actually geared up this time around. So it was a bit of a difficult fight and it lasted for quite a bit. We just kept going back and forth. And I'm not gonna lie, the hunter did in fact put me to a really low amount of HP. To the point where I actually had to play it a little bit more tactical and run away and keep my distance. But at the very end of it, I was the winner of the duel of the mansion. But in return, I also lost the two totem of undyings that I had because I had basically been killed by the hunter. Very, very counterproductive stuff. I just pray that one of the other contestants has totem of undying. That way we can at least, at the very least, get one person through this round. And so began the fifth challenge out of six. And this one was going to be the glass bridge of random chance is what I like to call it. And why do I call it this? Because, you know, it's just simply chance. It's all chance based. It's literally a 50-50 jump. One of the glass breaks and you basically break your legs and your life's gone and the other one stays in place. This is going to be interesting. We were first woken up and brought to the room that we had to go to to then pick our format. There were actually 10 slots for players to pick from, but only three of us managed to survive. So our odds were not in our favor. So we were told to pick between one, two, or three. I decided to pick one. Xander picked two and Tropical picked three. And that's when the guard came up to us and explained the twist to this. Instead of it going from one to three, it would go from three to one. So it would be basically in reverse. Tropical would have to go first, Xander second, and me third. I was off the hook. Unluckily for me and Xander, we actually didn't have any totems of undying that we actually got. But Tropical, on the other hand, this dude had two totems of undying that he brought from his world. This was hopefully going to be to our advantage, or so we thought. But instead, the dude decides to jump off of the freaking platform. We haven't even begun the challenge. But all mess ups aside, we then began the 50-50 game. The good thing is, on the first part, the first few jumps were actually good. We managed it. It wasn't too difficult. For now, somehow Tropical has been managing to hit these 
pretty decently. You know, if he was a professional gambler, this, this would have been pretty good, actually. And so we reach the second half. If we can all finish this part all that would be left is the squid game and we would be over and that's when tropical started testing his luck a little bit too much he took a leap and fell because the glass that he landed on was not the one he should have jumped on xander looked back at me in the eyes and he knew he knew exactly what was going on and what we had to do he tried his best convincing me to go first but that wasn't gonna happen i would have stayed right here but alas xander finally made it to the very end after literally just randomly guessing which glass to step on. But good for you, Xander. Good for you. I followed in his footsteps and made it to the very end as well. After all the people that were involved with this, it was just me and Xander left. I also meant a pretty decent heap of money. We are then taken back to our living quarters to then complete the final challenge. The sixth challenge is Squid Game. The final game before we get a hold of all that money. For those that don't know, there's two teams. One is the attacker and the other is defending. The attacker's job is to reach the head of the squid that the defender defends. I have to b-hop till the middle, cross it, then run for the end while the attacker tries to beat me down. Day 76 to 100. Now this final bit of the video is pretty straightforward stuff because we honestly can't get much of a perk for this last bit since it is just a game between me and the other person which would be Xander we gotta do is kill the ender dragon for entrance and I've already done this so many times that I could basically do this thing in my sleep I stabbed the hunter to death or shoot it I don't exactly remember what the footage was and make my way over to the end stronghold I also get some wool and wood because obviously I need beds to kill the dragon really really fast and then the hunter shows up so that was kind of a problem Despite me already being in the end, the hunter showed up, but eventually I did manage to outsmart him and kill him off. In a very stupid death, by the way. But afterwards, I was also alerted that getting an elytra would also give me a special perk that I wasn't allowed to know yet. I was kind of suspicious about it, but you know what? It's whatever, right? It's just in the end city. So I went to the end city, tested out my RNG, walked in a singular direction until at last I finally found myself at a lovely end city. With the ship right next to it, housing a lovely elytra and at that very moment the hunter also caught up to me they were on the ship as we spoke but i flew off with my elytra and taunted them the end after the next 15 days now instead of us actually having a perk for this last one it was basically the ender dragon fight which wasn't too difficult both me and xander completed it and we were back in the lovely living quarters take a look at this gold the thing's practically full i don't even think we could get any more money than this all that was remaining was just the final fight, and I wasn't gonna lose to Xander, that's for sure. The guards called us up, and we did the little lineup orientation, even though there was two of us, and they finally took us in. Alongside that, they gave us these cool-looking suits to wear, and there we were. Despite, you know, the little bit of a change of clothing and style we got, it was pouring, so everything was wet. Clearly, someone didn't check the weather app, but whatever. All right, Squid Game, here it is. Cue the explanation, and bam, here we go, B hopping our way over to the middle. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he still has the chance of pushing me aside, even when I'm B hopping, but whatever. I went over to the middle, ran across it, and booked it to the very end. Not gonna lie, Xander, you're kinda bad at this game. And that is where I took my victory. The guards started pulling up, and it was pretty clear. It was clear as day, even though it's pouring rain, that I was the winner, and Xander was the one that was gonna get shot. Nope, never mind. What actually ended up happening was a person with the square mask decided to shoot all the other peers that were next to him and gave us knives to basically fight till the death. I don't know what kind of sense of moral this dude has, but maybe he just doesn't want blood on his hands even though he just killed his co-workers, but I guess he doesn't want civilian. You get the point. Despite already winning the game, we were given two knives to fight to the death with. I was talking to Xander, you know? We had to discuss this. This was gonna be a game of life or death, and before he could even think, I stabbed him. Gone, he was dead. Alright, deceased. I didn't give him a chance. Don't let your guard down. And at last, the money was mine. I was victorious. Shout out to Monkey Lynx, you know. Wish he could be with me till the very end, but he died. And so did basically all my other peers. But I made it. And so I was able to escape the Squid Game. I managed to become the winner. And they let me go. Just like that. I took my little credit card, cashed out, I was big balling. Just like the main character, when I got the funds, I wanted to get back to my family. So then I bought myself a ticket on a plane. The only difference is, I didn't go back because I'm trying to live, alright? It's logical, so I took the damn flight. Bye. Never ever playing that game again. Matter of fact, I'm about to sue this game for first degree murder. Thanks for watching.
almost died. 1.19 wild update. On an SMP, the goals for the video are to start a tadpole empire, save an ally from bandits, and to slay the warden. 1 to 10. Besides the normal stuff, our main goal is to find a mangrove biome. Now this biome is one of the new ones that came in 1.19. If you guys don't know, this is where the frogs dwell, and that's where we gotta go to finish our first goal. So let's go ahead and finish up some of the basics. We went ahead and collected some wood, crafted ourselves a pickaxe, started mining, and made ourselves some cobblestone pickaxes and axes. And then I saw a sheep, and I killed it in cold blood. Listen, okay, he probably deserved it. Who knows what that sheep could have done? I mean, I don't, but I killed it anyways. After we got that stuff out of the way, we then went to search for a village. Villages are good for a variety of reasons, but the main thing is it's a really good source of food because you could craft these hay bales into bread. We like that. And there are a few chests there, so I'm trying to see what's in them, you know? Lo and behold, there was a bunch of food and some iron to start out with. But the most valuable thing we found here is these three diamonds. Like, what kind of luck is that? Probably gonna make that thing into a pickaxe. Or am I? I'm telling y'all. After we were done looting the village, this began our first journey journey to find the mangrove biome it looks very similar to a swamp to be fair so i just kept walking while we were exploring we actually found a bit of a shipwreck i didn't know where the chest was there was a lot of sand probably was one in there i was just too lazy to actually excavate it so we moved on from there we ended up finding a desert biome and within the desert biome we found a desert temple the issue with the desert temple is it was low-key kind of buried so there was a lot of mobs inside and this is a clip of me almost getting annihilated but we pulled through and we looted it what else will we do it was trash loot nothing really noteworthy but this is where things get a little bit interesting because this all began when we found ourselves a jungle biome don't worry i'll get to it there's more we've yet to even see another player on this server yet but after walking through the jungle aimlessly for a while we ended up finding an ancient temple i'm pretty sure these things are kind of rare i'm not too sure though but once we entered it i mined one of the floors and you know found the first chest and in the second chest there was a booby trap but the booby trap missed me because i'm just better and we got three more diamonds let's go an interesting thing about the server is they have a slash wild command and the slash wild command man took me to this random location we didn't see any player built anything so far until this very moment days 11 to 20 we were on a cliffside in the jungle biome and we noticed something a little bit suspicious in the distance because there were just random blocks of dirt so you know me i decided to investigate it and what we end up finding is this dirt structure now i don't think it's actually in use anymore but there was a little bit of a mine at the bottom of it it basically looked abandoned but it was definitely not naturally generating so i was kind of curious as to what was going on here now whether this was a good Good idea or a bad idea i had no clue at that time little did i know what i was getting myself into there's a bunch of leftover dirt that someone placed trying to make some sort of a weird bridge i'm not too sure and this is me doing a bit of parkour over it it got pretty strange and i thought i was looking at acacia wood but this was actually the new mangrove wood that we were looking at which meant there was a mangrove biome nearby so i kept moving forward one hop after another we then find ourselves at our first official player base that we found so far on the smp it looked like a cool base to me you know it was all like mangrove looking and he incorporated all the new blocks into the house now i wasn't trying to do nothing you know i wasn't gonna rob him or anything like who do you guys take me for i'm no felon i'm a good samaritan okay i do my taxes and stuff i think but the person that was living there didn't feel the same way and decided to punch me out of the place yeah he was a hostile we'll name him jeffrey for now jeffrey ain't be liking us foreigners bro and this was me even trying to escape the vicinity but i was in the water so it was really difficult because there was a lot of mobs so i climbed up a tree and shot an arrow at him because i wasn't done with you jeffrey you think we're playing some game huh well we are but you know what i mean i'm coming back for you jeffrey you'll see you'll see you made the wrong enemy that's all i'm gonna say it's time for us to get to work all right i know we got nothing right now but we gotta get Get some armor bro we gotta start mining and that's what we did we got ourselves a bunch of iron we got ourselves a bunch of blocks to work with look at these cool cave generations though this stuff looks sick i've literally been just walking aimlessly throughout this entire cave system and it just endlessly keeps going there's actually no dead end to this place finally i found a spot that i just kind of wanted to chill for a bit and smell all the iron that we have here we go made myself a helmet a chest plate some pants and some boots all ironed up baby now as for the plan against jeffrey i was thinking we'd go for more of an explosive Route. usually we'd go for the burn down their house route but you know what i was feeling a little feisty today afterwards we needed a bunch of sand for the explosives in the first place and we need about five per tnt so i started digging up a bunch of sand not to mention i probably needed glass for a base anyways two things knocked out all at once that's what i like to see oh and i also went creeper hunting because i needed some gunpowder for the explosives god i hate creeper hunting like y'all really didn't need to make this so difficult but whatever you know what it don't come easy all right that's why we gotta take matters into our own hands jeffrey is going down all right that's enough i think we got all the materials we need 
Now we also want to do our second mission, which is to make ourselves a tadpole empire. Cause why not? That just that just sounds cool to me. You know, like imagine someone coming up to you and they're like, "Yo, what you got on you? Frogs, tadpoles? What you want?" I could literally be the black market dealer for frogs and tadpoles. That sounds sick. So we pulled up back at the mangrove biome that we originally found, just at a different side, so we don't actually alert the person living there. Cause you know, like the last time we met him, Jeffrey was kind of mean. But none of that today. I took the leads off of a wandering trader, went into the mangrove swamp, and took two frogs yep i'm the frog napper that was me then i brought it over to a secured island made a little bit of a pit the frogs jumped out of it but then i, I made it a deeper pit and gave them some slime balls because apparently that's how you breed them and this is how it went down so for you guys that don't know when one frog really likes another frog they spit out babies yeah that's what happens but yeah on a real note i really thought this place was safe from anything from intruders okay maybe not from intruders but like let's be real here it's a pit who's gonna go into this pit and want to kill some frogs right why would anyone want to even kill these frogs these guys are adorable only a psychopath would ever think of killing these guys but i wasn't done there all right we still need to get ourselves some more diamonds bro i was trying to get stacked so i tested my luck at a different location and began mining again days 21 to 30 what i actually didn't end up thinking i would find is the the freaking stronghold the way i was able to tell is because i was going down this really narrow cave and then boom stone bricks what and then i heard the silverfish so it instantly clocked and you know i was kind of hyped to actually explore this thing we found the closest chest and it ended up being complete utter trash thanks minecraft i'm glad you're on my side but yeah you know we took a little bit of a look around issue was we actually didn't have any of the materials to actually go to the end we had a lot of work to do i think this time around i actually want to get this fight done early so we could get elytras i feel like if we were to actually blow up Jeffrey's house, we need an escape plan, and an elytra would be a perfect one. One of the eyes of the portal were actually filled, so we only needed 11 eye of enders. I came down here without an actual bucket of water, so I had to go back up, get two buckets of water, make an infinite source, and then start making ourselves our portal. Now looking back at the footage, this looks so extensive. Like, I swear I could have found any easier way to make this thing. But you know what? If it works, it works. You know, no need to fix something that isn't broken. Let's be real here, so don't be clowning me for this. And there we go. We were finally in the nether. Days 31 to 40. As any good Minecraft speedrunner should know, the first thing we have to find ourselves is a nether castle because this is where blazes dwell. And so after a bunch of exploration, we finally found ourselves a nether castle. The thing I didn't account for was all the wither skeletons that were with the blazes. It's just a minor inconvenience, right? We can we can definitely handle it. No. I was completely wrong. I almost died to that thing. The only reason I didn't die was because of this golden apple. So, W golden apple. Let's be real here. I really don't want to restart this challenge. We ended up finding a bunch of one-off blazes, which is kind of annoying because there wasn't any spawner and I didn't hear anything. After killing a bunch of them, I got no blaze rods. What kind of RNG is that? But after a while, we finally found ourselves a blaze room and we started whacking them. Got all the blaze rods we needed and we did. Next up on the list was ender pearls. Now, there's two ways to actually get them. My preferred method is sticking a bow. Oh, pause. What I meant to say is placing a boat right next to an enderman which will then capture the enderman and you could kill it without it killing you or a bastion where we could trade with piglins we'll do that after i was honestly testing my luck but they just kept dropping ender pearls issue was i couldn't really get the 11th one i needed so i gave up plus i was kind of getting tired of the blue that's just me phase 41 to 50 i don't know but eventually i ended up going across this lava lake because i saw a little bit of a structure in the middle of it was it safe no would you try this at home no all it took was one gas or like a blaze or any random mob to hit me off and i'm done i'm gone fortunately enough i survived um i believe these things are called ruined portals you guys can correct me if i'm not nothing special in there but lo and behold right in front of it was a bastion that's what we're here for but they're not very nice people they instantly attack you if you're not wearing anything gold and for some reason i didn't wear anything gold listen okay i can critique myself now i can't lie to you bastions are actually a really dangerous place and often a really easy way to die it's a one-way ticket to hell even though the nether is kind of like the equivalent of hell so we had to be really careful about this i was basically keeping my distance and staying on top of blocks for the most part then i started burning piglins because you know i'm a bit of a psychopath i mean it's kind of enjoyable look at them burning in agony and this is where we actually got ourselves some diamond tools which was goaded by the way this stuff replaced all of my iron stuff i mean hey the pickaxe even had fortune 3 on it that's crazy it was it was too the, the footage said too it's still a golden enchantment nonetheless i also used all of our gold to then trade with some of the piglins and luckily enough we got ourselves three ender pearls I, I think it was three i don't know but that was more than enough than we actually needed we also got a bunch of other random items and stuff that we really don't need right now so i basically just left all that stuff there i mean let's be real here why the heck would i need crying obsidian or any of the other trash that they trade us the answer to that question is we don't now one thing i actually didn't expect is while i was searching for more of the chest there was actually another player there 
that basically hit me off of the bastion. I was unsure if they were actually chasing me, so what I ended up doing was throwing an ender pearl. I, I know, I kind of used up one. But it's okay, we have extras. Don't need to sweat about it. Nah, but it was actually crazy. Like, imagine dying out here in the nether because someone smacked you off. The audacity to the man that actually had the nerve to do that. Oh, wait till I find out who that was. Like, I'm really not playing games out here, bro. This stuff takes so long to record. I'm not being eliminated by no rando. The rest of the time in the nether, we spent getting back to the portal of ours. That way, we can craft up the eye of enders that we need and finally get into the end. Get my little hands on in a light. Days 51 to 60 and we were back. I also crafted up the eye of enders But one thing I realized is we don't got no wool no beds no nothing bruh So we had to mine back up to the surface find ourselves some random plains biome where I finally found ourselves a sheep Little do these sheep know what was coming at them. Nah, I'm just playing I killed one of them But then I realized shearing them would be a much better option so I could get a bunch more wool It's the most logical thing to do in this situation instead of slaughtering an entire family after we finished up with that We went right back down to the portal and place the last eye of ender i wasn't really too worried we got ourselves a crossbow and a bunch of arrows as well when we were out there so the crystals i hope shouldn't be too big of a deal or a problem i just hope i still got the ender dragon killing technique on me i haven't done it in a while all right cut me some slack and here we were we mined to the very top of the area and started shooting at some of the crystals one two three they were going down like flies you know when i got a little bit comfortable i started shooting at the dragon but the dragon swooped down and basically hit me into the air. Luckily, I clutched up with the water bucket. Now, ignore all of the shots that I actually miss here because I don't miss at all, so that's not me. But the ones I do hit, that's completely me. That's all me. My main technique was the bed technique, where you basically place a bed right next to the head and then place a block. You stand behind the block, you actually don't get attacked by the bed. This was me burning up because they actually burn the surrounding area when you right-click a bed, which was kind of annoying because I almost died to it. Yeah, it wasn't even the ender dragon that was a threat. It was me. And this was the last bed, and we finally killed the ender dragon i also started putting out the fires because i thought the xp was gonna drop in the fire and burn up i wanted the xp i mean who wouldn't after beating a boss in minecraft either way this ain't even the difficult boss bro it's the warden that i'm worried about after the fight i then collected all of the exp and i collected the egg because i wanted the egg kind of like a souvenir of the time i almost killed myself with a bed and then we built up to the little portal that takes us near the area that the end city is supposed to be in explore that place for actually quite a bit but finally we ended up finding an end city. Now this place actually had the ship with it. So conveniently enough, that's where the elytras are at. Only issue is we actually had to get up there. That's where things got a little tricky because shulkers spit out this like weird cubic ball thing that gives you levitation, which is really annoying by the way, and could be our one way ticket to actually resetting the challenge. I ain't doing that. Now, you know, in my experience with all of this stuff, I've dealt with shulkers before. They're not that difficult. That's what I went into it thinking, but man, was I wrong. Now I'm not even joking, regardless of what you're doing in there, as long as they have sight on you, they will be spitting out attacks, projectiles, and they will not stop unless you are dead or just out of their sight. First part of it honestly wasn't too bad. You know, I got hit a couple times and I used it to levitate myself up some of the stairs. That's what I'm to believe you're supposed to do. But once we got up to this huge area, things started going south. Well, at first it was all nice. You know, I was floating up. I had my shield up and stuff. But look, just take a look at this. I swear I was floating for the entire duration of that. Even my shield couldn't help me. I had to quick build on the side of the area. By far, that had to be one of the most stressful situations I've ever been in. Cause like, you're not even in control of your own movement, you're just floating. Now I know what them little dandelion puffs feel like. Crazy. From here on, I had to be on the defense, okay? I healed up and I had to make sure that I did not get body like that again because the challenge almost ended here. Like I know I was the one that wanted the elytra, but is it really worth all this? But after finally reaching the top, we took some of the loot from there and then started bridging all the way over to the side. But all of this, honestly, I was terrified because what if one of the shulker boxes actually saw me and spits out one of them floaty things? Like what am I supposed to do? The only thing I can do is probably maybe water bucket, but I don't got reflexes like that. I still took the risks. Not to mention on the boat itself, there's shulker boxes there too. Honestly, it was not an easy trip at all. We napped the stuff in those chests and took the elytra and flew ourselves out of there. Funny enough, we flew so far, we ended up finding another end city, but I, I didn't really need to loot it. I was just here for the elytra. Now we gotta make ourselves some fireworks for an actual perfect escape. Jeffrey ain't even gonna see us, bro. We're gonna be so fast. Day 61 to 75. A huge chunk of this was actually a bit of a repeat from before, except this time we're not really making TNT. 
We are preparing for fireworks, but once we finally got enough of the paper and enough of the gunpowder for it, we then crafted up some fireworks and started flying around the world. This was actually to complete the ally goal. It's these blue little things. I don't really know what they do, but we also have two diamonds in preparation for when we finally find one. After traveling through a bunch of biomes, we eventually found ourselves a pillager base. Things were about to get serious. You see that cage down there? That's where the allies are trapped, so we have to kill all of these pillagers for them to be extracted safe and sound i'm not gonna lie to you i got a little bit over my head because i only had iron armor all right no diamond armor no enchantments no nothing so when the fight actually began it was a bunch of shit but like look at this thing the amount of anxiety it got from this fight alone was immense but check out some of these moves but i was dodging this stuff like it was the matrix kind of honestly team pillagers had no chance got me dodging bullets left and right i was also a little bit worried because at any moment more reinforcements could either spawn or just pull up from inside of the tower so i had to be quick with it but somehow we managed pulled through broke the allies out gave them diamonds and they started following us i got a little bit worried because an elytra with fireworks is really really fast so i didn't know if they could keep up so i kept making these weird twirls i'm just clarifying what i was doing all right because it does look a little weird now that i look back at it but listen okay it would be kind of pointless if we broke them out just for them to escape again i gave them a whole diamond each all right that stuff is not cheap hey, you ever try buying a diamond in real life those stuff are expensive bro but to be fair i've never bought a diamond before myself so i, I really can't tell you look at me bro i'm flying I ended up trying to save them by trapping them in a village, which doesn't really sound any better than the cage that we just got them to escape from. But you know what? I got the goal done, all right? And then for some reason, a whole pillager raid started. They wanted their goods back. But listen, okay, we weren't going to let these poor innocent villagers die in cold bloods because of us, all right? We brought the allies here. We bought the valuables of the pillagers right to this village. We were not gonna put them in harm's way. It's our mess and we're gonna clean this mess up no matter what gets thrown at us. Whether it's a pillager, one of them pillager dog beast thingies, or even the ender dragon. I'ma treat this place like it was my own home. Nah, I'm just playing. We didn't have any diamond nothing, all right? We weren't gonna fight these guys. So I did. After that huge trip of exploring, we then decided to go back and check on our tadpoles. We had to make sure they were growing up strong and healthy. You know what I mean? Day 76 to 80. After finally reaching the little den that I actually stuffed the frogs into, I noticed that they were actually all gone. Not even the little baby tadpoles were left behind. But the thing I noticed was that they actually dropped something. They dropped this, which I was very confused about because I swore the last time I was here, I left them completely healthy and fine. And all I could think about is a little someone that lived not too far from here that has a little bit of a vendetta against me. Jeffrey. It had to be him. There would have been nobody else. It couldn't have been the guy from the bastion because I teleported away from him. How would he even know where I was going? The only person that could have kept track of my movements was Jeffrey. The frogs didn't deserve this. They were living happily. Not free, but happily. Had a family going. They had so much more to live for. It was all taken from them by Jeffrey. I crafted up the remaining TNT that I needed for this mission and went straight to the mangrove woods. This is the first time I actually went into Jeffrey's house. It's a little small. I thought it would be a little bit more extravagant, at least on the inside. But I mean, hey, it still looked cool from the outside, all right? And so we began rigging the place. Luckily, Jeffrey wasn't even at home at that time. He was probably in some mining trip. Gives us the perfect chance to strike. He ain't even gonna know what hit him. And there goes his house. We fled with the elytra. We left the scene of crime. Never to be seen again. I'm kidding. We came back to burn some of the stuff because we there were some leftovers. You gotta conceal the evidence. That's how it works with this business. After the whole situation with Jeffrey was finally done, we then went on another bit of a voyage. Now this one was a little bit more difficult because we had to find the warden. Now the thing is, I went cave to cave but I couldn't find anything. It was just like all these green biomes and like these weird cave structures. To be fair, in comparison to old Minecraft, this is a lot better and it's a lot better than the old cave generation. But we actually ended up finding something a little bit better than the warden spawn itself. We found ourselves an ancient city. Now, for those that don't know, this ancient city is actually one of the new structures that came out in 1.9. It's got its own separate set of loot and it's actually the perfect place to find warden spawners multiple warden spawners Which is the part I'm a little bit worried about because you know Your boy's not trying to fight more than one warden because this thing's hard enough as it is But it was finally time for us to face the warden head-on. All right 
no more holding back we're fighting this dude till the end we started mining a little bit to search for this beast and after finding the spawner we got really spooked out by it to be honest it's really dark down there not to mention the effect you get from even making noise there is crazy funny enough i actually didn't know how to spawn it so i spawned it in by accident but i could definitely tell i spawned it in because of all the sound effects that i was hearing left and right there is no doubt about that the one thing i didn't realize about this thing is that it had a sonic screech and the screech went through walls like what am i supposed to even do about that i played on the defensive and anytime it hit me it would bring me down so low that i have to run away and heal up again this was the unfortunate loop that i had to go in and i had to sneak back towards him eventually he managed to fall into a little bit of a pit and i trapped him around dirt and when i got the chance i then started hitting him with my sword and after so much food was wasted and so much damage was taken we finally slayed the warden and he dropped this weird sensor thing i don't really know what it is but hey it looks cool and it isn't one of the other stuff that's around there and i actually decided to explore a little bit because i saw some chests the chests were okay it had some unique items in there though and then i may or may not have accidentally spawned in another warden because you know apparently sound wakes them up and i ran for my life days 80 to 90. now one thing that i completely forgot to do is actually make a base i usually do this in all of my 100 day videos and this time around i think i'm gonna make one in the mangrove biome now i know what you're thinking it's not gonna be in the same mangrove biome as the one we just blew up and burnt down it's gonna be in a different one completely far away from the old base we're not taking no chances out here there was also an extra tax on hand that i actually wanted to complete and that was the guardian fight to simply put it it's a lot more accessible since we only have 20 days left of this challenge in the first place because it's either that or the wither and i'm not trying to test my luck with no wither skeletons for those that don't know wither skeletons do not drop wither skulls well they do but it's like a really rare chance so i'm not risking that so the house of ours will actually need two extensions one a place for all the gathered frogs to actually live in in harmony and peace no frog killers allowed and the second is actually keeping our allies in a prison i mean a house of their own they're free i, I swear so we set off to actually locate a mangrove biome now the first one we found was actually right next to a jungle so i went searching for a jungle as well boom and i found a jungle but i don't know if there's an actual mangrove biome next to it so we explored the jungle for quite a bit this one was actually pretty vast but after so much walking we finally found ourselves a mangrove biome there it is and this one's a lot bigger than the last one we were at this is me gathering a bunch of frogs and tying them to leads this is definitely the safest way to actually capture these amphibians at least in minecraft okay now the one thing i was actually confused about was where to actually place my house because i had to build it in a pretty interesting area at first i was thinking i'd build it underneath a tree because that would look kind of cool right but then i thought hey i could probably just grow one in between this cool looking river and make the branches you know touch each side of the river and make the house on there so that's what i tried doing i tried my best to plant this thing but after so much time nothing happened it just didn't grow i haven't bone mealed a bit and there's been no progress so i gave up on that instead i decided to choose something that was a little bit closer to some sort of a little bit of a hill that way we can actually mine into the wall and make room for everything and yes yes don't worry this house is also underneath the tree the new mangrove biome also comes with this thing called redwood at least that's what i remember what it was called and we started building the walls out of it then i started digging into the hill as i mentioned before i made an area for the frogs on the left and as you can see on the right i made a beautiful area for the allies doesn't this just look like the coziest home ever be honest with me don't sugarcoat it like look at all these happy frogs living about here it's a wonderful sight i also realized i'm still stuck with iron armor i kind of want a diamond armor before the end of this video so that's what i'm gonna do i went mining on a bit of a mining trip down and below now these areas were very interesting looking like i didn't even know what to even think about this place but one thing that we did find was we managed to find a yellow axolotl look at how cute he is I'm gonna name him Warble. Yeah, that's a fine name. He'll be joining us on our adventure. In a bucket, though. He's not gonna be really walking around with us because there's no actual way to bring an axolotl with you. What a shame, Mojang. That would have been a pretty cool feature. I'm just saying. But besides that, we carried on. We also needed some obsidian. This was so we could enchant a lot of our stuff, such as tools and armor, just so we could prepare for the Guardian fight. I enchanted my iron stuff, but as you can see, we got some trash enchantments. I don't know why I thought this was gonna be a good idea, because I wasted levels. But whatever. Instead, what I ended up doing is creating some diamond armor and then enchanting that too. Now, I know the enchantments aren't the best, but I was kind of lazy to get the bookshelves. Luckily for us, the fortune pickaxe that we found from the Bastion actually helped a lot when gathering these diamonds. And this is the cute little home I gave Wurble. What do you guys think? You guys like it? I mess with it. You know, Wurble's a little shy. That's why he's not looking at you guys. But it's okay. He loves y'all. Another thing we actually needed was some golden apples. So I went ahead and gathered some apples and the remaining gold that we could even find. On the bright side, though, with this new cave generation, gold wasn't that difficult to find at all days 91 to 100 our main goal was to set out and actually locate the guardian elder guardian my bad the guardian 
Korean are like the lackeys. And I'm gonna tell you guys now, this was not an easy feat, okay? We got ourselves a bow, and there was a chest on the back, and we started mowing. A uh, rowing, I meant rowing. And we went biome after biome after biome. At least eventually we found ourselves an ocean. That's one of the only good things that came out of all this exploring. And after so long, we finally found ourselves a guardian temple. I just searched it up. This thing's called a monument. I forgot. But listen up, okay? We made a little bit of a base at the top of it. We also got mining fatigue, which meant we can't break blocks as fast. Really annoying stuff, especially when you're trying to break into somewhere. But listen, okay? There are three elder guardians that we have to take down to cancel the effect and basically conquer the place. Mark my words, this place is gonna be mine. Now, we actually had a little bit of a trick up our sleeve. So for you guys that don't know, if you place a door in Minecraft underwater, it actually creates an air pocket for you to breathe in. So long, scuba gear, we don't need you. So we did a bit of exploring and we finally found ourselves the first elder guardian. This guy was at the very top of the monument in the first place. My first method was actually trying to hit it, but you know, getting close, I kind of got zapped by him. So we ended up switching tactics to my crossbow. This honestly worked for a while, but as you can see, I almost died, but then I healed up, so it's all good. Now, if you thought that was bad, I went in for some sword hits and it brought me down to half health. This maniac of a boss, bro. And it's not only him I have to fend off. I also have to fend off the lackeys. I just didn't want to deal with them. I just wanted to kill the elder guardian and dip. Honestly, I think I'm taking this stuff way too lightly. And after all this hitting him with the sword and shooting him down with the crossbow, I finally got the last hit on him. Interestingly enough, he dropped a sponge and this weird shard looking thing. I think it's what these walls are made out of in the first place. The second one was a bit difficult because it genuinely took a lot of time to find and I was quickly running out of doors like it was nothing. Y'all saw how many of those I made in the beginning? I didn't even think I could run out of this stuff. Right, so I thought this was gonna be just like the first boss, but one thing was kind of different with this one. At first, you know, I got a couple crossbow shots in, but after a while, the shots started deflecting. So we had to switch up our tactic. And the tactic I decided to use was actually ring around the Rosie. Literally, I just went around this like weird large pole looking thing. And I kept shooting him the first chance I got, then dip. And guess what? It worked for all y'all that didn't believe in me. I got this stuff in the bag. And finally, I got myself the final hit. The biggest issue here is I ran out of doors. So I couldn't actually explore the rest of the place. So we had to take a bit of a detour from the trip. There's only one elder guardian left, so we just needed to get a couple of doors and get back here. Another issue that kind of crept up on me and I didn't realize was we were running out of bread. That stuff was burning up like it was nothing. It's because of all these guardian hits. I kept having to eat. I found an island nearby and I found a bunch of a wood so i started mining into that you might have also noticed i have 64 wood in my inventory i actually didn't want to use that because i wanted to keep some emergency like what if i gotta make a crafting table or something you know what i mean then i killed a bunch of cows got the shmeat but yeah it just turns out the village loot wasn't actually enough to keep us throughout the whole entire challenge i mean are we really that surprised 100 days is a long time afterwards i then found this little beach to sit by and i started smelting up some of the nice food we got yeah, I cooked it with wood. I wish I could cook like this in real life, to be honest. Also, don't mind the skin change. I swap between the two all the time. Me and this turtle were just chilling as the food smelted into munchies for us. We had one more elder guardian to slay, and we're done with the challenge. And finally, we headed back to the monument to kill the last elder guardian. Now, I can't lie to you, this guy, I swear he got lost. Like, he's not even supposed to be here, but he ended up here somehow. So I started fighting him in this huge room. The amount of lackeys that he had just roaming around shooting me as well was really annoying, by the way. I, I, I couldn't even make this stuff up, even if I wanted to. But it's okay, we got this. We got the last hit on him, and he was dead. That's it. We beat him. The deep ocean, filled with tons of underwater biomes that are unforgiving. Creatures like sharks and poisonous jellyfish. And honestly, so much more that's beyond what meets the naked eye. Beneath these terrifying waters, which is roughly around 33 hours worth of footage. This video wasn't the easiest to record, so if you guys could smack that subscribe button, it didn't mean the world to me. Day 1. I start off in this capsule looking thing that's a little bit above the water. The thing is, I decided to take everything from it, because after I enter the water, there's no coming back up. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Crafting table, the bookshelves, the containers, the literal thing that gives us oxygen, I took it all. I'm serious. My first two reactions was one, to make a pickaxe, obviously to collect some resources, and two, to make doors. Now if you guys didn't know, if you place a door underwater, it actually doesn't fill up the area within the door, so that was my main form of breathing underneath the water for the time being. As unsettling as it may be, my first interaction with the wildlife was actually a creeper fish. Yeah, those exist. Instead of creepers that are on land, they're little fish that explode and do just as much damage. But on the bright side, their damage radius is a lot lower than a normal creeper, so that was kind of a win. 
On the first initial day, I didn't actually do very much of anything besides look around and like get to know my surroundings a bit. There were a bunch of fish and we did in fact somewhat encounter a shark. Luckily, it didn't see us. We quickly swam away and found this little structure. After finding the structure, I decided to go into it and I wanted to make it into my base because it was already somewhat built and it would be much easier if we just used that as a basis. I came to the realization that not much progress is going to be done if I stay within the water zone, aka traveling with doors. I need to figure something out. So what I decided to do was actually start mining downwards into a little bit of a cave house of mine. So that's exactly what we began setting up. Just a bit of a heads up, if the screen or just like my environment ever gets blurry, just know it gets blurry every time it rains or there's a thunderstorm going on. It's just a bit of an indication and the ocean gets a little harder to actually survive in when that does happen. So just keep that in mind. Days 2 to 5. Within this duration of time, I finished up making the little cave shelter of ours. I also quickly realized, how the heck am I going to get sheep? Like, think about it. Sheep don't spawn underwater. So how in the world am I going to get... I don't know. I didn't really look into it that much, or if it's even possible to somewhat beat it underwater with certain crucial aspects of the game. But we were going to give it a chance. Luckily for us, I quickly caught on to two very important things. One, we actually started off with a canister of air from the shuttle. So we actually had some form of air. And luckily for us, we also looted that shuttle. So we got the very thing that replenishes the oxygen within the oxygen filter. And the second most valuable thing is the fact that I was freezing to death. That happens, especially underneath the water because it's freezing cold down there. The deeper you go, the colder it gets. That's basically the concept. You can see when I'm freezing in the top right corner of my screen, it just doesn't tell you what kind of amplitude it is because there's multiple stages and one that just doesn't leave. That was a problem we had to look into, but for the time being, it was a very mild cold. Nothing really happened besides the fact that I could see my breath time to time. During this time, I also decided to move around a little bit and find some stuff, aka rocks, shells, etc. You know, the stuff that you find on the ocean floor. So I just decided to look around for some. I found this material called salt. I wasn't entirely sure what it was for, so I just completely ignored it. After looking into some of the recipes, I then come to the realization that we need this very specific material to make these things called heating pads. Now here's why it's important. The heating pads actually heat us down when we're freezing to death. So these were a very crucial aspect and I wanted a whole bunch of it. So I went hunting for them. Days 5 to 10. After our scavenger hunt for the most lime I can possibly get, I didn't even get that many, I could barely reach even a stack because they were a little tricky to find. But it's alright, I looted most of it and we should be good to go. I came back into the little base that we had within the cave shelter and I got to work. I created a shovel then started digging up some dirt. The reason for that is because I wanted to plant the tree. Not only would it give us apples, but it would also give us wood, which is a really useful material just in general. I also may or may not know any other way of getting wood, so this was our only hope. Hopefully that grows up. I tried using a little bit of my bone meal, but it didn't actually work, so whatever, we'll move on. But I did take the matter very seriously. I then went on to searching for some wood because there were some nearby trees, I just didn't know what type of trees they were. So I went right up to it up close and personal and decided to smack it with an axe. We did in fact get the logs, but the logs didn't decraft into planks. I didn't actually know what they did. I tried using just enough items, but it just didn't tell me anything. What a lame block. Once we're back at our base, I soon realized that there's a bit of a progression system within the game that's also known as advancements. The thing is, there are stat points that you put into certain different things. There's chemistry, biology, physics, and occult. Yeah, they're a little strange, but hear me out. Basically, if you wanted something, you'd have to get the certain amount of stat points within your overall character to unlock them. That way you unlock the recipe and you're then able to progress further into the game by crafting different things. On that page, there were a bunch of cool looking stuff, but I did not care. I need to figure out how to make that heating pad and fast. Days 10 to 20. I didn't have enough points, so we needed to do a bit of exploring. I then decided to go mining because we needed more iron anyways. I didn't want to expend it all on heating pads. I went on for a bit and didn't find much. Then I decided to take a different direction and eventually I hit a bit of an underwater cave. The interesting thing about this was it wasn't any normal underwater cave. It was one of those magma ravines? It was definitely the first time I've ever seen one of these, especially a water cave that deep into the mines. We were at Y equals 11. I wouldn't be surprised if we found diamonds there. Sadly, we weren't as fortunate. What made things a hundred times worse was the fact that I was freezing to death 
Not to mention, there was pressure. The effect is known as overpressure. Not entirely sure what it exactly does besides kind of like suffocate us in a sense, but it was definitely an issue and we were definitely taking damage from it. I decided to risk it all because I wanted to know one very important thing. Was there or was there not lava underneath that sheet of obsidian and magma blocks? And that's exactly what I risked my life to find out. The reason as to why this is so important is because I had a bit of a plan in mind, but it required the nether. And in all honesty, it somewhat did work out and somewhat didn't, but you, you'll get to see that if you watch till the end of the video. After a bunch of mining, a bunch of freezing to death, getting pressure over our heads, and eating a bunch of food so we don't die, we cracked into some lava. This was perfect. All I needed to do was then get buckets. So I quickly ran back up because I kind of ran out of food. So that was a bit of an issue. I needed to heal myself off of my frostbite and my pressure. Luckily for us, we actually had some heating pads to start out with from the beginner shuttle. Uh, let's just say we had to cling on to a little bit of our life here. But it was fine, nothing happened, we're good. Both of the effects were gone and we're completely fine. Luckily we got back up in time and there was, you know, we were, we were good, we were good. I needed to regenerate my hearts because if I even went up there or back into the mines with no health whatsoever, the series would have ended. And I didn't want that, so I started eating rotten flesh. I don't regret it. We gotta do what we gotta do. The reason I was regenerating health is because I wanted to go back into the water and get some cod. Interesting. There's no fish, I guess. That's exactly what I did. I got the cod, came back, smelted it up along with the iron. After smelting a bunch of the iron, I then made a quick armor set of full iron armor. This is crucial because there were a bunch of mobs out there, and I didn't want to die from some jellyfish. Using the leftover iron, I decided to make a bunch of buckets. 12 to be exact because that's how many lava buckets we needed for the nether portal and decided to make the journey back down. But right before we left, I also predicted that we were going to freeze again and I wanted to make sure that doesn't happen. So I decided to invest some points into the heating pad, made myself as many heating pads as I possibly could with the amount of lime that we collected in the beginning and then we went down. Days 20 to 25. This is where things got a little bit interesting because we started making some progression. We were on our way down, but we had 43, exactly, on the dot, 43 heating pads. We were not going to freeze, and I made sure of that. Notice how I say that with full confidence, but I end up freezing anyways. Regardless of the matter and whatever happened down there, we had food so we can regenerate, and we got the 12 lava buckets that we needed. We quickly scurried back up, but then I noticed that the effects didn't disappear. I still had them up here. Maybe it's a glitch or something because I wasn't exactly dying from it, but it wasn't really the most pleasant thing to see on the top right corner of my screen. On the bright side of things, my tree actually grew. So we got some wood. We unfortunately didn't get any apples, but that was completely fine. Wood was the backbone of nearly everything that I can ever wish to craft or gain materials to craft other stuff with. So I was completely fine with that. No issues here. I collect the goodies from the tree right after I decide to start working on the portal. It's a very simplistic thing. Obviously, there's a lot more efficient ways of doing it and I know that for a fact. This is just how I do it, so don't judge me on it. I do have to say though, on my journey to getting a flint and steel, but flint in specific, the gravel was being really moody. I, I actually really disliked that. I broke that piece of gravel so many times, it was annoying. But eventually I did manage to get it and I lit up the portal. Days 25 to 35. If you've ever watched any of my previous 100 day videos, you'll know that my luck isn't really the best. And this video was no exception. I entered the nether, soon to realize that I messed up. My plan was to get food from Hoglands. But this mod is a 1.14.4 mod. If you guys are still confused, there's no Hoglands. Hoglands never existed during this version of Minecraft. That's only 1.16. This version of Minecraft didn't have hoglins, didn't have piglins, I couldn't trade. I had to play this old school and I was not prepared for it. I was not looking forward to this journey. This was completely different from what I had envisioned into my mind. I just wanted to get some gold from a bastion, trade it with some piglins, then find one of those blue mushroom biome things and, you know, get it over with. But this was just not expected. To be completely blunt with you guys, no progress was made in this portion. I wish there was some sort of highlight for this bit, but there really isn't. I just ran around looking for another castle and I didn't have much luck really. It was kind of annoying. Did I mention I also spent a lot of time looking for gold in the nether? Like the netherrack gold mixture thingies that you get in 1.16? Yeah, those didn't exist, but I, I didn't realize. Days 35 to 40. 
we managed to find the nether castle. Yes, I know it's called a fortress. I just like calling it a nether castle. All right, just putting that out there. Honestly, this journey could have taken a lot less time if it wasn't for me being careful. I didn't want to die. I did, in fact, manage to find a bit of endermen, but I didn't really get anything from them. Kind of a bummer. Oh, well, though, we made it, all right? That's what matters. We made it. So I quickly went inside the fortress and I started looking around the place. Had a bit of a warm welcome from wither skeletons and some magma cubes. The thing is, I actually didn't find any bit of a blaze spawner, which was a little weird. But then again, this nether castle was a little weird in general, so I couldn't exactly blame it. A lot of the pieces were blocked off by natural terrain, which was a bit of an issue. Luckily for us, the chances of blazes spawning just randomly within the middle of the castle was high, especially in this older version of Minecraft. So we were good. At the end of the day, my main focus was still to find a blaze spawner, so even if I did find one or two, I'd kill it, maybe get like one or two, but I'd still end up trying to look for the blaze spawner, and I didn't have any luck. I practically explored the entire nether castle at this point, and I didn't really know what to do, but I decided to turn back and noticed that the spawn rates for the blazes are substantially higher, and I utilized that heavily. Days 41 to 50. After getting our hands on more than enough blaze rods, we then decided to just leave. We didn't like the nether castle. On the way there, we did find some endermen, but they didn't actually drop anything. Eventually, we started walking around a whole bunch. I was not going to the overworld looking for endermen. That was just not happening, so I looked around in the nether. We didn't find that many, but every once in a while, I'd definitely encounter one. I'd trap them in a boat and completely smack them. As usual, my chances are complete garbage. I barely got any ender pearls, so I had to kill so many endermen before I even got a substantial amount. Like, bro, Dream, how you doing this stuff? You be speedrunning and RNGing like it's child's play. Like, what is this? But when I try, I get like glowstone in the chest. On a lucky day, mind you. On a freaking lucky day. Which was kind of why it took such a long duration. Kind of annoying, but it was just part of the process, and I'm kind of used to it by now. One enderman, two enderman, three ender- You get the point. You, you guys get the point. Eventually, I do manage to get exactly 12 ender pearls. I didn't have the patience to get any more despite us having 15 blaze rods. So just stick with me, okay? Like, listen. You'll see why this was a big mistake on my part later on if you watch till the end. Ugh, this was such a waste of time. Anyways, we go back through the portal and get home. We had everything we needed. There was no point of being there anymore. So we dipped. Days 50 to 55. When I got back, I realized I didn't have enough food, so I decided to go out in the middle of the night, mind you, to get some food. It was a big mistake. It's very cold, not to mention, there's also everything around me that I can barely see. Barely see in the environment. If a shark decided to pull up on me, I would not even know. I started taking a bunch of damage, which I actually couldn't take because I didn't have any food, so I quickly scurried back after I realized how big of a mistake this was. And I just sat there looking at stat points and crafting recipes. There was nothing I can do. I was quite literally stuck in that area until it was daytime. I didn't have a bed. There was no sheep down here. What else do you want me to do? Once it was daytime again, I then decided to go out into the water. At this point, we really didn't have a lot of health that we were working with, as you can see. So, we had to be a little bit careful. I did in fact find some ruins which were kind of interesting. Within the ruins, I found a bit of a chest that had bread in it, which was a lifesaver. Well, it actually had wheat in it, but we crafted the bread with the wheat. So technically it had bread in it. The only thing I was worried about is the fact that I came home with half a heart remaining. The series could have ended. After all of that nether grinding, the series could have literally just flopped dead. So that was risky. I didn't want to do that again. I ate the rotten flesh that I had in my inventory. Then shortly after, I decided to eat the bread to get the most amount of hearts that I possibly can back. Hey, look at me being big brain, huh? Then I realized because I wasn't at full health and I didn't know if I wanted to go back up there with everything trying to kill me. So what I thought about was, hey, this is an older version of Minecraft. Didn't at one point, piglins used to drop raw pork chops? So I decided to test that theory out. I went back into the nether, angered a bunch of pigmens, not a good idea, and decided to kill a whole bunch of them. What I ended up getting is a bunch of golden swords and rotten flesh. So at the end of the day, I did somewhat benefit off of it because rotten flesh did in fact heal my health up. Though it's not a very healthy choice and my hunger bar yeah, no, I didn't really like it that much. After I got back from that trip, I decided to make another oxygen tank because I was looking into the double oxygen tank. I didn't take into consideration how many physics points I needed, so I wasn't exactly able to craft one right off the bat, but it was definitely in my mind and I was working on getting not only the materials for it, but also the points for it. What you guys probably don't know is the way that you summon the final boss is that you have to collect the materials to craft it. After you craft it and right-click it on the sea, 
it'll then spawn in the boss. That's how it works. Surprisingly, crafting the material isn't actually that hard. It's just a bunch of rotten flesh and gold. Super simple crafting recipe. I'm not sure why it's so simple, but that was one of the goals. I made mine early so I don't end up using those materials for something really dumb. I also needed to make a base. That was one of the goals of this challenge in general, and I was going to get that done. I was also not going to cheapskate it with the base that I currently had. I wanted to build a full on base, and we still had plenty of time, so what was the rush, right? So I decided to look around and looted a whole bunch of them. That's where I got the materials such as the build only iron slabs and the build only iron blocks. That was really beneficial, especially towards what the final product looked like. In this duration of time, I also decided to get a bunch of glass by mining a bunch of sand. That was also something else I did. This is somewhat of the result slash progress that I've made on it so far. It's looking pretty nice in my opinion. This is in fact just the main room. I was definitely going to extend it further than this. Days 55 to 65. I was definitely feeling like I was slacking off a bit. So I decided to go back into mining. I need to get some diamonds and that was a main priority because I probably wouldn't even be able to kill the ender dragon, let alone the underwater boss. I probably could have, but I don't have that kind of dream level skills. So I had to work something out and that I did. I spent quite some time in the mines. I found plenty of lapis, plenty of redstone. I didn't actually mine up these two because I didn't think they were that crucial. I mined a little bit of redstone. I left some of the lapis near the beginning of the cave because I knew I would have found it eventually and I just started strip mining at y equals 11 and just kept going with it honestly. I know that there are better methods on finding diamonds but listen okay this is just the one I'm comfortable with. During this process I also go back to that one underwater cave that we found that we got the initial obsidian from for our nether portal and decide to get two more obsidian from there after making a diamond pickaxe with the first run for diamonds. This is because I wanted to make a bit of an enchantment table. I wanted to enchant some of the gear that I had to improve my chances of survival. Where was I going to get a book you might ask? Well, say no more. I basically got or stole a bunch of books from the shuttle that we were spawned into. I don't know if you guys remember that, but I basically looted the entire thing. So bookshelves included, we got a bunch of books and we used that to make ourselves an enchantment room. It was very scuffed and I forgot to place the bookshelves before enchanting. Yeah, I'm not the best at this. Day 65 to 75. The reason why the intervals got a little longer is because in these periods of times, there was less happening within a lengthened period of time. This was when I dedicated a bunch of time into enchanting my stuff with Protection 1, which isn't that bad seeing as we didn't have that many books to begin with so we couldn't really filter them out. Not to mention, we were on a time limit and I didn't want to waste too much time on that, but I did end up using those iron blocks that we stole from the other places. Luckily for us, we actually had a pretty good amount and that meant base extensions. So that's exactly what we did. We extended the base and made it bigger, better, and just overall nicer looking. With the power of my creativity, I also wanted to make a bit of a glass tunnel. Now, glass tunnels under the water look amazing. Added onto shaders, added onto all these sea creatures, I thought it would look really nice, so I decided to do that. Day 75 to 80. A bit of an update on the environment. Instead of freezing me to death, they wanted to burn me to death. They switched up, big time, and I didn't actually know this was a feature until it was a little too late. <laughs> It's fine though, if you guys didn't know, Diamond Armor actually has the most fluctuating defense system for freezing to death and burning to death. So, I think in our case, we didn't have anything to worry about, so I just commenced building. There was a bunch of glass that was needed and obviously I already smelted it up, so we were just placing the glass and making the place look really nice. Days 80 to 85, this is what it turned out to be like. It's honestly a really pretty sight. I really enjoyed it and I really liked it. Personally, it's one of my favorite underwater bases I've ever made just in general and I haven't even made that many so keep that in mind. Oh and by the way, I also found out that with kelp, when you break a strand of kelp, there's a chance that you get the biomass that we were looking for. That biomass, put two of them together in the crafting table and you get yourself some string. Get four string and you get yourself some wool. So that's actually how I made my bed. In this duration, I also managed to get enough physics points to craft us a double oxygen tank. So. Instead of 250 oxygen, we had 500 oxygen. I was feeling pretty confident in the water starting from this. Days 85 to 90. Do you guys remember those flash floods that I mentioned in the intro? Yeah, that kind of happened to me. They work in the sense that anything below the bottom of the sea level of the place that you're at gets entirely flooded and there's a bit of an 80% chance of a shark attack. We got two sharks. I don't even know the percent chance of that. At least the main facility was fine, but everything underneath it, the cave, the mines, the enchantment table, the storage units down there, they were all taken away from us. 
it was all gone. I didn't want any of my limbs gone, and honestly, I was not gonna go down there and risk my life over sharks, okay? I was not gonna do that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it did kind of suck. It was a bit of a detriment to us, but luckily we had most of the important stuff. The Eye of Enders, and we got ourselves the boss spawn egg, so we weren't that far behind. It's just, I do wish we could bring back a little bit more stuff from the storage containers below, but it shouldn't be that big of a detriment. Right after, I build up the courage to finally go outside, set up a little area for ourselves, and finally attempt killing the boss. I was confident. I had diamond armor. It was enchanted. I had an enchanted axe. I had a shield. What more could I ask for? And the boss was spawned. There we go. The fight has commenced. The thing is, it's not actually the boss that you should be worried about, but much rather it's Lackey. They are the king of drown, so relentlessly they shoot puppets at you, aka rounds. I'm not sure if they actually have a buff, but they did definitely hit hard. Not to mention, they were in hordes. I also got this potion effect called Underwater. I had no idea what it did, and still don't to this day. I have no idea. I did feel a little slower though during this fight. I tried attacking it, and at first I didn't think I did any parts of damage, just in general. I felt like I wasn't doing anything to it, but that's because I really wasn't. The thing is, you have to kill its lackeys before it becomes a vulnerable target. Prior to it being a vulnerable target, it's immortal. It could literally just go on for ages, not dying whatsoever. After figuring out the system of how it works, I decide to get a little bit more confident. I decide to push myself over at the drowns and completely annihilate them. I tested out my theory and it was true. I decided to start hitting it and it definitely took a bunch of damage. But, it started to get its armor back after summoning more puppets. A couple rounds in, and I actually get taken to a very low amount of health. They started to overwhelm me and I decided to move back a little bit because it was very, very hard to keep track of. And we got him! That's one of the bosses down. All that's left is the Ender Dragon and we're done. It did have a drop and it gave us a Wither Flower. Not a Wither Rose, a Wither Flower. I had no clue what this did. It wasn't a recipe for anything, it also had no use, it was just there. It had a little bit of a description, but I didn't really understand what it meant, so at the end of the day it was useless. There was no way around that. It was just the reality of things. But listen, okay, it was a bit of a souvenir, so I'll take it as that, I'll take it as that. Days 90 to 95. Moving on past this, just like any other world, I threw that ender pearl, followed it into the deep depths of the sea. This led me to a couple of biomes, but one that I wanted to actually point out and it's a bit of a highlighted moment for me, is a little bit of the thing that I like to call the dead zone. Everything down there is pitch black. It's even darker than usual. There's no saturation anywhere. When you look around, it's just all pitch black. But the thing that scared me the most was the skeletons down there. Yes, you've heard of drowns. You know, they're drowned zombies. But did you ever hear of drowned skeletons? Yeah, no, me neither. Me neither. Honestly, I was not expecting this. But from what it seems like, it seemed to be contaminated skeletons, because that was also what was going around with the coral reef below me. Everything was contaminated. Everything looked dead. There was no life within this biome. And what made it even worse is the fact that when the skeletons hit you, you get withered. Withered? Why? Like, what for? There was no need for that. Very unnecessary. But once I found that out, I decided to just dip. Like, I was not being there. You know, I was really close to dying there, and I... No, not happening. You know, so I was doing my little dash, I was running away from them, when suddenly I then realized I ran out of air. I checked my inventory, no doors. No nothing, just pitch black. Once I start losing health, I then quickly decide to start mining downwards. After I mine downwards a bit, then I go in one direction, and completely just save my life. Half a heart. That's, that's how much I was at, because like, I couldn't breathe. You know, we're underwater, so... Half a heart is what I was left with within that little tiny crevice. I was just stuck there. After calming down a bit, I then place my oxygen refiller. I place it down, wait for it to regenerate, and use that to get brand new oxygen. That way we were actually able to move again. I probably should have foresaw this. I have a bar. There is an oxygen bar. I guess I just forgot to look over there. I wasn't expecting this to be such a detriment to my food. Now that's something I wasn't actually very keen of, so you guys should pay attention to that because it's something important that I kind of undermined for the last task of ours. Big loss, big loss, but it's okay, it's okay, you know, we're still moving forward, we got this. Eventually the ender pearl decide to go downwards. This is actually in one of those obsidian and magma areas, 
it was kind of interesting i didn't really mind it too much i was just praying that there wasn't any lava underneath so that was my only fear with digging straight down but at the end of the day i decided to take the chance you know there was water above me what's the worst that can happen lo and behold we were in it did take a little bit of a while but when i looked around like when i say this place is astonishing i mean it like this place actually looks sick i was expecting some basic normal minecraft stronghold but what i found was a lot better than what i expected <coughs> minecraft you should take some tips i decided to use those fibers i mentioned before to make some string that way i can get a bow even though i had four arrows those four arrows could potentially get me four of the towers so i was willing to make that trade I double checked right before to see if I was missing anything. I also had three water buckets just in case we lost anything. I threw out a bunch of garbage and I was finally ready. Days 95 to 100. This is it. This is the final straw. This is what we've been waiting for. And without hesitation, I jumped straight into it. And the fight began. I quickly started using my blocks to get up to the towers, you know, as anyone would, and started taking out some of the, some of the crystals. What I did notice though, out of nowhere, I started getting withered. Now I didn't really know what it was correlated with at first, but then later on I found out that the dragon breath from the dragon gives you wither. Why? Okay, now hear me out. Honestly, it's either one of two things, which I didn't actually verify. Either one, this mod made it so that the dragon breath gives you wither, or two, that's just how Minecraft 1.14 is. So I was honestly confused regardless of what choice it was. Normally going into the nether for a speedrun, it requires quite a bit of food, and I didn't have that much. I roughly had less than 16, so I wasn't doing good in the food department at all. And adding the wither onto that? I'd basically have to eat my way to live. That's exactly what I did. My food deplenished twice as fast as it normally would have, making this that much harder. After realizing where it derived from, I tried my very best avoiding it, though I couldn't avoid it at all costs. The further it was from me, and the less of it I took in, the less wither I got. That's something that I actually did pick up on. I also noticed there was a bit of a structure, but it looked kind of dematerialized. It looked like a little bit of a bridge, and it was kind of cool. But that's actually a little bit important later on. Even the end pillars looked a little different. There was lava oozing out of some of them, and even this like strange ore that I didn't get to mine. Which kind of sucked, because I was more focused on the ender dragon. Eventually, I ran out of food. I first saw this, I honestly did. After I saw that it withered me, and it can wither me like constantly, I realized that I did not have enough food for this. This was a problem. I quickly looked into my inventory and tried to eat kelp just stale for some reason. Bit of an L there, but listen up, okay? I soon realized that I had to smelt it, so I placed down some furnaces, started smelting that stuff, but also realized that kelp is almost as useless as berries, and its saturation is complete garbage. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, fun. Now you might be wondering, where did you get the fuel from? Well, you see, we had some leftover wood. What's even worse is we didn't have enough wood to smelt all of them. So what I had to do was, on the bridge thing, right? There was a piece that fell off of it that was on the floor. So we went over there, looted the wood from there, and used that to smelt the kelp. <laughs> I don't know how it came to be, but this is the reality, and we had to work with what we had, okay? Somehow, we managed to somewhat pull through and, you know, kept regenerating health with a very, very, very low amount of kelp that we did have. Luckily for us, I did know where it derived from, so I decided to take less and less of it each time, which was really good on our part. After getting all the crystals, I then decided to head over to the middle and start attacking it. The issue was, every single time that the dragon would get up or either hit me, fling me into the air and I water bucket clutch, I get withered. Despite me having a stack of kelp, I slowly got less and less of it. Eventually, I did run out of it entirely. But luckily for me, within the duration of the time that I had the kelp for, I lowered the ender dragon so low that it was at just a sliver of health. And right there and then, that's it. That's, that's the climax. Oh my, literally no food. I wanted to also explore the, you know, extra lands beyond, but I didn't have enough time to do so, which was kind of a bummer. There was probably some cool terrain generation that I kind of wanted to check out. Assuming that it ex exists, when did the end lands come out? I don't even know. But if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys' support and don't forget to hit that like button and also hit that subscribe if you want more content like this. It'll let me know that you guys like the content. You know what I mean? 
And if you guys have any suggestions for any 100 day videos, let me know in the comment section below. What, you're, you're still here? I guess you want the technicalities of everything, huh? To put it simple, we used a mod pack for this challenge of ours. The mod pack is linked in the description. The thing is, we did in fact tweak a bunch of the features, terrain generation, and even the biome. So, pulling this off yourselves is going to be kind of hard unless you have some coding knowledge. So just keep that in mind. But with that being said, hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you on the next video. It's horrifying. Our goal for the video is to defeat all 10 bosses for every 10 days of the challenge, create a raid proof base, and kill all 10 Nagas at the very end. Will we survive till the end? Watch till the end of the video to find out. Days 1 to 10. The first boss that we'd have to fight is probably one of the easiest, and it's known as the Ferris. Are right, you ready for this, bro? I think we already got some attention below us. <laughs> is that a, a supercharged creeper? Wait, 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 wait. I got one piece. Let's go. This is really bad, dude. It's just eyeing us down. You see that leaf? They don't look friendly, bro. They kind of look like a mini uh, demon. Look at the distance. Oh my gosh, I'm on the ground. Oh my god! Anybody this stuff here! Oh my gosh. There's so many things on me right now. Going up. Going up. Running away from mobs from the get-go as well. We found ourselves a nice little wooden cottage while being chased by swamp creatures. I don't even know what else to call these things. What the f is <laughs> oh, oh my god. Then the house gets bombed and burnt down into a crisp. After a bunch of walking around, we finally found ourselves a village to seek refuge in. I'm terrified. You see the house that What's I was that just right in? There? That thing is gone. I'm going inside. The thing that chased me, it literally blew up the wall just to get entry like over to me. That was crazy. Oh my gosh, in here. there's good loot in here. Oh, I angered. I angered something. I'm going down. Or so at least we thought it was safe. There was a fairy jellyfish that I may or may not have shot at first and attracted to the base. Wait, is it floating near us? Oh, I see him. Though. Oh, yep. What is that? I don't even know. It looks like a, a jellyfish. But we ended up killing him. But then we got jumped by literally death. Dude, what is that? What the heck is that? What the f is that death itself? Dude, 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 dude. I'm almost dead. I'm almost dead. Okay, well, we didn't die, but he kind of looked like some sort of death spirit. You know what I'm talking about? And bef Akai. before we could even get comfortable with the house, the house is burning down. Oh my god, there's so many mobs at the bottom. The house ends up burning down right in front of us. We decided to make it into an operation. Dude. No way, dude. Go, go, up, go, 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 go. And we call this operation book it. Yeah, we got the heck out of there. We sprinted to another base with actually a player in it. Or so we thought. It's a bit of an NPC. There's a player in here. What the hell is this? That's what I'm saying. Ooh. It's a survivor. Iron. Survivor sells. What's this? A cursed dust. It was cursed dust. Offering us some lovely trades. And I got hella iron from this. In all honesty, I really liked the base that we ended up in. This wasn't too bad of a place to actually call a home. But the issue was it was also made out of wood. Issue is it's all wood. Dude one cinder and That's we're screwed saying. we should reinforce it completely and we'll be fine think so yeah so we had to give the house a bit of an upgrade but before that we need to get some tools of our own we got some wood got some stone made it into tools and began my journey to iron if we're gonna survive this horrifying experience we were definitely gonna need to get started as soon as possible on the bright side though the first boss isn't actually a two-part some of the boss fights are gonna be coming into two parts a main boss and a side boss both are required to be slain to keep going with this challenge if we fail to do so we basically lose the challenge so gearing up is very important did i also mentioned that there's a chance of us just getting jumped by creepy mobs within this mod pack at any moment yeah they just kind of spawn in our general location without a second to waste we then started collecting a bunch of cobblestone to then reinforce the house and when we finished this is what it looked like but the second i dropped myself down i realized how much of a big mistake this really was let's get out of here oh my god dude the inside too yes, there's some inside dude yes oh my gosh i don't know what to do i could mine down do it 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 something blew up and so many creatures came out at night note to self sleep when i can because the spawn rates at the night are ridiculous in this mod pack we waited out the night i don't even know how we survived this thing but then we found ourselves a village Honestly, I think this should last us for like 
a decent chunk of the oh my god there's a floating island right oh, ooh, 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 iron armor some bread i think we need to gear up matter of fact it's not even though we should we have to we to really even survive Jen stole its bread killed a golem and that's the iron i started out with i was considering mining but i'm sure that the spawn rates are very similar to the spawn rates at night so i didn't really know if i wanted to you know test my luck here as you know i have a history with luck you know we're not on the best of terms pitch black you're likely to be eaten what bro run 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 up run up, run up. Okay, okay, okay. You probably just alerted like some demons. <laughs> some water demons? Don't you re yeah, don't you remember what we saw earlier? Oh no bro. <laughs> like, nah, like I'm good bro. What's in here? Ooh. Uh, we just got blessed up with hella iron, bro. But we got the main things we needed. One, we needed some weapons. Two, the main part was obviously food so we can regenerate. But without a moment to waste, we were then approached by the first boss. This time around, it wasn't really spawned on top of us. We had to go to a location that one of my mods sent. I've already slain one of these guys in a previous 100 day challenge. These guys do a lot of damage, but as long as you can dodge them, it's really simple. We were full on iron stuff, shield, and a few golden apples. Then we began the heist. I think you should approach him. <laughs> Give him, just, just look up at him, you know? Him, a little closer. Dude, I'm literally I'm in his chat. There he is. Alright. There he is. And he's not looking at me. Get a smack on the butt. Take a smack on the butt. Why is he eating? Am I missing something? Oh. Oh, whoa. <gasps> my my shield's gone, my shield's gone. I'm hitting his butt. I'm hitting the sword. <laughs> It's, it's deflecting. He's so, I'm just making a beat out of his chest. All right, going back. Oh, oh. dodge that. Yep. Over here. Good dodge. Good dodge. Dodge that. Dodge yep. Okay. Oh, get ready. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Nice. That's God, how it's done. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of damage. That's how it's done. Yep. Remember, he broke my axe. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Nice. Okay. We gotta do that one more time. We gotta do that one more time. Are right, you ready, bro? Yep. All right. It's now or never. Oh my gosh. Oh, get ready. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Get him. I hit him. Oh shoot, he spammed, he's spamming his lower damage. Okay. He broke my he broke my shield. I think that's the one. Hey, we got him! Yo, yo. He's gone, bruh. We defeated him! It was so much easier with the two of us. One down, nine more bosses to go. In all honesty, it wasn't too bad, but the thing I was kind of worried about is if this was the first boss, how much worse can it really get from here on out? Days 10 to 20. We realized iron wasn't really making the cut here, so we went to go mining for diamonds. We ended up finding a few, wanted to try rushing to some totems of undying to help with the next boss fight, but we just ended up looking in the ocean biome for some buried treasure. This is a really nice dude. What if we made a house along the beach side? And get jumped by water monsters. <laughs> um, but we did end up finding this thing. Yeah, what a beauty to behold. This thing is known as an SCP laboratory. These things actually generate within the world, and there's multiple of them that we can explore that all have different frames. This includes different loot, and honestly, it's just an interesting thing to explore. Now, were we ready for this? I have no idea, but we entered regardless. All in all, we were in luck because Akai knew the crafting recipes to a lot of the key cards that we needed to even enter the facility. Are we even? Oh. oh are we sure about this? I, dude, I'm a little scared. This is kind of scary, yo. Wait, so have you explored that much inside? I have not. I found it and I automatically had to come find okay. it. Okay. Open the door for you first since it, it closes kind of quick. Here okay. you go. Whoa. Right behind you. I've never watched SCP, so I, I don't really play it. Is it a game? Level three? Okay, I do have level three. Let's go. Okay. Oh my gosh. Dude. Imagine if there's just one thing that just like insta shoots us. We're Door gonna get lost. There's so many doors. There are a lot of doors. What is that? Oh. Whoa. There's something behind there. I found a dead note. A fire SCP. sparked on the east wing, causing an explosion that released SCP-02. Blood spots. The entire area is probably contaminated by now. I locked the door with the others still inside, not taking any chances. I'm sorry. How are we doing this, dude? Are we killing it? Whoa. What dark? I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Both to it, so not every speed card does that. Ooh. Okay, I think this is where we have to slow down and really take our time. Why sure there's a the door? Work, but why can we walk right in? Oh no, it's a flickering light back there. There's chickens here as well. Hey, little buddy, are you invisible? <laughs> Wait, that means something actually escaped from here. Uh oh. Let's see. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Whoa. We got this, we got this. Hit him, hit him, hit him. He's okay, focused okay, on okay, me, okay. hit him! 
Oh, he's focused on me. Okay, yep. Just keep bouncing. Oh my god. What is that? What is this? It's a it's a Halloween tree. What? It's this trick or tree. It's okay, I got tricked! I got tricked! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Alright, alright. If you get a trick or treat, bro, it's a big fat gamble. Okay. <laughs> okay. Alright. Oh Akai, you said one. Akai, you said one. Get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Okay. 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 Okay, he's focused on me, he's focused on me. Yep, yep, yep. Shield out, shield out, shield out. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of dinosaurs that came out of there is crazy. Oh, oh. I just got diamonds. <laughs> I got better luck than you. <laughs> Come on out, buckaroos! <laughs> oh, it worked. Oh, yeah. Yep. So that's what escaped. I guess that's the SCP here. SCP-143. Alright, let's take it slow. Whoa. Oh, one on doubt. I'll break it down. Hello, is anybody here? There's more doors. Oh, there's a lot here. Yeah, wait, so it actually has signs on it. It says SCP-500 and SCP-05. Alright, you ready? Oh, I hear something. I'm gonna open this up. Is that coming from behind us? That's coming from my side, bro. Ow! That's a turret. Alright, be ready, dude. Yo, this place is so... There's so much more to it. I'm taking all this SCP Sorry, stuff. Sorry, I got it for... Oh my god, dude, help. Wait, what the heck? Dude? Oh what the hell is happening? my gosh. Dude, I'm in the Matrix right now. What type of za is this? Like, losing my mind or something, slowly. Open the door. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I, I can't see. I can't see. What's in there? There was kind of okay loot, but we did get a bit of iron. We ended up finding quite a bit of mysterious things and this really weird effect that started affecting us. But luckily, we managed to escape the area. And of course, we got jumped again by random other stuff. At this point, it shouldn't even be a surprise to you guys. But even though we didn't really get that much stuff, we weren't going to let the adventuring stop here. We then decided to escape that place and we ended up in this really nice looking biome. Not going to lie, it would be a great place to build a base. Fortunately in this mod pack, cosmetic base building is not really an option. We actually have to make a base that's foolproof of everything. And right when we got comfortable, we ended up getting a frost moss spawn on top of us. Now I was a bit worried because this guy actually does pretty decent damage. Not to mention this boss was going to be a two part boss. The first one is called a frost moss and the second one is known as a human spider. Yeah, that's one of the creatures we're working with in this mod pack. And so the fight begun when Akai decided to pick up the item from the frost mouth and he basically got really mad and this is basically how it went no mother whoa he's up <laughs> you got there buckaroo are you serious bro why is it always me there's a whole nother person here too you know why i'm a running i'm a bow i'm oh my god i'm stuck i'm stuck i'm stuck i'm stuck i'm stuck he's focused on me <laughs> Dude, watch out. There's an ice beast. Dude, run. There's an ice beast. Are those spiders? Oh, he's on me. He's on me. He's on me. Frozen. Ow. Oops. Oh, they do My bad. Damage. We just... I got one. I got one. You got one? Okay, okay. There's one on me at the moment. Okay, I got them. You got him. Yep, 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 yep. All that's left is the frost guy. Come on. He's so low, dude. Wait, let me go. Let me go in. Let me go in. Oh. Nice. Is he down? Is he down? Okay. He's gone. Okay, 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 okay pick up this stuff all in all not too horrible but we did have some close encounters and some very close calls but we ended up defeating him we also picked up this little breath thing which is kind of cool what did the spider drop i don't know i honestly don't i don't even remember but take that as a sign as it probably wasn't that useful days 20 to 30 next boss that's coming up is a bit of a clown no literally it's it's pennywise the clown from it there's a second part to this as well but that'll be left for a surprise and just for context during the challenge i didn't actually know what the bosses were until after i finished them all clearly from the gist of things everything was bumping up in the scale of difficulty so we needed to upgrade something past iron so we went diamond mining we also ended up finding ourselves a pretty cool base but i was about to show you guys the base but dude what are you for real you're joking 
Are you serious? This stupid dragon munched his way in after all of the time I spent on making this base. And I know it's not much, but listen, we're going for efficiency rather than looks. And after all of that, all it takes is one dragon to start munching on my walls like it's nothing. This dragon really thinks he's all that. Wait till I get my hands on you, buddy. I killed him, made a farm for my base. Then I made a bit of an animal pen. Ended up making a pen for actually a few animals, but we couldn't really find ourselves some cows. We were definitely going to need some. I also got jumped by one of these creatures, and then we got this really weird effect on us. Imagine getting this effect during a boss fight. That would be horrible. Hope that doesn't happen. Anyways, back to gearing up for the boss fight. Upgraded to full diamond and then diamond tools. We wanted to work on enchanting as well, so I gathered some obsidian, ventured on to gather some leather because we needed that for books so I can make bookshelves. Then it hit me. What's one of the most efficient ways to get bookshelves in Minecraft? Villages. Oh, and also a weed farm. I mean, sugarcane farm. Three. Oh my gosh. Dude, relax, buddy. Relax, bro. Who wants all the smoke? Jesus. How hell are you? Back up, buddy. Back up. Back up. Oh my god. The cows attack you? Huh? So we went to a village and pillaged it. And these are some villagers I pillaged the heck out of. Sorry, you guys. No hard feelings. I ended up enchanting most of my basic gears. And I also made myself an anvil. Ta-da! After all of that was done, we didn't really have a lot more time to actually work on this. Unfortunately, at this point, Akai had to go off for a bit. So we're going to have to do these ones solo. As you can see, the first one is Pennywise. And then the second thing that we got hit with is called a troll. Luckily, this wasn't too powerful. And we managed to kill it eventually. But things were definitely bumping up in difficulty. Or anything even beyond the diamond stuff? There had to be. Days 30 to 40. Next boss we had to face was called the Dread Beast. I'm not liking the name already. We ended up crafting ourselves this thing called a summoning staff. We also ended up finding PewDiePie. Is this PewDiePie? PewDiePie. It is. Gotta do this too. <laughs> We killed PewDiePie. I didn't, I didn't mean to. It was an accident. We also ended up making ourselves a quarry. So for those that know, know, a quarry is basically an automatic mining machine. It would then send blocks in these tubes into chests. And that's what we had. It's without the tubes because we're poor. Don't worry about it. It's all a part of the process. We're going to get to it eventually. Initially, we were just chilling at our house, right? Our own home. And there were parasites, bomber zombies, and so much more. Just look at these clips. Look, because they broke into it. What the heck? Huh? Dude, what is that? Are you serious? It's in here somewhere. They blew up my house. Oh my God. There was a spider creature. Ew, what the hell are you? Dude, what? Oh, that's so gross. It's like, it's just when you get comfortable too. They hit you with all of that, bro. Huh? No, 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 dude, it's burning. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. They could mine into the place. I'm just, I'm just not safe in here. Like what? Hello? Huh? Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. There's so much happening. Bro. Get off of me. I have a f oh, dude, what? Oh my god, I can't see, I can't see a thing. Ew, dude, what are you? Oh my god, I'm gonna, am I gonna die? Oh my god. Oh, okay, okay. Go into the nether, go into the nether. I'm out of here. Stay back, buddy. I can't even make this up, bro. But this time, I needed to work on something bigger. Bigger than just mere diamond armor. We were gonna go big, so I begun the next stage. The nether. We ventured into it. Found ourselves a nether castle. We killed some blazes. We also found ourselves a bastion, which is pretty risky of us. Or wanted to, but we realized we're on an older version of Minecraft without bastions, so there were no bastions. We just ended up finding normal blocks. I did kill some endermen in boats, though. We also found a weird nether structure looking thing in the lava. We explored it, and you could basically see how that went. It was very chaotic. Something's trying to shoot at me. It's an entrance that I saw a little lower. Oh my gosh. This dude sucks. Okay. Buddy, listen. Listen, kitty. Listen. Buddy. Okay. Come on, guys. We don't have to do it like this. Not like this, y'all. Is the loot worth it or should we just leave? Because the loot that I've found so far has been horrendous. So. Oh my god. Okay. 
He went up with me. Uh, they're, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. I don't like this version of Minecraft, dude. This is, this is terrifying. And I got attacked by giant Frankensteins. What the hell is that about? Ventured out of there, basically as soon as possible. And also made a buttload of beds. I have vendors, and then we went to head towards the stronghold to slay the dragon. But we were gonna do that until I realized that Dread Beast had already spawned near the base. I think there was around three of them, but I'm not too sure. Those are the things we need to fight next. Kind of spawn in a distance. I don't actually know how hard they hit, but I guess while they're separated... Yep, they're hostile. How much? Oh god. Oh god. They push back like really. Okay, okay, buddy. Relax, 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 relax. Come on. You have to be. Okay, you have to be careful. And that was just one of them? Dude, 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 dude. Don't spawn. Don't spawn. Don't spawn. Don't spawn. Because I think there's a swarm. Can I get some shots in? I can. Oh shoot, oh shoot. Ow, okay. Are you stuck? Oh, you're not stuck. You're not stuck. Boom. Ow. Relax. Let's lock this. Where did that come from? Are you serious? Uh, uh. Need to get rid of that. Freeze. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Dude. Okay, I slayed them, but one of them almost did kill me, so it's definitely bumping up in difficulty. Either one, we're gonna have to crazy enchant, or two, locate some netherite. There was really no way around it. Days 40 to 50. Most of this time was actually spent looking for the stronghold. We ended up- I don't know what the hell just hit me. Oh my god. What is happening? Ew. What even, dude? Locating the end portal area, destroyed the crystals. It's dying though to my laggy arrows. I wouldn't need the safety precautions if this Ender Dragon was just not freaking lagging all the time. I know. <gasps> Dead. But if I go down there, I'll die to that. <laughs> then killed off the dragon. We were searching for about a couple hours and ended up finding no end city because we wanted an elytra. Eventually, we did end up finding one, but that was exactly on day 50 and the rakes ended up spawning within the end. I didn't even know if it could do that. That was really bad for us. Even though we managed to get the elytra, I didn't really want to fly out of the place yet. I wanted to take some of the potions as well, but the rakes just kept coming. The rakes were definitely in heavy numbers and a bunch of third party things kept trying to attack me. Are you serious? They already started spawning. You need to drop off of this ship, buddy. Get out of here. Oh my god, there's so many. There's so many of them. We need to take them head on, don't we? Yup, let's go. Come on, come on. Where's the... Okay, where's the thing? Boom, boom, boom. Oh, oh god. Oh god, oh god. Mm-hmm. Up we go. Need to get rid of those guys big time. There's a couple things that I'm a little bit worried about though. That guy needs to go. Okay, one down, and then the other one, there we go. I wish I had a lava bucket right now. I could just like place them all down and it would be all good to go, you know? Ow. Dude, you for real? Get out of here. Buddy. You guys are doing damage, you guys are doing damage, huh? You guys are doing damage. What in the hell is that thing? There was just a bunch of them. But after all of that, we finally managed to kill the final Drake. There was still a bunch of third-party mobs. So then at that point, I was just like, you know what? It's not even worth the effort. Let me fly out of here. Days 50 to 60. In the second half, the bosses get really, really difficult. Not to mention, they get a little bit more intricate. And some of them can't even kill normally without some variations. The next bosses are known as the Hydra. And a little bit of a secret for the next one. But after a lot of searching, we eventually found ourselves as another end city. Because a I needed to get himself in Elytra, and we traveled back to the overworld. We ended up going back to our base, and we found a cool looking structure. Expanded the sheep farm into a mega sheep farm. I kind of forgot to put them in a fence, so they're kind of all over the place, but hey, all right? As long as it works, and we get the wool from it. That's our main objective here, because again, we need netherite. At this point, Akai was supposed to hop on and record with me, but then Akai's mom started going on about some random stuff, and he ended up hopping off again. But I was definitely going to need the help with this challenge, so we brought in the big guns, Xander. You guys might remember him from the sniffer video. So me and 
Alexander, we began our journey into netherite hunting. This is the bed method. We basically place the bed, right click it, and if there's a block in between the bed and us, we will not take any of the major damage. Because if you guys didn't know, right click a bed in the nether and you're instantly dead. But to be completely honest with you, me and Xander went on two completely different areas and we still had no luck with the netherite. Our confidence going into this was super high, but now we're just kind of sick of the nether. I'm trying to touch some grass, you feel me? I'm done with looking at all this red. Get me out of this place. Mine abandoned to this direction. Alright, let's try this one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, let's hope. Please don't hit any lava. Okay, I'm good. Wait, what the hell is this green stuff? What? No, I found some like green liquid. I don't really want to touch it. It looks like Wait, acid. What? Acid? <laughs> I don't know what this is. Look. What Wait, is what that? the hell? Don't tell me that's water. Should I jump in it? You're about to get like poison, nausea, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a sip. Give it a good sip. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. Oh my god, I have it now. <laughs> what happened? What happened? I'm nauseous and I'm, I'm poisoned. <laughs> oh, I knew it, bro. I called it. Ah, it's called it cool? toxin. Look. Ah, uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't have jumped in. <laughs> yeah. I, probably, I probably shouldn't have jumped in that, but, you know, we live and we learn. I didn't know there was other liquids in the nether, though. That's kind of cool. Uh, I mean, at first I thought it was water. I thought my like resources had glitched. Right. Oh wow. I found I found some of that green stuff too. Oh, by bedrock. Really <laughs> yeah, the green stuff. The green stuff. I still okay, haven't so found any. Ow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I walked into it. <laughs> <laughs> we have a bunch of sheep back at home, so we could probably just take trips back. Yeah. I found nothing on my side either. Once we went back to the base, I then enchanted my lovely dragon sword from the beast that broke into my home, and a boss fight begins. Yeah. Little I'm, like, I'm so that. scared. Man. This is usually where they spawn. There was like three hounds or something that spawned here. But... Over here? All I oh. see is a llama. Oh, I see, I see where they here. spawn, dude. Huh? Oh, oh, bro. Why are you on top of the base, man? <laughs> There's two of them. Oh, yeah, I, I hit it. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Bro, what is that? Is that I, poison? I don't know. I actually have Oh, wait, no it's coming idea. down. It's coming down. It worked. It worked. It's, coming. it's regening. Wait, I wonder if it's. Ow, wait. I got an effect. What is that? Poison? Is that poison? Yeah, it's, poison. it's shooting poison out there. Wait, it gained a head. <laughs> what is got four heads? Yes, what it literally the? does. What? I don't know how this works. This is known as the Hydra. We tried killing the Hydra, but he ended up gaining like 10 heads. We got third party from what I think is a level four dragon, which we had to then focus on because of that situation. We killed the dragon because it looked like it was lagging and it made the fight a lot easier. Then we searched up how to kill the Hydra and apparently it requires fire to kill it. I think lava would work. Ow, I just don't know where his hitbox is. How about that? That's good. Oh, yes, oh? yes, he's on fire. Oh? I got him stuck. Yeah. I don't think he can regenerate while on fire. Stay here with the lava. Make sure he stays in there. Oh, wait. Him. We're chopping off the heads. We're chopping off the heads. Why well, he's literally inside of me, bro. Pause, what? Oh, wait, he died. So we killed the first one. And then the second one, I realized it wasn't just the Hydras. It was also this thing called the Crux. I don't think you've ever been up here, have you? Nah, this is my first time up here. Kind of, kind of like safe because everything's down there. Like all the horrifying mobs and stuff. I, I didn't hear anything. What in the heck is happening uh -huh. down here? Bro, what are those? Um, so we got a bit of a problem. If you look underneath <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Dude, that? I hate these block breaking creatures, man. What is that? That is so ugly. Ew. Or it's killing this. No, look, it's turning the sheep into like. Oh, it's infecting them. It's infecting the sheep? Dude, oh my god, it's after me. That thing looks so gross. Oh, it's such a... Okay, we got, oh, it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. It's dead. Oh my god, thank the lord. There's, there's an infected sheep in the crowd. Oh, ew, dude. You gonna tap out a spider now? Oh god, oh god. Dude. Bro, okay. there's so many like sheep after me. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm low, this... I'm low, I'm low, I'm low. <sighs> Dude, what is after me right now? Wait, I just realized we're out in the night. That's a horrible idea. Oh yeah. Jesus. Yeah, oh my god. Oh. Let's see <laughs> Let's see Dude, the oh, hordes is crazy. Um This is bad, this is bad, I'm, this is I'm bad, good, this good, is I'm bad, good, this I'm is good. bad. This is really oh, yeah. bad. Maybe underground was best. <laughs> yeah, should we just go down? We jump in my hole, jump in my hole, jump in my hole. Where, where, where? Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I know, I know, bro. Oh, shoot. Wait, I didn't know you made it there. Get in, get in, yeah. get in, get in, get in. 
Oh my god. Okay, let's play. Let's play. This was the second part of the boss fight that we didn't really take into consideration, which ended up infecting our sheep and destroying a lot of our base. After fleeing, we are now surrounded by a bunch of these mobs underground. Things weren't looking too bright for us, I'm not gonna lie. Day 60 to 70. Next up on the list of bosses were more of the aquatic ones. There was a serpent and this thing called a devourer. I didn't really know if I wanted to see that thing. Sounds oddly concerning. Got a few more diamonds from mining to repair my armor and make sure it was on tip top condition. More golden apples were prepared for future fights. We also ended up making some of these modded items. I think this was for DNA splicing, but we ended up making a bunch of components and making them into this thing. I don't even know what this thing is for. It just looked cool and I wanted to try it. After a bunch of exploring that we did, we also found ourselves another SCP building, but this one was much farther than the first one. And we decided it was time for some exploring. Yo, Whoa, wait, it's a different wait. layout. Let me try it. Nice. Oh, whoa, okay. Are they hostile? I think they are. I, I mean, they're definitely hostile now. There's more of them. Again? More? It's a flood. That's interesting. It's a flooded um laboratory. Yeah. Hey, be friendly. Oh, bro. His eye. Look at his eyes. Ew. Oh, my. You, oh, my gosh. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get out of there, bro. Um. I'm killing. What a strange facility, from the things that don't even attack us and give us slowness to the flamingos with like horrifying looking eyes. These places are really living up to the name of the mod pack, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. So the boss begins, but obviously they're more aquatic, so they wouldn't really be on land. We went to the nearest body of water that wasn't the one around our base, but it was on the river next to our base. We managed to find ourselves the serpent. It actually leaps at us and breaks one of my shields, but Xander gets the last hit on it. Then as if things couldn't get any worse, mid-fight we started getting attacked by spider parasites from what I like to believe is called a hive from the seams of it because they seem to be coming out of the ground. We wanted to get rid of the event because honestly it was a little bit close to us. A very concerning distance away from our base. So we got rid of them. And after dealing with the problem at hand we began to fight the primitive devourer. Although this primitive devourer cannot leave the water. So I sent Xander in and he basically got attacked with speed and almost died because of my testing. Whoops. And then both of the bosses were slain. Day 70 to 80. Now one thing Xander has been doing ever since he hopped onto the the server was that he was actually incubating some dragons. The ice one for me and the frost one for him. Wait, that's just both ice. Oh wait, I wrote it wrong. He incubated a forest dragon for himself. I didn't really have much knowledge about the mod and my dragon would literally not lift off for some reason. But his one was completely fine so we decided to just use his one in search for some totems of undying. We were gonna need that stuff especially with how hard the last few bosses hit. And so the dragon riding journey began. Although we were on a dragon as you can see it was very laggy and the server chunks were very laggy too so it took us quite Quite a long time to even find a speck of a dark oak wood biome because we need to find ourselves a woodland mansion and that's where it'd be located at but after all of that exploring we finally found ourselves a woodland mansion there was also these chickens that would literally blind us if we look at them and then cinders that infested the place burning it down to a crisp why does everything burn down in this mod pack i'm starting to genuinely think we're cursed like, that's not even a joke it's what is happening let's go we got ourselves three totem of undyings we also traveled back to our base we wanted to kind of trapify it I don't even know if that's a word. We tested it out and I almost died in my own trap. That could have been horrible. We probably need to get ourselves some ender pearls just in case of those weird moments. So found a hole in the ground. I don't really know what made this thing, but I was terrified of it. And before we knew it, the boss time arrived. We were killing this thing known as the Harvester. And shortly after, this thing called the Marauder. The Harvester wasn't too bad. They didn't really deal a lot of damage, but they did have quite a bit of range. So it took a little bit of time. My biggest enemy by far with this specific Harvester fight was fall damage because I would take a lot of damage just falling to the ground. But after slaying the Harvester, then the Marauder got summoned. Now this thing was a bit of a problem, and that's just simply due to the difficulty on how to actually kill this thing. This guy had a relentless amount of health. That's the Marauder. Oh, bro, it does like half your health with one hit. Oh, I found him. Oh my god, he does damage. He does damage. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm distracted, I'm distracted. I almost died. Mila is just not it, bro. You're about to get third party so hard. <laughs> I'm getting first party by everything. <laughs> See, it glows green. I don't know if that's a good thing, though. I don't want to alarm you, but the Marauder is climbing up to you. Is he? It can climb. No, don't tell me this guy can climb. <laughs> it can climb. Go! Oh, yes, yes. Okay, I just realized I have some TNT in my inventory. I'm gonna see if I can drop it on it. Drop it. Damage. Please, please, please. Oh, the lag. Where did that shit go? Oh, oh! You got a lot of them. You got a lot of them. You have any more? I got a few. 
What the hell is that thing? Um. Ah. Um. Yo. Oh, you got him. Yes. This is so hard. Why I is it? Honestly, I have. And we finally managed to slay the Marauder. By far, so far, the Marauder has to be one of the most difficult bosses we fought yet. Only two more bosses to go, and then we get to finally face the ten Nagas. Stays eighty to ninety. Now we didn't want to just stop there, okay? We know we have totems of them dying, but also there's a chance of them popping. So we wanted to go and find ourselves another woodland mansion. I know this thing is quite a bit of a waste of time, but we didn't actually know which other direction to go into. Besides most of the gear we have right now, without risking our lives. So after a whole bunch of traveling, we finally got ourselves to another place. Altogether, we had a total of around 8 to 12 Totems of Undying. I didn't really count Xander's ones because I didn't actually know how many he had. We were gonna need these if we had any chance on defeating the Nagas. Trust me on this one. We also needed a way to stockpile on some arrows. I was originally gonna go to a Bastion to collect a bunch of gold, and then from the gold we traded with Piglins to get some Spectro arrows, but I realized those don't exist in this version of Minecraft. So what we had to resort to was a simple Fletcher, and Xander went and traded with them. While in this village, we were also looting quite a bit of it, but we also got a little bit comfortable and started chilling there for a bit. That's when the Mega Johns began. That's the boss of Day 90. You guys might have already seen one of these before, but that was Little John. This is Mega John. He has an insanely amount of HP, and I didn't even know how we could even kill these things. And just look at this place. This place looks like a Talk on Titan. There were literally so many that summoned near us that we ended up crashing the server, so we had to relaunch it. And there was only three left, but the lag was subtly finished. I'm thinking the server just couldn't handle them. But either way, we decided to attack them. Luckily, they didn't do too much damage, but they were really annoying and tedious. I think the biggest threat was everything around it, just third partying. I swear the third party is one of the biggest threats to this entire challenge. 100 days of getting janitored by mobs. A cleanup crew. Days 90 to 100. A lot of this just ended up being looting, but after a long journey, we decided to head home. The issue with this being the distance, because we ended up finding a woodland mansion and going even further than that to find ourselves a new village that we haven't already explored. And we were just about ready to face the Nagas. Right when we thought all was good and well, we also got jumped by what I like to say is a level 3 dragon. I could be wrong, I'm not sure. But this time around, we didn't actually have a cheat code. This guy was fully living, fully not lagging, and so we had to actually go all out on this fight. I wanted to help Xander actually upgrade his armor as well, so we then searched for another dragon underground. This thing was, I believe, either a level 4 or level 5. Just look at this place. This place is insane. We could get diamonds from here. The dragon did try escaping by going into the overworld and basically escaping from our clutches, but luckily for us, he kind of glitched out within the cavern and we used our bows to our advantage although i did need to pop a totem for this fight which was not really good because the 10 nagas were probably gonna take up a lot of them after all of that we finally made it back to our base and that's when using a lava strat. If you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. It helps me out a ton.